call to order the Uxbridge Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, February 14th, 2011 at Uxbridge Town Hall. It's 7 o'clock, according to my computer. Everyone can please rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance to start the meeting. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any announcements? Just one. Mm -hmm. um, at one of our recent meetings, there was some discussion about the, the, the money we get from the state for the green things in the school and the energy efficiency and so forth and mm -hmm. what the genesis of that money was. Well, I have a copy of my electric bill mm -hmm. and there's an item called energy efficiency charge. Mm -hmm. There's also a renewable energy charge a transmission charge, a transition charge, and a customer charge, as well as charges for actual use of electricity. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it's a little over five dollars a month. Mm -hmm. And if you calculate, I made a rough guess as to how many individual electric customers there would be in Uxbridge, and it comes out that people in Uxbridge pay about four hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year into this fund which is where the electric company gets that money to give to people and companies for energy efficiency. So it, all the money comes from us. Companies do not, cannot pay taxes, except they get the money from <coughs> us. They just pass it through. Remember the discussion revolved around whether that money should go to the school or to the town. But the money comes from all the people of the town. There's no other source of that money. So that's just for clarification. Thank you. Anything else? I'd like to thank the fire department for aiding town hall during the snow emergency with, uh, with issues with our roof. Uh, the weekend before last, Chief Ostrowski came out with the building inspector. Uh, prior to, to us having the snow removed on the roof, they went out on the weekend and shoveled uh, channels and cleared out the, uh, the drains uh, to keep water from draining off the roof as it melted uh, the weekend before this past one. Uh, today we had further issues with the uh, snow above the entranceway. Uh, the chief wasn't available, but he, he sent some firefighters out. They used the bucket truck and uh, uh, removed snow up there, uh, again clearing out the drain. and. Uh, eliminating the del deluge you would have experienced otherwise as you came in because it was all dripping inside the, uh, the entranceway. So I would like to thank them very much for, for going above and beyond in, in uh, helping us at Town Hall. Just to amplify on that, if, if you look at the, um, this week's copy of the uh, Blackstone Valley Tribune, there's a photograph of the Town Hall in front of it. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, you'll see the icicles hanging off the roof. But look closely, there's another set of icicles right against the building mm -hmm. that originate from behind mm -hmm. the, the, the um, board that's up against the, the brick. And the only way an icicle can form there is if it originates from under the shingles. Mm -hmm. So we need to address that because once water gets in over and over again on wood timbers, timbers it very quickly rots the timbers. Mm -hmm. And you know another indication that we need to maintain our buildings. Actually, well, there's there's clearly an issue up there with ice damming, and I'm not sure how to resolve it otherwise, uh, other than the way we're resolving it today by a 40 degree day. Uh, it's just it's ex we're experiencing everywhere. We're having uh, water intrusion problems at the library also. Actually, just to expand on that, just so people are aware, we've also had a skylight that's been leaking here in Town Hall that's going to have to be repaired. And then on the outside of the building where the, the snow was on that roof, you can see all the rot rotten fascia board that's up there. So there's going to be, when, when all the snow does melt, there's going to be some cleanup that's going to have to occur as far as fixing the property. Just to make everybody aware of that. I think some of these things we'll, we'll get into in... Uh Item G on new business, which is the budget discussion, because as the board requested, 
we've we've included a hundred thousand dollars for for uh, small capital items which uh, will include things at town hall in, in our uh, in our budget <coughs> Oh, um, and I, I also want to mention uh, Dr. Lutton uh, submitted a, a letter of uh, uh, resignation. It's in the, from the Council on Aging, not from planning. It was in the read file, and, and uh, Tracy thought she'd sent it out to you, but apparently people didn't get it. Uh, so I just want to thank him for his service and tell uh, the people watching that there is a position available and uh, they can uh, take a talent bank form out if they want consideration for a seat on the Council on Aging. Now to my announcements from the Town Clerk. The annual Town Census was mailed to all Town residents on January 4th. Please review all information, make changes if necessary, sign the form, and mail it back to the Town Clerk's office in the envelope provided. Please do not include your real estate tax, water, sewer, or excise tax payment, and this will, as this will delay payment posting to your account. Dog licenses are available at the town clerk's office or by mail. For mailing instructions, please visit www.uxbridge-ma.gov and go to the town clerk's page for instructions. 2011 hunting and fishing licenses are also now available from the town's clerk office. <coughs> and almost more importantly, we have an election coming up in May and nomination papers are available to be picked up at the town clerk's office starting February 1st, so we're 14 days into it. There's more information on the town clerk's um, section of the website as well for people to check out of the actual open seats. All right, and that's it for announcements. Anyone here for Citizens Forum? Going, going, going. All right. Um, let's move quickly through the review of the meeting minutes. Did everyone get the opportunity to give Tracy feedback? Uh, let's look at, I'm um, sorry, the 27th of January. If there are any changes, I'll entertain a motion to approve the meetings, meeting minutes from January 27th, 2011. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And let's go to the meeting minutes from the 6 p.m. Board of Selectmen meeting on the 31st of January. <coughs> that was a brief meeting, or brief minutes at least. On, on, the, on the new business, the first item, budget transfers, there's commentary after the vote. I think she's doing this one. Uh, the 31st at 6 p.m.? 6 p.m. Oh, okay. This is a meeting when we had the... Um, this is with the SBC. Uh, back on this yeah. page. Okay. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> right there. Yeah. Um, one page. <laughs> I've been to a lot of meetings that serve no purpose, and this one, I think, is at the top of the list. Because the meeting was called for the purpose of ironing out because of lack of communication mm -hmm. in the SBC school building committee, but no one on the school building committee acknowledged any lack of communications, and some on the board of selectmen, myself included, mm -hmm. didn't see any lack of communications. Um, we began the meeting with stating what the purpose of the lack of communications, and then the second thing was I opened it up to anyone who wants to say anything, mm -hmm. and that's not, doesn't lead to a good result in the end. but. I don't think anything was resolved. I disagree because we put in processes that we didn't have prior to that that are part of our meeting minutes of how we're Well, the process, I, I remember the talk about that, but the talk about Bruce writing a synopsis of the meeting mm -hmm. and then giving that synopsis to the chairman of the SBC for corrections or whatever. Um, and my recollection is that I didn't, hear anyone that said that was a good idea, just too cumbersome. Uh, well, I thought... It said uh, giving copies of the meet, 
copies of the me uh, meeting out on CD. Right. Yeah, but really again, but who's going to, you know, I didn't hear anyone wax enthusiastic about sitting and listening to a two hour school building committee meeting. Well, I also didn't hear anyone say that it wasn't a good idea. And we're a little off topic now, just in, we're looking at approving the minutes now. Can we talk about that in member issues? Well, I'm just trying to be efficient in utilization of time. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember any decision from that meeting. I don't remember a vote, and multiple member bodies do things by vote. So I don't know. Did, was there an actual decision to make copies? And I, don't, I don't remember it. There was no vote on there it. There was no either. motion. No. no, we didn't make any motions during it. I thought it was just more of an agreement between the two organizations that this is how we were going to plan to move forward. Well, I just I didn't get that impression, but anyway. Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the meeting minutes from January 31st, 2011, our 6 p.m. meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll abstain. Okay. And let's look at our Monday, January 31st, 2011, 7.30, Board of Selectmen meeting. This is our standard meeting. Under number three, old business, paragraph A. Mm -hmm. It won't read demographics, it should be geographics. changes well, if that's the only modification the only amendment to make I'll entertain a motion to approve our meeting minutes from Monday, January 31st, 2011, the 7.30 Board of Selectmen meeting. As amended. As amended. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And we had executive session meeting minutes from the 31st as well. <clears throat> Motion to accept. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And finally, the meeting minutes from the 3rd of February. Yeah, the only, on, on number one, budget transfer is under new business. There's commentary after the motion and vote. So I'm not sure whether that modifies the, um, uh, what the purpose of that is. Should be moved prior to the motion. It would seem to make sense. It may have been mm -hmm. said after that. I, yeah, I just, just don't remember. But just reading it, you wonder. There was. Oh, wait a minute. On that, I don't think there was any commentary after that. No, it's probably just. No, there wasn't. Actually, a good, well. A side note. Actually, that's a good point though, because that motion, that's the motion that was not. That's the. That was the motion that we took, but we didn't have right. it on the agenda. So, do we pull right. the motion because it isn't a valid motion? Because we're revoting it tonight. Well, the motion was was made, and that's where the commentary was added to provide clarification. We strike it. For a minute. Well, then we need to we strike, strike that, it. and mm -hmm. then if anything, we should move that this. Strike, strike, that being the whole motion. I think we should strike the whole motion okay. because the motion can't right. stand because it wasn't on the agenda. So we wouldn't. So the motion wouldn't stand. To note, you know, well, the motion was still there. Was still there. That's right. Okay. There so then, note that the motion is the not. The charter just says that unless it's on the agenda mm -hmm. or we declare an emergency, the motion isn't valid. Right. So. So should we mode underneath it? Just note this motion is not valid. Revoted on. Up for reconsideration on two fourteen. Okay. What, one other minor point on the second bullet. Discussion action SBC contract amendment. Shouldn't that be either uh, CM or Shamit rather than SBC? Where's the agenda? 
Yes, I think yeah. you're right, Mike. Because it's not the school building committee's contract. It's with the construction management. Here. Correct. Right. Um, yes, vote point two. SBC should be either Shamit or CM. Should be Shama, yeah, because that's who it's, it's with. Yep. <clears throat> so I'll accept the motion. To approve as amended, <laughs> meeting minutes with Q3. Oh, is, did you add and authorize the chair? Okay, thank you. Because yeah. I didn't know if that was a strikeout or an add. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, go ahead. Do we have a motion? Motion, motion as amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have a new high school project SBC okay. meeting update. Before I start that, I'd like to announce the school building committee has a meeting uh, Wednesday the 16th. And uh, just to let you know, that's our next meeting. 6 p.m. at the library? Uh, 6 p.m. at the library at the school. Mm -hmm. And the Board of Selectmen and School Building Committee had a joint meeting on Thursday, the fe uh, February 3rd. Representatives from Jocelyn Lessa, Raymond Design, and Sharma were present. Discussions included project status and timely timeliness. Groundbreaking is scheduled for 223.11. I don't know if I'd go with that. I think it's probably going to be a week later or so. But tentatively, it's supposed to be. Actually, yeah, here 25, but. It was supposed to be 223, but that's what I was saying. I don't think it will be. Mm -hmm. There was a general discussion related to the uh, guaranteed maximum pr uh, price uh, process, the visitation policy, and the role of commission and agent that was hired by the MSBA. The vote, uh, board voted to approve the con construction contract amendment number one for the construction manager at risk services. And that that is that information is on the SBC website. And we also voted for uh, amendment number eight for the conservation restriction and the stormwater pollution preventive plan. That in information also posted on the uh, school building committee website. Also after, after the meeting, we had some invoices let me get it here. Okay, we had invoice number 004 for Charlotte for pre-construction services. I won't go over the figure. That's probably oh, well. I'll go over the figure. It's sixteen thousand four hundred thirty-one dollars and twenty cents. The second invoice was number sixteen, and that was to Jocelyn and Lessa, uh, just for the, the for the month of December. And that invoice was uh, $30,716. And the last one was to Flood Consulting for the Structural Engineering Care Review, which was $3,500. And <coughs> that completed our meeting. And uh, I did give everybody, I did give everybody a, handout of the uh, permitting update today from the BSC group from Les Leslie Fanger. It was, it's in your boxes or you already have it. And uh, that's about it till Wednesday. All right. Just as uh, that's something, Mike? on uh, what Bruce has said, the invoices have all been processed and uh, they've appeared on warrants and, and they're paid yet, but they're in the process. Uh, the uh, stormwater pollution prevention plan, uh, I've signed off on that plan and sent it to the EPA. So everything's on track. Uh, the review process will probably bring it to the 25th, as, as, uh, as what's mm -hmm. indicated. Mm -hmm. uh, Is that the uh, approval that you were having trouble with last week? Or yeah, what I did, the, the, the uh, get around the computer problems I, I uh, overnighted it last week okay. so they have it okay thank you
you very much. You're welcome. We have a DPW update. Mr. Sherman. Good evening. Uh, ben Sherman, Department of Public Works. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Um, Thank you to you too. <laughs> I guess I, I'll try to keep it short and brief, but uh, I, back at the end or middle of January, um, I submitted a brief memo with some overall updates. If you have any specific questions at this time, I'm more than happy to elaborate on those. Um, otherwise, I will jump right into some uh, some discussion on snow and ice, which is a item of concern and interest for a lot of people. So I'll surprise, uh, surprise. <laughs> jump. So, all right. Well, I do have an update for you. You want to look at it? <laughs> Ouch. Thank you. Ouch. Ooh. This is a surprise to me. You didn't have this this afternoon when we talked. Ouch. Ooh, better. Oh, come on. That's not that bad. I thought we were going to hit 200 at this point. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. It's a long ways to go, though. Bite your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, basically what, what that shows is that shows uh, current billing through um, yesterday, through the end of the payroll period of yesterday. And what I did was I projected out, which is that blue highlighted area, um, potential bills that are in process right now, plus some that I know will be forthcoming, whether they come in this week or next week. Um, as you can see, pr the biggest item there is material. Um, just to elaborate on that a little bit more, uh, we, we were doing quite well up until uh, it was about the third week in ju uh, June. I wish it was June. Uh, <laughs> January, uh, we had we had placed a, a replacement order with our salt supplier and had some difficulty getting that. Uh, so over the course of a few weeks following, uh, we ran into some emergency procure procurement issues, and we are slowly still having that come in, uh, but we had to go out to our secondary supplier. So um, at the present time, we are fully stocked with salt and sand for that matter. Um, was there some price gouging that uh, happened? Well, there was on the emergency, well, I, I yeah. rephrase that. There, the supplier that we went to for the salt on the emergency basis uh, was not part of the co-op, so there was a substantial increase in the unit cost for that. Mm -hmm. We tried to maintain a much lower uh, quantity from them uh, just to get us through until some of the other um, supplies started rolling in. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, all in all, I think the, the actual impact of that is really minor compared to the overall um, uh, budget figure there. But you know, with this projection for next week, actually, let me back up another second. Um, you know, another the other big item there. Uh, this happens to be under the ground grounds equipment and uh, vehicle repair. We've had some pretty sizable repair bills lately um, with the bigger trucks. You know, as mentioned before, uh, the fleet is aging, um, and it's definitely showing its age uh, at the present time. So um, those numbers there are are uh, actual bills that are in process of being. Uh, on their way through accounting. So just to highlight that, um, as, as it shows right now, and again, with this projection for next week, or actually this current week, uh, you know, we're at roughly 152% of our budget. Um, so hopefully we'll see what the weather holds, but uh, I, I wouldn't anticipate any large purchases such as materials since we, you know, are, are slowly getting caught up uh, with what we had, you know, originally ordered. Um, you know, at this point, we'd be looking at, uh, you know, just ongoing uh, internal labor and, and um, you know, again, to highlight another op uh, line item there, the contractor services. Um, to put it into context, last year we had five plowable events. This year we've had 13. My so um, that's why that number is a sizable amount uh, from last year and also that the you know, the amount of snow that we've had uh, primarily in the month of January um, has really wreaked havoc with uh, just that portion of it as well as 
uh, you know, internal labor over time uh, with the snow and ice. Um, you know, if this weather holds up, uh, we could be in reasonable shape, but it is New England and the weather can change on a dime. Um, How's your crew doing? I'm sorry? Is the crew ba back the and healthy health. or mm. well, probably exhausted still? Healthy may not be the correct word. Uh, today we actually is the first day in probably three to four weeks that we actually have had all the highway division staff, you know, into work. Um, some of you may or may not know, uh, they, they were and still are pretty well stretched thin, but we've had uh, a number of people out um, for extended periods of time. Um, everything from, you know, severe bronchitis to pneumonia, um, and it's, it's really taken a toll on the guys as well as the equipment. Um, yeah, I know there's a lot of concern out there with uh, the, the residents of Uxbridge and the condition of the roads and the height of the snow banks, um, you know, intersection problems, so on and so forth. Um, we're picking away at it the best we can. Uh, the, um, the trade off that we're dealing with, and say the contractors, for example, is we don't have enough large trucks in the fleet of the contractors. We're all talking about smaller pickups, and given the amount of snow that we've had, they just don't have the capabilities <coughs> of getting the snow up and off the road. Therefore, we have these, the issues following the storms, which uh, I, I would like to plead to the residents of Uxbridge to understand that just because the snow has stopped and the sun is out, we are not by any stretch of the imagination done. Um, we've gotten many requests for pushing back on these roadways, and sure enough, when we go out there and push back, there's gonna be material in people's driveways, and I know they aren't very happy with that, but it's New England, and you know, the, the snow has to go somewhere. Um, we're slowly, uh, internally right now, using just uh, DPW staff and equipment, trying to clear intersections, push some snow back, removing a lot of snow. We've been hauling a lot of the snow back to the DPW parking area. Um, so it'll melt in July. Uh, how, how, how is our equipment looking right now? It's pretty bad. I mean, it, we've been doing okay. Um, but the few major um, hurdles that we've had to jump through have been, you know, costly. Um, you know, just, and it's been work that we cannot perform definitely in-house with the, with the limited staff, but, um, you know, just the extensive engine work that's, that's needed to be, to be done on some of these equipment. Various but our pieces. second sidewalk plow, is that fixed now? Almost. We were having some problems getting some of the parts out of Canada. Um, and there again, I mean, I, I'll highlight that too. I, I know there's been a, a lot of concern with the condition of the sidewalks and the lack of sidewalk uh, clearing. We've been down to essentially one sidewalk tracker. Um, given the seven guys total in the highway division, uh, we, we've been down at one, at one time, we were down to two people mm -hmm. on one particular day. Um, having the second sidewalk tractor go down limits you know, the ability to put more people out. Um, I all told, you know, we, we're lucky to, I, I don't think I could say in good faith that we've been able to get the full walking loop as it stands right now, you know, more than twice, and that may be pushing it, primarily due to, um, uh, you know, decreasing staff uh, because of sickness and health issues to equipment problems. Um, so. All in all, I just want to let the public know that we are actively working. Um, I'm, I'm trying to do my best to get uh, some additional contractors to, to come in and assist with some of the removal uh, so we can, you know, get downtown cleared up a little bit better, get the north end cleared up, really get some of these intersections cleared up because as we all know, unless you're in a large SUV or a big truck, you're ha you have some difficulty seeing around, um, you know, these snow banks. But also to remember, again, in days like today, tomorrow it's gonna to be down in the 20s. Yeah. Tonight we will probably be out sanding. Uh, again, a, a lot goes on after the sun falls uh, that people just aren't aware of. You know, one, once the snow stops, we're not stopping. Um, we tend to get called out every night in situations like this when you have the increased melting, it's gonna freeze at night. So just be aware that the guys are out there um, we're, we're doing what we can with the resources and uh, staff and equipment, and 
it's the middle of February, so it's it won't be that much longer. Could I be clear sailing. I'm sorry. Could be clear sailing now for the rest of the winter. You never, never know. know. Definitely um, appreciate the support of the staff. So yeah, please sure. pass that along. Please Question sure. on this. <clears throat> so you look at the budget line. How is that calculated on a year-to-year -year basis? Because this is the well budget? below the five-year average. Mm -hmm. You know, and we still have another month and a half or so. It, well, as some. you would expect in a five-year, yeah, if you budget below what your five-year low average would be, mm -hmm. you would assume you're going to break that budget pretty yeah. regularly. We always break we the always. budget, but there's snow and ice is one of the few instances where we can overexpend. Mm -hmm. If 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 we allocate more money. Mm -hmm. then we have to keep at that amount every year. Understood. So there's, okay. no, there's no disadvantage in overexpending. We okay. just make it up on the cherry sheet, you know, at the year-end transfer. Um, and you know, that's how it is. We, whatever the cost is, we have to, we have to do it. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I can, I can uh, send along just a kind of historical uh, summary that I have uh, that goes back to about 1990. Um, if I recall... Once in the last 10 years, um, I want to say it was right around 2000, uh, one year they came in just under budget. It, it, you don't need to. It's a, that was the exp explanation I was looking for. Ben, yes. people understand the, the issues because of the, the short time distance between, between mm -hmm. storms and, that, and coupled with the other issues. But one of the concerns that, or questions that people have is what, what's the the sequence that we address different areas of town and, and sidewalks and so forth. And as people as, had a better idea. It, as far as like during the storm itself? Well, during the storm, storm, after the storm, to clean up the, the sidewalks or to plow the sidewalks and then remove the snow. Do we, is there a certain sequence that we do this area first and then this area second and third and so forth? Uh, I, I guess the best way to answer that is uh, with regards to the sidewalks. Uh, the sidewalks typically will get addressed uh, right at the end of the storm. Um, we try, again, considering that we have limited staff right now, we try to pull off the one, at times in the past, it used to be more than that, but pull off the one uh, out of a plow truck or a sander and start working on the sidewalks given the, you know, the length of sidewalk that has to be done um, so that when they finish the plowing operations and they wrap up the sanding operations that were hopefully all kind of ending at the same time. Uh, so the sidewalks would be addressed essentially during the event or just immediately following the event. Uh, unfortunately, due to equipment problems um, and staff problems, um, those have been extended out a few days following the storm. Um, Once you have ice com you know, compacted on the sidewalks, will the sidewalk plows take care of it or do you need other materials? Uh, well, we have a couple of options. We've been predominantly using the snow blower, given the depth of the snow. Um, it's been the cleanest way of, you know, clearing the sidewalks. Will that handle the ice buildup? Um, when you not, walk on the snow, always. it turns to ice. Right. Uh, the, the other option we have is we do have, a, like, an angle plow and a V plow that can go on the machines, but they will by far cause more damage. Not damage, <clears throat> but um, it will require a lot more cleanup especially into the road. Yeah. Uh, so we, we've been, this year alone, we've used the snowblower mm -hmm. extensively, uh, just for that reason, because again, the, the depth of snow and uh, just being able to cut through a nice path. But yeah, that's been an issue dealing with, you know, like ice pack or snow pack that, you know, eventually will turn to ice, uh, as we can see all around. All around Assuming no new snow storms in the next week or 10 days, when do you anticipate the sidewalks around the center of town and so forth will be Clear. Completely clear? Well, um, walkable, reasonably walkable. Well, I mean, as of right now, I mean, they, I'm, I'm not fully sure of the extent of all the sidewalks, but the walking loop should be open. It's uh, not. Well, I know right around, for instance, if you take you go around uh, South Main going yep. up Menden Street, yep. it's, you can't walk. Some of right. Yeah, I mean, typically it's it's really on just one side of the road. There may be sections out there. Um, I, I will say that the one person that predominantly has been out in the sidewalk plow just came back to work last Thursday, I think it was. He was out for a little over a week. Mm -hmm. um, so if there are sections out there, 
you know, I, I apologize for that, that that hasn't been addressed. But um, like I said, we're, we've been sending people out. And I, I guess to further answer your first question, you know, how are areas prioritized following the storm? Um, I can, let me just say that we have received a very large volume of calls um, on every aspect of snow and ice maintenance. Um, you know, we're, we are doing what we can to try to prioritize those areas, uh, areas that do um, need immediate concern or attention. We, we redirect forces, um, maybe not to the, uh, uh, the satisfaction of the residents, you know, based on the, the response time, but again, given the, the resources that we have primarily in the staff, you know, if we want to look at, you know, some amount of uh, snow removal, um, you know, we, to really do it right, let's just look at the center of town, that has to be done during the, you know, during the evening, let's just say in the middle of the night, um, even with a police detail, uh, because there's no way you can deal with the volume of traffic, the park, uh, parking uh, of all the vehicles and the business, you know, it, it just not effective to do that. And there again, we could be, we are looking at utilizing a lot more than just the highway division staff. We have, you know, the staff within the water and wastewater divisions that, that do provide snow and ice um, assistance to us. And given the decrease in staff over the years, they now have, um, you know, actual routes that they have to uh, deal with for sanding and plowing. So they've actually stepped up and, and have become more of an integral part to the, of the plan right now. And again, back to the removal of snow, you know, we're talking about one to two loaders, there's two people, um, a sidewalk plow, it's three, a one, you know, a pickup or a one ton, four, um, we have the rest of them driving trucks, and when we only have seven, if we're lucky to get, you know, 10 throughout the entire DPW, you know, we, we can spend a whole evening, you know, six to eight hours just doing downtown, so we've been really stra strapped as far as, you know, getting a lot of that work done to the level that people expect. Um, so it, it, I would like to, you know, just point out again, I've stressed, you know, I've said it a number of times about staff and equipment. Back in the day, there were 15 people alone within the DPW Highway Division. And at that time, they did a lot of work, whether it was dealing with the schools, removing snow, um, now, <clears throat> considering that the highway division is down to seven, um, you know, and the equipment, you know, and falling in various stages of disrepair, um, it's a lot harder to maintain that level of service. Um, I'm trying to pull together some numbers, but since I think roughly the early 2000s, we've accepted 50 some odd roadways, of which 40 some odd, ro uh, uh, around the 40, I think it's around 45, uh, have cul-de-sacs. So again, we're, we're, we're battling the decrease in uh, staff, decrease in the uh, condition of our fleet, assets that are increasing. So overall, I mean, we're stretched pretty thin, but um, we're slowly working away at it, whittling away at it, I should say. Um, but again, I, you know, to answer the question, we, uh, we try to just pick some areas that have the, the highest, you know, uh, highest need for items to be addressed, whether it's pushing back the roads, clearing the intersections, and that's where we've been going out. Um, the foreman or acting foreman, and even myself have been going out and actually, you know, uh, taking a look at, at various calls that come in. If we need to move some, some people around, we'll move some people around, so. Um, it's kind of, it may look uh, kind of dysfunctional, but there is uh, some method to the madness two questions um, with the limited staff and with your explanation of you know doing the actual sidewalk clearing mm -hmm. to a greater extent meaning moving the snow so that there's more places to park mm -hmm. having to do that on in theory your third shift um, or the late second shift are there issues that you have to deal with with the same individuals then having to show up the next day for work oh, yeah. and so therefore you know it's not that you can go out every evening and have these guys work 20 hour days right. and get four hours of sleep. Right. You know. I mean, that, that's, that's one of my biggest concerns with the staff, uh, especially given the storms that we've had, the back to back nature, you know, multiple storms during the week. Uh, you know, again, 
a lot of them have occurred during the uh, late, you know, late afternoon, early evening, go on through the next uh, to the next morning. I, you know, I, I picked one storm in particular. It would have been a, I think a couple of Thursdays ago. We got 15 inches, 12 to 15 inches. It started at like 6 p.m. It ended at 7. By 8 o'clock, the sun was out and shining, blue sky, and the calls were relentless. Why hasn't this been done? Hasn't this been done? Little do they know, the DPW highway people were in from the night before at around midnight. So they had gone from midnight through their normal day, through the night, mm -hmm. and worked their day, so and didn't go home. So they. It, it has taken its toll, and I, and I am 100% certain that is the reason why we've had the health issues uh, within the DPW, just getting worn down, um, just worn to the point where they just comes, become success, acceptable to, uh, you know, illness. Mm -hmm. And it's really, like I said, it's really hurt, um, hurt us in the last three to four weeks especially. Uh, because again, multiple people, multiple senior level people um, out, you know, the ones that have the most experience with the town and, you know, in this, this operation, you know, being out for a week at a time. The other thing that I um, wanted you to kind of touch on was now that everything is starting to melt, we can actually see the asphalt um, potholes yep. everywhere. North Main Street, especially. Oh, off. well. Um, Hartford Ave. Yeah. Hartford Ave. Also, Actually, I just talked to the uh, duty man who came in just before I came over. Um, I think uh, there might have been a minor accident over on East Hartford Ave near Crown and Eagle. Yes, from a pothole. There's, there's a big pothole there. Yeah. Pothole so, there. You know, so how out. are you going to address, you know, is there anything you want to say to the residents regarding these potholes? Because it's the same crew who they want right. to clear the snow right. that also would run around with the dump truck and yep. the asphalt to fill the holes. So. Where's your priority? Is it filling the holes yeah, well, or clearing the snow well, or? Um, I guess with respect to the potholes, um, I could have five guys driving in five different areas of the town with patch uh, looking for potholes, but that's just not you know, an efficient way of doing this. Unfortunately, we rely heavily on calls from the police department, calls from residents, um, you know, you know, letting us know that there's a particular issue at a particular location. Um, so it's kind of a balancing act. I, and, you know, last week when we had a little bit of that warm up, you know, we, we finally got some crews out to do some patching. We hadn't done any patching in, you know, probably since December. Um, but with that warm up that we had just what last week, um, this warm up, the, the roads are going to start popping more, more and more and more. Because again, by probably in the wee hours of the morning, this is all going to freeze. And then tomorrow, it's you know actually through tomorrow, it's going to stay cold. But you know, following that, it's going to warm back up. You know, a lot of times, we can go out and put patch holes, and it'll pop right back out. You know, shortly after that, even the material, even though the material is, um, uh, you know, it can be used in you know wet conditions, so on and so forth. It's just the extreme weather changes uh, are wreaking havoc with our aging roadway system. Um, so it's a balancing act. Um, you know, we've been focused the last couple of days to the end of last week, um, primarily clearing up, cleaning up, uh, pushing back, uh, which has raised a lot of concerns with people. You know, for every uh, two calls we get that says, you know, thank you for widening our road, we get five, six, seven, eight, ten, you know, you, you push the snow back into our driveways. Uh, the snowstorm has been done for a week. Why are you doing this? But again, there's that balancing act. It's got to go somewhere. Then I, I would like to touch on something, too. During these snowstorms, I don't think the people out there realize that you're utilizing your water people, you're utilizing your sewer people. They go out there and plow, and they still have their job to do when they get back. Correct. So I just want the people out there to realize that. You, know, you use like util, you utilize water and sewer people. Right. Yeah. I mean, and just to highlight on that, we have minimum staff requirements for each division: right. water, wastewater, and highway. Um, we have to have a certain number of people at the treatment plant. We have to have a certain number of people, you know, ready to go, you know, on a dime on anything dealing with the water system. So, you know, it, it's it's 
a burden to those divisions to have to pull some of these people off. <coughs> and you know, fortunately, we've been lucky that we haven't had any um, you know, uh, issues that require um, you know, long uh, durations of time to pull them off the plow roots and you know, get them back into the treatment plan or dealing with a, a water well or, or something of that nature. So. I just want the people out there re just realize that you know, you're stuck with having to use them because of your limited personnel. And then I, the last thing I'll say is I, you know, I just want to jump on something that Mike said earlier. Uh, you know, the, the, between the fire department, they've helped us out you know, with things around town hall, shoveling off the ramps. I know that's been an issue, the steps and the ramps, and trying to get that to that in a timely fashion. Um, you know, I, I've been over here at times myself doing it, as well as, and I don't want to say it, but I've been in a plow truck mm -hmm. um, pushing snow around. Um, but when you know, the need is there, I'm not going to leave my guys out in the cold. Hey, forgive me for the pun, but I'm not going to leave them out in the cold when you know, I can at least be helping them out to some level. Um, so again, it's, you know, I, I, I think a lot of people have come together to help out um, from the fire department to the police department. Um, you know, helping out, trying to you know, get us, get us back into uh, a nice track uh, to go forward. So, I wanted to. You already addressed it, but I want to make sure that residents also knew that you were actively mm -hmm. plowing and shoveling steps. I have been know. outside the kiddie pool. You've definitely stepped up, and it's very much appreciated. Right, and just so the residents know, even town employees have done their fair share of. <laughs> spreading salt and mm -hmm. shoveling mm -hmm. that you know that are usually not in their job so it's kind of like everybody pitching in yeah. um, and the other thing the residents are aware of too is with the snow um, correct me if I'm wrong Mike but you know there's been extensive work that with snow has have has had to been removed from the top of the buildings yep. and in that though that doesn't go into the snow and ice budget that no. goes into the maintenance budget is to each of the individual departments <coughs> yeah. Um, so that's putting further strain on the individual Department departments projects. for having to clear the snow off their own buildings. Um, so I just want the residents to be aware of that, that that's not part of this deficit. Correct. <coughs> snow and ice removal. So yeah. Ben, your, uh, your summary was good and helpful. Is there anything specific on that list that you need help or want help from the board with that we should address <laughs> right now? Staff and equipment. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 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 the you know the two things that nobody wants to hear, but um, you know again there is a tremendous difference between last year and this year. Um, the inability to have enough people in the big trucks that we have, combined with the inability to get contractors in with larger trucks uh, to really you know help out. Uh, you know, I, I I'll pick on South Uxbridge for example. Some of those roads down there. <laughs> are very narrow, they're windy, old country roads, and there's no place to put the snow. The, you know, they're lined with trees, they're lined with stone walls, um, and for, you know, unfortunately, again, out of our fleet of 25 contractors, I have two that have large trucks. And one of them we do have down off of Aldridge Street, predominantly doing that one route down there, and the other one is dealing with some of the larger thoroughfares up here your Douglas Street, your Hazel Street, your Menden Street. Um, so, you know, that those two things combined, uh, I think, have, have, are really the core of what, uh, what we're struggling with at the, at the moment with this, you know, this season. So, so how, how can we help? What kind of solution? Uh, we well, help? currently, right now, we're working, you know, with the Capital Planning Committee, uh, David and Mike, and trying to see what we can do and possibly funding some capital uh, equipment purchases. You were on the list last year for <laughs> capital, just so you're, you know. Well, ben, I think it's reprioritized uh, <laughs> the plan. He's really focusing more on equipment now than, than uh, rather than a salt shed and right. garage expansion and that sort of thing. The key now is, is to get some of these big trucks. Because as he said, uh, the small plows are, small, are, are fine for one or two storms. But those little ones you see on pickup trucks, they don't have the big curls on the top. They can just keep pushing up against the same <coughs> bank. Those curls can throw it up over the top and really get it, widen the road out. Um, 
you know, most yeah, of most of the ones he hires just can't do that. And there's also, you know, I actually, I'm glad you brought up that point, is because as they've thrown the snow, and, and something that I've seen personally, um, the snow itself, just from the weight of it, a truck doesn't even have to touch a tree or a wall. Just the weight of the snow is actually moving things. Is the snow is starting? Mailboxes are getting massacred. We know well, that. Right. Uh, not mm -hmm. just the mailboxes, but I've actually seen where a whole stone wall has been moved, not because a truck hit it, but the weight of the snow mm -hmm. alone is moving granite like it hasn't been moved before. So just, you know, so people are aware as this stuff starts to melt, you know, there's going to be along the sides of these roads, you know, I don't know what we're going to uncover completely when it comes out yeah, of the it, snow. Yeah, it'll be very, very interesting to see what happens, you know, the tail end of the season where we really get into the, uh, um, you know, the maintenance aspect of, right. you know, whatever's out there that needs to be addressed. Um, you know, granite, um, granite curbings and things like that may not be where they're right. supposed to. So I guess it's kind of caution, you know, and when you're driving, the road may not be where the road was <laughs> after the storm. So we've come a long way, but there's a, I, there's a lot left to do. So on the, on the equipment side, you're working with Mike and David to, to put forward a plan that ultimately will get in front of us for next year? Plus, no, the spring. No, the, the spring. spring. The spring. Um, yeah, I mean, essentially, it's, it's, it's items that have been on the capital plan for years, but just have been passed over um, various years. Um, trying to think when the last capital maybe purchase looking at was a, done. Perhaps 10-year debt exclusion by a few plows. 2003. But they won't impact this plowing season. No. At least they impact no. And then on the staffing side, what's the latest update on the, on the staffing? Uh, well, we'll get into that in the budget where we are. Uh, we're moving forward on hiring a DPW uh, highway super, uh, supervisor. Uh, staffing, we'd like to get to the point where we can replace one of the, the men, bring them back on uh, an equipment operator. But uh, I don't think we've closed that gap yet. this point I, I can't say that we can do that how much uh, momentum has been made in your spare time on the highway supervisor position actually I am anticipating making some calls this week to set up interviews great mm -hmm. I've got it got it narrowed down to like a short list so I just need to get some calls out and uh, set up interviews and Excellent. I'm working with the town man manager and, and uh, we'll get some hopefully I'll know by the end of the week and you know if we get to some next week and you know we'll go go from there but mm -hmm. Do you have the money in your current budget, or are you going to have to go for a no? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've held off not because of this year, but we didn't want to be put in a position where we would hire someone we couldn't keep on beyond the new into the new fiscal year. Uh, we wouldn't want to bring someone on and then end up paying unemployment right, early that's why in the summer. But we, we we're pretty confident now that we're at that point. We've gotten enough information so that. Uh, our budget numbers are, are, I think, fairly firm. Yeah, so th this year there's money in the budget, um, but with the cuts in the budget, that's where it gets a little, the, the, the so unknowns come in. we can fund in. it for next year is the question. I'm sorry? I believe right, we can. The question. Right, yeah. but that's, that's what we're going to get into yeah. later, but right. okay, so. Well, you can only do the best you can, Ben, and that's yeah. all we expect. But my, my motto is, you know, winter, winter maintenance, you just can't win no matter what you do. For every one step forward, there's two steps back. Um, you know, we're, we're going to do our best to address all the calls that come in uh, as timely as we can. Um, but, you know, I'm just pleading to the, the residents of Uxbridge to understand that there's only so many people, so many pieces of equipment, and so many hours in the day to you know to hit everything um, one other thing is your budget in your current budget do you do you have enough allotted to do the patchwork to the roads and stuff because I don't did you anticipate possibly as much asphalt patches you're going to need this year um, or are we gonna have a shortfall on that it's hard to say uh, I mean I, I haven't looked at it that that aspect of it that closely um, you know between last year I can definitely I can say with some certainty that last year I wasn't happy with the amount of patch that we um, have used, you know, to band-aid the roadways. Um, I'm 
hoping here in the near future, as I mentioned in that summary, that uh, I'd like to be able to present to you very soon a three-year capital plan of using just using our Chapter 90 money that we haven't used in a, in a few years. Um, it may seem big and daunting at first, but it's not even going to be a drop in the bucket in the reality of our, our road system. But, you know, if we don't use it, we'll lose it. Um, and, you know, we, we need to do what we, what we can to try to maintain some level of service on the roadways. Um, so, you know, I'd like to get some road projects going this spring uh, to minimize the Band-Aid fixes of, of using the patch. Well, and that's the reason why I bring it, you know, if you do anticipate that you're not going to have enough to cover within this budget, if, you know, you can bring it to the town manager's attention, mm -hmm. you know, as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. because, I mean, just in some of the areas I've seen, you know, I see where it has to be cut in asphalt. There's no oh, yeah. way you can patch it just, you know, from what we're seeing right now in some of the roadways. Yep. Um, and that, and that, that'll become evident when I, when I present the uh, pavement management system results and the prioritization for that capital plan. Um, it'll really, I think, bring to light those issues that we all know are there. Um, it just will actually quantify that. And I, I'll just you, one last statement. I'll say that uh, you know, in addition to the school project, there will be some other construction projects going on, mm -hmm. all at the same time in the south end of town. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have the school project. We will have the water mains project. We'll have the well project, and then there are two bridges that uh, are slated to begin, you know, shortly after the you know, like April one uh, mm -hmm. time frame. One of those is the uh, Ironstone Brook Bridge on River Road. And the uh, Route 122 uh, Millville Road over the Blackstone Bridge uh, that will pro probably be starting around the same time frame. So, the south end of town will be seeing a lot of activity in the coming spring summer months. Good place to set up a hot dog stand. <laughs> That's what I'd say. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ben. Uh, if the board agrees, I'd like to um, go to new business letter B. Get the senior center update. Everyone agree? Sure. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Josh Petrillo, Senior Center Director. I'm here this evening to first of all thank you for placing us on the agenda this evening. I'd like to talk about some of our services and spread the word about some of our upcoming programs and um, end by sharing some statistics with you. Um, typically during the winter season we focus on three programs, um, three services. Uh, one of them I'd like to begin with is fuel assistance. Um, it's a nice example um, about our center and the idea that the center is just for seniors because with this particular uh, service, uh, we see a lot of low-income families as well as you know, uh, middle-aged individuals who are struggling, having lost their jobs recently, more and more coming to us and to uh, Meg, our outreach coordinator who's been certified in uh, fuel assistance. Uh, we also have a lovely uh, woman, a volunteer, who helps with fuel assistance on Mondays and Fridays. And I'd just like to mention her name and thank her, Aline Kurowski. She's very proficient and has been with us for about, uh, I think this may be her second year or third year with us. Time goes by so quickly. <laughs> um, fuel assistance funds are administered uh, through uh, an agency called SMOC, South Middlesex Opportunity Council. Uh, we also um, want to point out at this time that there are uh, some fuel assistance programs uh, such as Joe for Oil which will run through uh, February 24th. There's a very short window for that but it's a very easy and quick application. Um, you simply have to call the number 877-563-4645. There's a p possibility that one may be eligible for 100 uh, gallons of oil to assist with um, heating through the 24th 
um, September, uh, February, excuse me, February. I just wanted to mention too that Meg works at the Senior Center 15 hours a week on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 9.30 to 2.30. And uh, she does allocate some of her hours for fuel assistance applications, which typically take about an hour to complete and process. So we invite um, people that may be in need to stop by and to meet Meg, our new outreach coordinator, and to learn more about this service. The next program I'd like to talk about is the um, free IRS tax preparation and uh, with a particular emphasis on the circuit breaker tax credit. Um, we're offering the free IRS tax preparation uh, this year on Fridays. The program began on February 4th and will run through April 15th. Um, I'm happy to announce that Marvin uh, um, Davis has returned and a young man that I went to high school with is uh, recently retired from H&R Block. His name um, is Russell Boudiet. <laughs> I had a mind freeze there for a second. Russell and I went to high school uh, together 40 years ago and uh, he's very uh, versed in tax law. So he's on board this year. Um, the free IRS tax preparation on Fridays um, has this circuit breaker component that many seniors who are living on fixed incomes and who may not uh, currently file for income tax, their income taxes anymore, may be eligible to uh, file for what's known as a circuit breaker tax credit. And the way that this credit is um, determined is basically if one's real estate tax plus 50% of their water and sewer charges exceed 10% of their income, they may be eligible for um, a credit of $970 this year. So I simply try to ask our seniors, you know, if, um, if you pay $2,500 in taxes and $500 in for water and sewer, um, you might want to ask yourself, do I make $30,000 each year? And that would be your test question. And if you don't, um, you're eligible to apply for, for this credit. And I know a lot of people that are hoping to use this credit to prepare their roofs this spring. So I urge you to do that little test, ask yourself that question, and see if you might be eligible. And if you think that you are, call us, and we'll be happy to set up an appointment for you. And the last uh, program that I want to discuss um, is the Work Off program. We're uh, currently accepting applications for the Work Off program. This program was passed at town meeting in May of 2003. Um, one must simply be 60 years or older and uh, willing to volunteer services in exchange for a reduction on, on your property tax bill. It requires about 62 and a half hours of your time. It's based on the um, minimum wage, which is $8 here in Massachusetts. And uh, typically we have allotted, David, it's not here, about $7,500, uh, which allows 15 individuals to apply and to, to find work. So um, we hope that people will come forward and share their talents and see where their skills may intersect with what the community needs. It's a good, it's a good opportunity. Marcia, is there anything specific that you're looking for that you need help with right now? Um, well, there's always help um, needed in the clerk's office, particularly with the census. We've had ongoing placements up at the uh, Board of Health. Um, over at the schools, we've had ongoing placements with aides in the classroom and so forth. Um, we've had uh, people at the Senior Center helping on our van, vans, helping with sh grocery shopping, assisting seniors in that way. Again, Aline uh, Karowski um, helps with the uh, fuel assistance applications. Um, so we've, we've had a lot of, of help in this area. We've had a woman, Donna Onke, has been working on um, putting together a database for us uh, so that we can get a handle on some of the statistics that I'm going to share with you. Uh, the, this, the statistics that I will be um, passing out this evening are actually her findings after
putting together this nice database and uh, it's given us a lot of good information about the growth, the senior population and the growth. So, um, but if you have a particular talent or an idea where you might want to work in the community, the way that I usually handle that is people come in and I ask them what they might have done for a living in the past and try to figure out where that might intersect with what the community needs right now, where, where there may be an opening. And if I don't know of one, I might call that department head and simply say that I have this person with this particular skill. It seems to dovetail nicely with what you're doing in your department and is there any need for that person at this time? And then we usually set up a, a small interview and they try to work out the details about what days they're available to work and um, it's worked out well. We've had placements at the library. And um, so if anyone knows of any department that may need, need help, let me know and we'll try to link the right person up with the right, right, right job. Okay, thank you. Let's see. Um, then just to update you on some of the things that are happening at the center. Uh, yesterday I was honored uh, to attend um, a breakfast at the Polish Hall with just our friends in the community. Um, it was a great breakfast, um, but what made this particular day so unusual is that um, this, the um, Oxbridge Polish American Social and Civic Corp um, had a raffle basket, so a fundraising component at their, at their breakfast, and the proceeds from this raffle basket uh, were given in, uh, to the senior center in, in memory of some of their recently deceased members. And I'd like to just name these members because some of them are very dear to me. And the first name on this list, um, Matthew Starsick, was a beautiful man who attended our senior center on a regular basis every day for dinner at lunch. And uh, we lost him a few, a few years back and I thought it was very nice of them to remember him in this way. The other uh, people um, I did not know as personally as I knew Matthew, but I'd like to mention their names. Stephen Bucko Jazorski, Richard Dick Sosha, Rena Lezak, Doris Ostrowski, a former town clerk and uh, Pete's mom. Stanley Stefanik, a young man who we lost uh, recently, uh, a member of our planning board for over 10 years. Um, Benjamin, uh, Wisanowski, Stanley Bannis, somebody I grew up with here in town, uh, an employee of Lynch's when the counter was uh, intact and somebody I'll always remember, and uh, Stanley Oleksik, Jenny Oleksik's husband and uh, someone I think I, I too will always remember, Jane's dad. So I thought that this was a, a lovely uh, thing to do and to pay homage to these people and in turn to uh, donate the proceeds to the senior center, so I want to thank them for that. Uh, we had a Valentine party today, and I was very surprised. Uh, Mike Richardson, uh, the uh, store manager at Hannaford's, has taken us under his wing, and we are very grateful to this. Um, so today, uh, Mike not only donated uh, candy and uh, cupcakes, but to my surprise, $100 to pay for our entertainer. So I'd like to thank Mike and all of the people at Hannaford's for their ongoing generosity. They have really um, made a difference uh, with respect to the kinds of programmings we can continue to offer at the Senior Center, and I think that's very, very nice of them. Uh, so we had the Shane, Shane Wood sang today, and he did all of the fun favorites, and uh, the seniors sang along, and it was a really very nice time, and everybody was able to go home with parting gifts. I must uh, also mention, due to the lovely hand craftsmanship of two women that live on Hazel Street that would like to remain anonymous, but did a lot of painting on glassware and candles and made jewelry for us, so that everyone went home with a parting gift. and. Uh, it was, a, it was a fun, fun time, and it's because of the generosity of our community. Um, tomorrow, the Senior Center will be offering, in conjunction with the Board of Health and the Greater Milford uh, VNA, uh, a free 
blood pressure clinic and vital signs. Uh, Sue Friend is the registered nurse that we typically see, and she really has become our friend. She's just lovely, and uh, it's a first come, first serve, free service. And uh, we urge anyone to come down and take advantage of this. It uh, begins at 11.30 tomorrow. Wednesday, we are offering a free hearing uh, screening with uh, Steve Senna from Mass Audiology. Uh, this is simply a screening. It's not a real official hearing test, but he may be able to um, give you some information and uh, help you if you uh, fail the screening. Um, maybe that means that you need to go consider seeing an audiologist for a possible uh, test and hearing aids to follow. So that too is a first come, first serve kind of service that's open to the public and we urge everyone to attend, you don't have to be a senior to attend. Um, and that begins at one o'clock, and that is on uh, Wednesday. And just finally, uh, some upcoming events that I'd like to call your attention to and invite you to. Um, on March 3rd, kind of a prelude to St. Patrick's Day, we have a special program at 6.30 p.m. Uh, it's sponsored, um, co-sponsored by the Uxbridge Library and the Senior Center. We'll be celebrating um, Ireland, Ireland, and um, an all-Irish program, uh, embracing Irish history, culture, um, culture and story, and song and dance. So I, at this time, I want to thank Jane Granatino for organizing this event and. Kevin Kuros and Ryan Fatman for their generous support to help make this possible at our, uh, for our community and at our center. So please, I hope you can come to that, 6.30 um, on March 3rd at the Senior Center. I heard it's going to be just a, a really fun time, a great family time. We'll have, you know, light refreshments and um, enjoy some fun storytelling and uh, spin some Irish yarns. <laughs> um, our next pancake breakfast at the Senior Center is a co-sponsored event with First Night that will be held on March 27th. It's $5 and it's always a full fun breakfast. It uh, takes place at the Center from 7 to 11 a.m. And again, First Night does so much for the community um, especially, um, you know, around the holiday season. It's, it's a great event to support. Um, does anybody have any questions about any of our events, programs, or services? Marcia, approximately how many, um, actually, well, not approximately, um, do you take attendance to these events? We do. Okay, so you can provide us a list of names and how many are attending these different events? I may not be able to give you everyone's name because not everybody signs in. We try to urge them to do so. But uh, today we had about 23 people at the uh, Valentine's party. And I'd like to share some statistics with you just to kind of uh, give you uh, at, a, at a glance um, some of the uh, changes and the growth that's occurred at the center. So that may be a nice segue. Did you have another question, Carrie? Yeah, of the 23, how many was that staff or town employees or do you know? Uh, there was me and Sue. <laughs> our van driver, of course, pops in and out. He brings people there. Okay. We have, I mean, our staff is, I'm the only full-time employee. Meg works Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, 15 hours a week. Sue works until 12 every day and 11 on Fridays. And our van driver works until 1.30. So in closing, I'd just like to share some of the stats that Donna Anke has put together for us. She um, gleaned these, this information. From um, the most current um, voter registration, the street listing book, manually, and uh, I think it's pretty accurate. I don't know if you want to go over the whole thing, but it's, it's pretty quick. 
Um, Uxbridge seniors are one of the fastest growing populations. There's actually more seniors in town than there are uh, uh, students right now. 97 Uxbridge uh, registers, registered voters turned 65 in 2010. 127 voters will turn 65 in 2011. And 143 voters will turn 65 in 2012. So, I mean, she's drawing this information from kind of a static text, of course, but I think it shows uh, growth, that the population is growing. And as of December 31st, there were 295 80-year-olds and above in Uxbridge. In 2011, 47 Uxbridge residents will turn 80. 42 will turn 85 and 27 will turn 90. There'll be 591 individuals in the age bracket of 80 to 100 years old, and there'll be 2,143 people in the age bracket of 62 to 100 years of age. As of what? You said there will be, will be when? 2000, at the end of 2011, 2012? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I was going to ask her that myself. I had invited her to come this evening, but um, I think I need to check that. 2011, I'm guessing, but I believe that's that's what she means. Because currently, the last time I spoke with the uh, town clerk, we had o just over 2,000 seniors, and I think the new census will uh, flesh that out for us. But it's a pretty accurate number, I think, for, for the current year. Uh, increased participation at the senior center. Participation at our meal program has tripled since 2005, from only five to six participants a day to 15 to 20 participants. Uh, we have been deemed the number one meal site for Tri-Valley um, two or three years in a row now. So that's, that's quite a, an, a, an accomplishment and achievement. Um, Marcia, yes. just a question yeah. on that. When Certainly. you say the meals program, are you saying the meals that you serve here or the meals that you actually drive to homes? The meals that we serve in house. We serve. We actually deliver about 2,000 meals a month from the Uxbridge Senior Center. Um, 2,000, you said? Yeah. Three. Just in Uxbridge? No. Um, good point. Um, we, in a way, um, regionalize this service at the Senior Center. If you, if you want to use that term, um, we have two routes in Uxbridge, and we also package and help. Um, get ready uh, the deliveries for the towns of Menden, Blackstone, and Millville carry. So that number, that, that, uh, that 2,000, that approximate number of about 2,000 meals a month is comprised of uh, five routes, two in Uxbridge, Menden, Millville, and Blackstone. But it's nice to see that our, our, our center is full pretty much every day for lunch. You know, there's been a, a, a winter time with all the snow. There's been a couple of days where it hasn't been, um, of course. But for the most part, we have a, uh, a full house every day. Medical transportation has increased by about 50%, uh, from two to three appointments per day to an average of four to six appointments uh, per day in 2011. And I think that we can attribute that to a couple of different factors. Um, more and more people are using our services, and Sue does an extraordinary job, Sue White, our transportation coordinator, to reschedule at a time when we can take people if there's a conflict. And we're able to bundle more appointments now because we have um, a van. Mm -hmm. So we usually the first appointment of the day, we book appointments months and you know months in advance so it's never too too early to call us with an appointment and that first appointment usually sets the tone because of the day and the direction in which the van is going because it's first come first serve so we'll put that appointment in on a day and then try to get other appointments on that day going in the same direction or we might break up the morning send people to Milford in the afternoon, we would send people to Worcester. But um, the first appointment of the day kind of dictates where we'll be going, and we try to bundle it around that. Um, Marcia, how many individuals do you serve for the appointments? About 60 to 80 a month, Carrie. Yep, so that's really up. 
Um, we have two extraordinary drivers, one that's been with us for at least seven years now, Stephen Swift, and newly on board is Omar Boucher, and they, they're just exceptional. The one thing that I can say that I'm proud to say about our transportation services is that they're not just door to door, sometimes they're door through door, depending on the circumstances of the individual that we're serving that day. So, um, you know, they're, they're very, very good. I think it's also important to point out at this point, too, that our transportation services are funded through a grant that we write every year, that I write every year, with the state called the Formula Grant, and we get about $10,000, $24 each year, and we pay our drivers a small $9 stipend. This has been level funded since the beginning of time, I think. Uh, based on this funding, okay? And so this service um, doesn't necessarily directly um, come from taxpayers' dollars locally. It comes back to us through the state, okay? Um, the average age of uh, uh, participants at the center is age 80 which always surprises me too because I look at everybody and I don't see 80. <laughs> I see maybe 65 or 70. I mean, they're very uh, young at heart and um, while many of them have retired their licenses and are using our van to get to the, to the senior center every day, I, I don't know if it's just because I think of them as family or because people are aging so well uh, these days. Everyone looks so young. Approximately 70% of the senior participants are women and many of them live alone in their own homes, they're widows. 75% of our participants visit the center five times per week, each averaging about five, an hour a day or five hours per week at the center and possibly another two to three hours uh, per week using our transportation services out in the community, either shopping, going to CVS or Walmart or taking advantage of some of our uh, trips. And 33% of our senior participants live in local subsidized uh, senior housing. And I just think that this too speaks to the wide range of wealth inequality in this age group and the impact over time of living on a fixed income. I think it's important too to remember, someone said this to me once and I said, oh yeah, you're right. Seniors are seniors for 40 years potentially from age 60 to 100. And they come to us, you know, along that continuum uh, continuum of life at various different times for various different kinds of things depending on how their health holds up and what kind of services we offer. And the Exeter Senior Center also serves families and individuals in need as well as persons with disability, disabilities. So I thank you for your time. Just one more question Thanks. to refresh sure. my memory. Sure. What's the seating capacity of each of the vans we have? Um, the seating capacity, we have a 16 passenger, which is the big van that we use every day. Um, and it's very effective because we, ha we carry groups of people in that van to the program every day. In the smaller van, it's an eight, capa you know, eight seats, which is kind of nice too because more and more family members sometimes like to attend some of the first initial appointments and they're able to go with their loved one in the van. And we can bundle. We try to bundle and use our vans as effectively and maximize them as often as we can. Okay, thank you. I would just like to, not directly to Marshall, but more to the board, just I think it's nice when you hear about Hannaford donating it, being part of the community. I think it would, um, serve us well if we were to send a note of thanks to uh, Mr. Richardson directly and copy the management team at Hannaford Corporate so they know that we appreciate him on behalf of uh, the town for his contributions. So I would be happy to take a first draft and send that to the board for comment. Um, just so you, I don't know if you're aware, but Hannaford has, um, they budget every year a percentage for donations to the community and it's based on a first come first serve. So if you're a Nonprofit in town looking for donations from Hannaford's um, mm -hmm. towards the end of the year. It's kind of like the other departments. Once they run out, they run out. But they do. It's not just the senior center. They give to all the different. Great. Um, 
they donate for first night, they donate for PTO, the schools, mm -hmm. um, Cub Scouts. Um, there's several organizations in Oxbridge that utilize the services of Penn. Yeah, this was totally unsolicited by us, so I was very surprised when Mike approached me. One of the ways that they raise money for the community is through book, book sales. Some of you may have been in, in the store, and um, so if you have any books, after you read books, if you're a book reader, you may want to donate them to Mike, and he in turn will sell them on behalf of whoever he's sponsoring uh, that particular month. Um, it's a good, good way to help keep the, pay it forward, so to speak. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Jay, I think your suggestion is a great idea. You're still volunteering to do a first draft. Good. Thank you. All right. If the board agrees, I would also now like to take to move forward new business and do letter C, discussion action cable advisory committee. As we have people waiting in our gallery. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Mark Stacy, Chairman of the Cable Advisory Committee. Um, I'm here, but uh, it's a, am I presenting to you or? This is the whole board. I mean, I shared the document. Okay. That we had talked about. I have a question. Sir. Shoot. Can I ask a question? Of course. Uh, the first sentence, the following points have been discussed for inclusion in the new charter contract. W when did you have that meeting? These are um, a combination of Mark's notes and my notes that were discussions that should have been more specific. These are discussions that were uh, stemmed from what was a scheduled meeting, but unfortunately the quorum wasn't available. So it was an, in, an internal, just the cable advisory so committee. So we still haven't had a. These are work sessions. There, there's no, there's no such thing. So it, it, am I correct? When's the last time you had a meeting where a quorum was present? I checked my meeting notes. I don't, I don't, I don't have my. Well, notes. my information is sometime back in June. Does that seem accurate? Actually, no, I think we had one in July. Mm -hmm. Maybe September. I, I, I have to go back and check my other notebook. Well, there aren't any um, minutes. On they had, we didn't have a chance to get them voted on because okay. we didn't have a quorum. Okay, so this represents what? This represents the people who were able to attend the meeting um, and then um, the, of what discussion points were brought up. That were also part of Bill August was one of yes. in one of the um, discussion groups as we well. Met with a lawyer, Bill August, mm -hmm. myself, Mike, mm -hmm. Beth, and Bruce Joe Leonardo, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Bruce Deslitz. Right. That's nice, but that's not the cable Correct. advisory committee. No, okay. You're 100 percent right. <clears throat> Did anyone have any questions specifically on? contract um, additions or any of the negotiating options? Um, well, what's the purpose of this? What, right. what are we I trying mean, to do? The this? purpose of this is to take action and, and what is what now is going to happen with the Cable Advisory Committee. The board <coughs> had expressed, um, Carrie, you actually had made the statement, correct me if I'm wrong, that um, it should come back to the board for negotiating the difficulties of being able to have a quorum with the Cable Advisory Committee, although you know, I'd like to thank everyone who has volunteered to be a member of it and realize that it's just difficult to be able to get people together to, to do that and it has been a challenge, not that there hasn't been an interest. Um, so it's twofold. How, how was that interest manifested? If, if they don't have a quorum, mm -hmm. people have an interest but they don't have a quorum, mm -hmm. which means they aren't able to get to the meeting. Mm -hmm. And we got, as you know, in a six month extension in the contract. Mm -hmm which is up in March, next month, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So nothing has been done. There. And, and I don't know why we're, oh. we're going through this. I have no idea why we're doing we're this. We're going through this now because this is what the Cable Advisory Committee in discussions has come up with that to bring before the board, because they were charged with 
having discussions and addressing things, um, one of the individuals, Patrick, I'm yes. forgetting his name. Um, Fitzgerald. Thank you. Fitzgerald is the one who did all of the um, tabulating of the survey for the, all the survey results that were received, which was valuable information. That's so fine. So now what's come before. I don't before see a lot of, I don't see much here that relates to the results of that survey. Well, there actually is part of it, which when you look at negotiating options of changing the licensing fee in number one to 4%, or then in option two, where we maintain it at 4.25%, because- Well, if I remember looking at the, the data from the survey, uh, I didn't see anything that said 4%. That wasn't. No, it was a range that was given. So yes. the decision, obviously, we can't go back to charter with, we, here's a range. So we picked the median of the range. Um, I don't know how you get four as a median of the range, but, but okay, be that as it may. Uh, so what this is, is it back, you want to do this, now? This is back before the board because the board expressed an interest in taking over the contract negotiations, and I think we also then owe a, a decision of taking some action of what the next charge is of the Cable Advisor Committee, if there is one. Th that I agree with, yes. That's something I think we need to do. It's mm -hmm. way overdue mm -hmm. in doing it. Right. But the rest of it, I, don't, I just have no idea what you're trying to accomplish here. And maybe I'm maybe I'm missing something. Were you aware of the you know contract additions? That we want to make sure that we equip all the town buildings with fiber data and video. That has been discussed before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, the next step is, <clears throat> and when this was first brought up um, in one of our meetings, I don't recollect which one. I had emailed Mark because he was right in the process of actually setting up a meeting with Tom Cohan and Bill August. Exactly. And I Cohen of Charter and Bill August, the, the representative lawyer for mm -hmm. the cable right. contract. But at that point, but at that point, the brakes were put on. Correct, because, and I think that that's where it came out, and we learned as a board that you have not had a quorum. Mm -hmm. And the concern was, why have a meeting with these guys if you're not going to have a quorum? How, you know, it was like, why bring them before a board that can't make a decision? We don't have to make a decision. That that we just we just need to present to you what we can do or can't do when you make the decision. But that's where the one month before the end of the contract. well it would have been a little lot sooner if the brakes weren't put on because I had I had everything all set up and then I had to go and cancel everything. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> one's available one week, one's not available the next week. Mm -hmm. I mean I can't keep a lawyer on on hold for weeks in advance right. pending a, a meeting notification. Mm -hmm. Right, but I. I mean, my concern, Mark, was that um, I was not aware that you all were having such an issue with reaching a quorum in order well, to. Look, you know, I, I have we have talk. we have four members technically, which is which is I, mean, I wish we had six, we wouldn't have a problem. Mm -hmm. I got two two members that do a lot of extensive travel on their on their jobs, so it's like a juggling act. And if I'm not that's blaming the case, any. then those members or the chairman, somebody, because you may not be aware of it. But I've been talking about the lack of quorum, a lack of meeting for well over six months. No, I know we spoke about, well, you had spoken about how they didn't have any meeting minutes. Yeah. I didn't. Because there were no meetings. <laughs> well. No, it was meetings. No, I, they I, were meetings. I can't file, I, I can't approve meeting minutes without having a quorum. Right, and that's where, yeah. you know, I think that there was the disconnect because I would come in here and they would be in a meeting and there would be about five people sitting around the table. I didn't stick my head in to see you know, how many were actually voting members and had they had mm. a quorum. So I didn't realize, I thought okay. you were raising an issue of open meeting law where they were, you know, they not keeping their meeting minutes and their postings and all those issues, not realizing the reason why they weren't doing that is because they never had a quorum. Well, they um, had, um, what Mike just suggested though also is that if I became a voting member of the Cable Advisory Committee, then there would be Mark and I and one other would be needed and could move forward. But the intent though, and the reason why we don't make we haven't made BOS members voting members of any of these is because we're an advisory role, because we are in charge of those boards. But like even with mm -hmm. um, the budget subcommittee, I'm not a voting member, I'm just there as an advisory role because we, you know, because of our position relating to those boards. But um, Kevin was a voting Kevin, member of that was the that school building committee. Well, and I didn't, I mean, mm -hmm. 
I didn't agree with my, that. I'm using it as an Excuse example. Me. Right, I my my impression right. when I first started this whole thing was that we would research, sit down with Charter, or actually with Bill August, and come up with a, a, a plan and an idea of what we can and cannot do in this, in, in this contract period, present it to the board, and, and, and then have the board decide where we're going to go as far as where we're going to go, what we're going to ask for, and, and what we're going to achieve. Well, that, that can't be right because I've asked, I think, you and, and others whether you have and have read the, the state booklet of guideline to negotiating cable contracts. It's very explicit. We can, regarding public access TV, we can say we want it or we can say we don't want it. Mm -hmm. We can say to what extent we want it up to a certain percentage that they can add to the bill. You don't need a lawyer for that. That's in the law. We and we alone control that. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, we have no control. So I never understood this lawyer business. But here we are, one month away from the end of the six month extension. And we're still talking about the Cable Advisory Committee. And basic decisions haven't been made. So to what extent do we want to provide PEG access? To what extent do we want, we, we require charter to add to customers' bills April to fund 6th. that? And so those are the basic decisions that have not been made. Okay, so why don't we do that? Why don't we focus at this point mm -hmm. then? Um, I make a motion to um, amend the Charter Advisory Committee's um, charge Cable advisory. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes. Cable advisory. When did I say charter? charter. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much what it is, but. The cable advisory committee's charge in that, um, actually, I don't even know if I have to admit it, amend it. I mean, this is what you're recommending mm -hmm. from your meetings. This, this is okay. our, then, our then plan I, going forward with, with, with the contract negotiation. Okay, then at this point, I think that as the board, we should take this and then we're going to pick up the contract. And we're going to look at these and go ahead and sit down with Charter and attack the contract then. That's my recommendation. But I don't know if it has to be a motion because I don't know, you know, it, I, I don't have a copy of their motion, of, I mean, their charge in front of us, so I don't know. I know we changed it at one point, so. Um, I don't know specifically whether or not their charge has to be amended or if you basically fulfilled your charge with this document to us at this point. No, if you go back to the original charge, See, they were given the job of negotiating the contract mm -hmm. and then bring it to the board to be voted on. I mean, I was ready two, two, two and a half, almost three weeks ago to sit down with Tom but our and, and, and go over all this stuff and right. at least but come back with a formalized mm -hmm. document. But there was two concerns with that one you weren't going to have a quorum so therefore you doing that with them you didn't have a quorum so therefore you weren't as the cable advisory committee um, acting as the board in doing that so the uh, you know the idea was well if you guys can't get a quorum then don't even have that meeting have that meeting with a board that can actually execute the work that's going to be taking place there that was the concern so I'd like to. Um, I like Mike's idea. Of, of I'd like to revisit. To yeah, I'd like to revisit um, a motion to have the chair become a voting member of the cable advisory committee to be able to move forward with the contract. I, okay. I, what is the state of your knowledge regarding negotiating cable contracts? We have Bill August as the attorney to yes. help represent this and put it together. But what do you need from the attorney? Tell me what you need from the attorney. What specifically do I need from the attorney? No. I, don't, I don't think I can answer that question accurately. I've negotiated contracts before. I've read the cable contract. Okay. I understand what our parameters are. I understand where we have the ability to move, where we have movement, okay. where we don't. So knowing that, Mm -hmm. what, tell me, what is the attorney going to do for you? There may be something more that he, had, he can bring to the table. 
Then what, maybe. But what's, you don't well, know. what's the concern of the of the, of the attorney? <coughs> because the, the fee for the attorney is being is that is that what the your question is? Is why is Bill Ogden well, being included? If, if, if I have a question about some legality of something and I don't know, I, I might seek an attorney. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't understand what there is about negotiating a cable contract. There's very clear cut as to what we can and cannot ask of them mm -hmm. or, or require of them, I should mm -hmm. say. I, so, can yeah. I make, make a point? I think with Bill, because he is a specialist, specialist. in this area, mm -hmm. we're not buying, we are buying his legal knowledge, obviously, but we're also buying his experience. Uh, in these discussions we've had with them, we've said, well, you know, we've thought about uh, asking Charter for this or, or proposing this to Charter, and he can say, well, based on my experience, I think they'd go for this. I think they won't go for this. Perhaps uh, you could get this if you offered this. Give me some examples of the things you might be asking for. I can give one right here. Well, um, I, I think if... I think before we get into this list, we should be in executive session because, frankly, this, these are negotiating points and they're being taped and actually sent to Charter's office. Well, I'll tell you, um, the only way you have any leverage with Charter, apart from what we have the ability to demand, which is the things related to peg, peg access, the only way to negotiate with Charter is to do it publicly. What is that based on? Because we can only ask for things that we can't require. And the way to get something from a company like Charter, or any company of that nature, is to sh put public pressure on them. Mm -hmm. If you look at the, the survey results, there's overwhelming dissatisfaction with many aspects of Charter communication. And you need to negotiate in public so that people hearing our position, what we would like mm -hmm. in ways to benefit the subscribers to Charter, if they can hear that and hear Charter's response, and if they're unhappy with that response and let Charter know that they're unhappy with that response, then you have some bargaining mm -hmm. power. Absent that, we have none. Keep in mind, under the rules of the, the state, you're supposed to start contract negotiations 30 months in advance. Mm -hmm. you, you tell them whether you want uh, formal negotiations or informal negotiations. Mm -hmm. the, the survey of community needs is supposed to be completed six months prior to the end of the contract and, and so forth. All of that has gone by. So we are in a very, very weak position to negotiate anything. And the only way to salvage some strength in negotiations is to do it in public. We gain nothing by having any discussion on Charter in executive session. Well, these are minutes that are going, these are part of our meeting minutes. So Charter obviously has the ability well, no, not to read this as well. No, 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 no. That's not what I want. I want if you're going to negotiate, you negotiate with the television camera on, mm -hmm. and so people who subscribe to Charter can listen to what we ask of Charter mm -hmm. in regards to programming and, and, and packages and so forth, and they can hear their response. Prior to that, I think we need to decide who is <coughs> going to be doing the negotiation, which is why I had. Well, I, I'm not. I am not in favor of continuing the. Um, um, cable, advisory. cable advisory committee. I Does mean, that include it, with me being made a voting member or yes. not? Yes. Yes. Because, because nothing why? against you, but yeah, it's why? gone beyond that stage. I mean, it's, why? I mean, I, I think that you pointed out it was what? It was in October of not this year, but the previous year, a year and a half ago when we realigned the charge to tackle this. And here we are a year and a half later. And we're no closer, in a sense, than we were. I don't agree Albeit, with that statement. Well, no, I do, because you actually asked for an extension. Originally, at that time, we were online and slotted to get this contract moving within, before the expiration. Mm -hmm. And it expired 
um, back in August, and you October asked for. October 6th. I'm sorry? October 6th. I'm sorry, October 6th, and you, um, and you asked for another extension of it. And what for, you know, and as a board, I think that we've taken a considerable amount of ridicule for not allowing the expenditure of the cable funds. And one of the reasons why I know I personally am not in favor of expending those funds right now because we don't have a contract. And we don't know where we're going with the actual fiber that's responsible for this whole thing, whether or not they're going to pay for it or if we're going to have to pay for it. Well, so I, I guess my question is part of our, it, it's you know, part of our negotiation. It, but is the issue with the committee? Or is the issue with the members of the committee no, not it's executing? With the committee. Because it, it, there's two vehicles that you could do this. You could consume it and make it a board of selectmen thing to negotiate, or you could take the members of the board of selectmen who are educated in this and empower them inside it. It's the best solution. I'm not saying that's the right person. Maybe it's Peter, maybe it's you, maybe it's a combination of the three of you. What's the long term best interest for the way that we operate? Is it to, if we get you know, a, a group that's not functioning at our expectation to dissolve the group and take it over, or replenish the group, assist the group, and reinforce the group so that ultimately over time they become self-sufficient and we don't now have a laundry list of things that the board needs to be responsible, right? The whole idea is to delegate and empower these teams. So the, let me give the history. The history, now this is the third contract, the third 10-year contract. The history has been the board would appoint a cable advisory committee. Mm -hmm. That advisory committee then would sit down and come up with a contract that they want. The contract, the proposed contract would be presented to the board of selectmen it, at a time when you have nothing, no really option to do except to time. endorse it because yeah, you don't have the time. Okay. That's great. Um, the history has also been that the last time the contract was negotiated by a committee, they gave away the store. There was no benefit to the subscribers or to the town from the current, with the current contract. Um, and that's because the board was pinched on a time frame, they got presented, you gotta, the board you gotta do this people now. And, and forgot about it. Okay. That's what happens, you appoint them, and you forget about them, and then, oh, gee, we had to do this. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's due tomorrow. You the know? board also didn't have a member on the Cable Advisory Committee at that point, a representative, correct? It, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, the, the problem is it's a board obligation. We are supposed to be the chief executive officers of the town. If we are not ready, willing, and able to discharge that responsibility, I don't know why we sit here. If I don't remember anyone running for the Board of Selectmen that one of those candidates for him said, vote for me, and whatever I'm supposed to do, I'm going to form a committee and let them do it. I don't remember anyone ever saying that. They all said that I want to do the job, and I'm willing to do the job, and I'm ready to do the job, and I'm going to be a good guy, and I'm going to do the right thing. But that's not what happens. But I think that the, the problem is if you keep it in the board is that you can't bring in, and, and this, it sounds like the dynamic of the current cable committee is not meeting this expectation, but you can't bring in subject matter expertise yes, we can. to create this ad hoc uh, negotiating team for this. Isn't that the, the purpose of having a committee is that, and this is our own rule that we've made up that we don't allow ourselves to put voting members into these committees, but it isn't the idea that you create a committee and then you augment that committee with expertise, hopefully, if the talent pool's there, and then we can apply the resources that we need from the board in there and effectively get to the same point. It's just the thing that's not registering with me is, you know, why do we want to take on everything back onto this board? Why don't we, as a board, participate in some of these committees? and have a more active role, how such does, that down the road. How does a multiple member body participate in some other committee? But, but, the, but the criticism that you have, if I understand it correctly, of the cable advisory committee is the expertise. You bring that contract to this board, yeah. 
you're not getting, I don't know, Bruce's pedigree, but you're not getting cable ex contract negotiating expertise from me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're getting it from, from the others, but I'm saying if there's pockets of knowledge around that, why don't those pockets of knowledge go and join the, the appropriate committee as opposed to, you know, a year from now there's a, a new person in and we don't have that and next contract negotiating comes up and the board's configured with a bunch of people who can't even spell cable. You know, and then when, we got to fall back. When the first back. time that the board considered appointing a committee to go negotiate the contract, the, the then chairman of the committee came before the board of selectmen who was just made chairman of the committee and said, I don't know how to negotiate a contract. Mm -hmm. Action never said that. Huh? It wasn't you. It wasn't, wasn't you. you. It wasn't no, you. no, no, it was before you. I don't know how to negotiate a contract. Yeah. So there wasn't any expertise there. Now the board, if it wants, if it thinks it needs expertise, is free to say, hey, we know so and so, we want to have him come in and pepper him with questions, mm -hmm. okay? But really that's not the issue. The issue, the fundamental decisions haven't been made. If you form a committee, you give the committee marching orders. Mm -hmm. This is what we're looking for. These are the parameters. This is what we want. This is what we don't want. That was never done. What they said was, all right, go ahead and meet and come back with a, with a contract. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't worked. And it's, it just boggles my mind that it, as of this date, with all the evidence before you, that it doesn't work, hasn't worked. Still, you, you're grasping at straws. While well, we're going to have this committee and, and put you on it and so forth, I don't care if Toulouse Lautrec goes on it. It's not going to help. I think another issue, Jay, has been that there's been a lot of turnover within the cable advisory committee as well. That's true. Members have left. Sure. sure. I, I, you know, I, I don't want to get caught in the semantics of how you address this structurally from board organization. I think we should figure out what's what are the next steps that Mark has planned? Mm -hmm. what, what are the areas that we have concerns with? What we think are the right solutions to those concerns and then figure out the structure in which we apply those mm -hmm. solutions against it. You know, debating whether you dissolve the committee and pull it, that may not, so to, to me, and you know, Peter, I think you have a, a tremendous amount of knowledge around the cable stuff, you're familiar with it. Your participation there I think would be valuable to us. How you participate, whether that's as a BOS member and it's on the board, or as a member, a BOS voting member inside the cable committee, is kind of irrelevant. It's not. Other than the fact that we, whatever decision we make, let's, let's try to think about it, not based on our current situation, but what's gonna be the, the best long-term structure for the town, not for this contract, not just for the next contract, but for the next 20 contracts that we that we have to deal with, that's how we scale this. Because the, you know, if we set this precedence that everything that we're not happy with, we're just going to take and put on the board, you know, that it sets us up for having this gigantic workload that we'll never fulfill. Mm -hmm. But I, and I, I don't I think, think that's the best interest of the people of the town either. And that's I agree with part of what you're saying, but the board of selectmen does not enter into that many contracts. Mm -hmm. Our responsibility, you know to sign contracts for the town mm -hmm. is really not that many. So this is one of those responsibilities mm -hmm. that looking back, we should never have given it away. This is a contract. This is a lengthy contract. I mean, most contracts we're not even allowed, actually, which brings up a good point. How do we even do a 10 year contract? Isn't, isn't there a limit that you can't enter into more than a, anything over three years before going to town meeting? No, 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 no. That, that's not this kind of contract. Okay, this is a different kind, okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. Th these are authorized uh, by the state. by the state, so, okay, there so are, they're exempt from the three years. Okay. And the federal government, there are special provisions. But my concern, looking that is under some of the no negotiating options, from my review of the survey, and then looking at some of the things that have come up here, ultimately we're going to have to sign this contract. Mm -hmm. Whatever they negotiate, sure, we're going to have to sign it. And, and I heard from Mark the what intention. What if we don't like some of that? That it was going to come in front of the board mm -hmm. before final approval. Okay, well, approval right now. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can see things that I don't see how it corresponds, corresponds with the survey. So we paid all this money to find out what the citizens want, and this doesn't look to me what the citizens asked for. I agree. So therefore, right off the bat, 
I'm saying stop right here. Why have them continue to negotiate something that I can see myself as a member trying to negotiate right out of that contract? But that, that goes back to the fundamentals. If you have people negotiate something for you, you have to tell them what, you what it is you want. Correct. And that has never been done. It was done the other way. You committee, you go and negotiate and then come and, and give it to us, which is, doesn't make any sense. And because we have probably handled this incorrectly for the last year and a half, now we're in a crunch time. We have a year before this extension is up. We have the situation where, you know, the, in some ways, the impact of this, we're putting ourselves not only against the contract extension time being up, but also the issue with the new school and, you know, how this plays into this. We can't afford to put this off anymore. And I don't see, given where we put ourselves, I don't see us having another board handle it to bring a contract back that ultimately, as this board, the one approving it, may not as a whole like. It doesn't make any sense to have our members go onto that board to vote I, I at agree. this point. I, I agree with you. And, but at some point, you say, when, when do we break ourselves out of these lovely thrones that we sit around and not reach out to the community. If we, if we think this thing was going astray, why, why aren't we getting off of our chairs and going down there and voicing the things that we're concerned down about way. with Mark? Well, because but honestly- Mark, Mark is one person. We appointed a committee. Or but with, they, they never, with, they with never the meeting. go. <laughs> well, Car Car well, Carrie's been at the, at the meetings. No, She's no, I haven't there. been at the There's meetings. Been. I've, well, I've seen in. the meetings occurring. I occur. didn't realize there was an issue with the meetings until it was brought to our attention at our last the, the what, two meetings ago. That's when I said, okay, hold on, time out. What, you haven't had a quorum in how many months? Right. I wasn't aware of that. So to say, you know, sitting on our throne, I thought everything was moving freely and they were ready to bring us in a contract for us to read, mm -hmm. not realizing that that's not where they were and we were coming up to this deadline and I don't see us making this deadline. But that's independent of quorum right now, right? To solve this thing, how do we solve this thing? You, you I, can't, you I don't think right mechanically now. you can solve it with the existing committee. Right. There's 30 days left mm -hmm. yeah. in the extension. And what are you going to do? And how is the board? About 50 days. In, huh? About 50 days. And, and how, taking down the board, are we going to solve it? We have to buckle down and make yeah. some decisions. And instead of having an hour uh, listening to you know, a nice talk about the senior center, we need to do our business. And we don't do our business. And we've got to start. Well, let me add the discussions that we've had and with, with Bill August, the town manager's president, Beth, myself, Joe Leonardo, and we made great headway as far as, you know, and, and the advantage of having Bill August is that this is a specialty negotiating with towns for cable contracts. And based upon his knowledge, he knows pretty much what you're gonna get, what you're not gonna get based upon what you're asking for, just because of his experience level in that area. Okay, so so therefore, by what you this just is said, where we've, we already we've, had that knowledge, because Mike was here and you were there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, end of story. And this is where we bl blended our, our negotiating options together. This is where we got and you know, developed our ideas for how to go forward. But some of the stuff doesn't make sense. You, you talk about leasing a channel back to charter to get some revenue. So we're gonna start out. I don't remember who brought that up. But by by having, well it's in, on here. Yeah. So we begin by telling charter ostensibly, okay, we want you to add four and a quarter percent to the bill. And then we want you to lease back one of those channels so take one third of four and a quarter percent and give us the cash. Now think about that for a minute. You, a subscriber, is going to pay the four and a quarter percent. No, 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 that's that, that's not what we were discussing. Which is not tax deductible, right? And that money goes to charter, yep. which then comes back and leases it to us. I mean, I don't know where the thinking is. No, no, no. The way this would work. That's not how we thought about it. We get three channels. Yes. We don't necessarily need three channels right now. They could. Charter could possibly use that bandwidth and put you know, another shopping network on with, and get revenue oh, out of it. Oh, gee, wonderful. They would then 
pay us for the use of our That's what our I'm saying. Channel, That's what I said. About four and a quarter percent. We don't percent. charge as much to the subscriber. We take two percent because we're getting that revenue in lieu of. But that's not a negotiation. You can just say, we want one channel, or we want two channels. We can say a maximum of three channels. We have three. Yes. We don't want to give them back. We want to, if, we want to, if, if they retain. have a use for it and we don't, we want it, to get something for it. It's not a question of it. giving. If we have one channel, there's no reason to ask for four and a quarter percent. I mean, there's no negotiation there. We have a right to ask for up to three channels. We already have three channels. I know that. We've exercised that right. We have a right to ask for We don't consider for ourselves asking for them. They're ours. I know that. Right. And we're not going to give away one. With, with it's just not a because. question of giving away. You're saying we don't want the three. We'll take two or one. And therefore, we only want you to charge the people of Oxbridge X dollars. But those are the decisions that have to come from the board but you're right. We don't have to ask for those things. Those are our decisions to make. Another uh, an office in Grafton opening another hour, that's something you have to ask for. We can't demand that. But I want to tell you, not a lot of people in Nuxbridge have occasion to visit North Grafton. It's better than going to Worcester on a Saturday trying to bring back a cable box. No. Have them bring it here, and they can. That was asked for in, in, in the. Carter can come here. That was in the that's survey to too, to having it. having additional hours or an office here, so. So, I, so my concern on this is just that you lose the. If you take it over the board, you scorn whoever's been participating. Without the quorum, in the cable advisory committee, you lose whatever knowledge. Why would you lose that? We don't need you can to say lose when you when we discuss that, hey, come on over, and we want right. you to help us. You know, we'll I mean, you don't lose anything. It's, uh, it's we'll an interesting a strategy. I, I don't know that it's great <laughs> when you take something from someone and said, hey, come over and tell me how it works, the thing that I just took from you. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, it's your thing. And I'm not, this is But who knows? There is no thing because, because they're not going to the meetings. So but the, anyone those, else. But those, you're, puni you're punishing those that are. No, you're no, not punishing not. them. As it opposed to taking meetings. people and, and swatting them into that committee, mm -hmm. you're shutting down the committee, taking the, the nugget of, Whatever they've built, intellectual pro property they've garnered around this, and you. I don't, I don't well, care. we're going to do that anyway. Do whatever you want. Uh, that we're, Jay, you we're going to do that time anyway. Time is running out. I mean, at this point, they have the negotiation options. Okay. Mm -hmm. We take these, we put them in the contract, and we vote on them. Or we have them put them in the contract. They bring it to us, and we vote on it. We're at the same place. My concern in this, you know, because that's where you are. Your yeah, next I, I'm ready to sit draft. down with Tom Cohen and, and okay. at least discuss these and come up with a contract. Mm -hmm. so, see where we can go. I mean, I so see we, it we, as we need a working session to review these and say, as Peter said, you know, this one doesn't make any sense. This one. But could we're going to do anyway. Here. We're, we're as a board. Mm -hmm. That's our responsibility to do that anyway. They they whittle this down, mm -hmm. and we're going to look at it and go, well, we don't like options. They chose three. No, we don't want to do that. Let's go ahead and put two back in. So then they did all that work for us to come back and change it. All I'm trying to do is speed this along because we are at a situation where we're under crunch time here. Mm -hmm. You know, coming into the Springtown meeting, we could be looking at a warrant article asking to expend more cable funds. And my concern is, is that we're going to expend those monies without actually understanding whether or not we needed to hold some of those money back because cable tells us no because we don't have a contract negotiated yet. Yeah, I'm not we're arguing not the point that we need, we need actually, to get the Actually, I spoke with Tom about that months ago when he said if the, the contract expires, it still maintains where it's at. It, doesn't it does, but it doesn't get us anything new. Right, but that's still negotiable as far as, a, as negotiating a new contract. Right, but it was something that we discussed before. Um, Mark, is that if they say no, we're not running you the new fiber? No. And we then decide as a board, guess what? We're going after them for violation of contract. And in the end, we take that money and we go ahead and run the new fiber because the point is don't buy new equipment if, if the people are going to see a crappy picture oh, anyway. Exactly. It doesn't matter. One so of the points that we had on here, is one of the negotiating points was getting them to run 
But if they the won't fiber. run, and then we have to file suit against them, we're going to have to have the capital to go ahead and do the work while we're fighting the lawsuit. That was the point. So we don't want to expend those funds unless we know whether or we not have a we've basis got. For your lawsuit. How did we get into a lawsuit all of a sudden? I mean, I no, think it's it was you're, a you're, it, oh, just my a minute. Point I have a suggestion: is what if we have a joint workshop between the board of selectmen and the cable advisory committee members that are available next week? Wait a minute. Now. The, the the members who are available. Are you assuming that there won't be a quorum of them? And what if there isn't? What do you do? It doesn't mean we can't have a workshop. Wait, what's Why a can't workshop? we have? Tell me okay. what a workshop is. A yeah. workshop is just sitting to go through exactly what we're talking about of, of why, you know, there are some things on here that because no one has been um, <clears throat> either attending the meetings or watching them and because they have been working sessions, you don't know what the background is on some of these negotiating options. So let's have a workshop together to put together what should be those options that then whether it be Mark who makes the, the appointment with Tom and whomever else represents it, whether it's me from the board of selectmen or, or you know, another, if you want to, Peter, you're more than welcome at, to. At some point, you have to make a decision. And if you're going to make a decision by a multiple member body, which last I knew, that's what the board of selectmen is, mm -hmm. you have to have a properly posted meeting and you have to have an agenda item that makes reference to the decision that you want to take. How is this different than when we were having the zoning bylaw workshops? Same thing. No, they weren't. We had quorum. You don't have but quorum. They were going so therefore, through. it's not a, it's not a negotiation of the cable advisory committee because you don't have quorum. Therefore, you're not the cable advisory committee but when you're meeting. But this is a discussion of. But it's not the discussion. Out. Well, you, you can have all the discussions not, you, you want, but at you. some point you've got this much time left, Beth. Don't you understand? I understand that, Peter. I'm very aware of that issue. Okay. What I'm trying to do is take what Jay is suggesting and say what is going to be the best solution to this. Rather than arguing about is cable good, is cable bad, who's going to do it, the charge actually says that the cable advisory committee is to seek out and subsequently negotiate contracts with cable operators in the best interest of the town of Uxbridge. Yeah, that's it what I It does think. not say that it is to then return to the board of selectmen for input. That's a well, it that has to because we're the only ones that signed <laughs> the contract. We signed the contract. This is the summary of responsibilities that we have on the website. They can negotiate, but they can't sign it. They can work it out. It, so then we wrote this wrong and we gave them responsibility that they can't have, so therefore we have to change their charge and take it away from them. They can't sign As opposed that. to negotiating I'm not a contract. Gonna sign anything. I'm not going to sign, as a member of the Board of Selectmen, I hope none of you would sign a contract as unless you read it and agree with it. to negotiating the contract, which is where Mark was how many weeks ago? Lost track now. Three weeks? <laughs> of being able to do that. But part of this also, which we did not do as a board, is we were supposed to meet and give them what we felt was the direction that they were supposed to take to negotiate. We never did that as a board. And a part of that was the survey, correct me if I'm wrong. After we got the survey results as a board of selectmen, we were supposed to then look at the survey results and say, we're doing this backwards. We should which be giving never them. Because we kept saying, well, we're going to meet with the committee next meeting and then they didn't show up and we're going to meet with Mark and then they didn't show up and didn't show up and didn't show up and didn't show up. That's been the history there. We were supposed to give them negotiating options which were our priorities based on what we saw from the survey. This got turned around so now we have to bring it back because unfortunately where we're at is you guys are going to negotiate a contract that we haven't agreed what points are going to be in it as a board of selectmen. So to eliminate that one additional step that's going to need to take place at this point, we just go ahead and do everything right now as the Board of Selectmen. So doesn't it make sense then to have almost a trading of information in a workshop? What, of is, what is your understanding of the word workshop? A meeting. I mean, just okay, call the, in a meeting. The, okay. Okay. 
discussion. A meeting. working session, whatever. Are you against that? A meeting to talk about. Having a joint meeting? Because to talk at this point, it's really gone nowhere. Exactly. For a half no, hour, no, so. I, don't have yeah. a, I don't have an objection to a joint meeting as long as we understand that at the end of that meeting, it will be the Board of Selectmen negotiating the contract. Right, and then maybe you can eliminate. Because chances are, we're the only board that's going to have the quorum. The, 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 you know, right. the real We're going to eliminate the, the real exactly step. What happens. But if you can do a joint meeting for next week and keep it moving fast because you and know time what is if, everything and if there's in no accordance show with then recent history yeah. at that quote joint meeting well, we don't have a quorum of the cable advisory committee and in, at that point peter the selectmen have to move on you're under the gun and that's yeah. when you can take up the charge and revise the charge at that meeting why don't so we revise don't the charge tonight because it's on our agenda <laughs> well if you don't have an interest in having a joint meeting with them you might as well right no, we can still have a joint um, meeting with them whether why, we why have the charge or not. Why do you need a quorum to have information sharing? Uh, yeah. Again. Why do you Why do you need a quorum for them to go through the list of the the issues and the things that they were thinking when they put well, this together? Well, we can't because if you want a joint meeting yeah. with the board of selectmen, we have to have a quorum. And the other part of the joint meeting is going to meet the meeting of the cable advisory committee. They too must have a quorum. Now, we can have a meeting. And anyone else who we want to participate in that meeting, we can have participate in the meeting. Can right they can participate as individuals, whoever co comes. Mm -hmm. So even if there's not a quorum, it doesn't make any difference because the people are there and presumably whatever knowledge they might have is there with them. You have to get this notion of a cable advisory committee out of your mind. It hasn't existed for a long time. And even this document is, is not a cable advisory committee document. What's that for definition? So, Cl Carrie, you want to provide clarification to the cable advisory committee that it, they are not in charge of negotiating the contract? Is that? It depends what you mean by that. I make a motion to. Still okay. a meeting. I make a motion to. Um, um, Amend the Cable Advisory Committee's charge yeah. um, to remove um, subsequently negotiate from their third item. So it'll just say seek out contract with cable operators in the best interest of the town, okay. which is what they're currently doing. They're getting the information then that way they're still actively a part in us moving forward. However, if I negotiate, that puts the responsibility of taking out subsequently negotiate. So we accept, yeah. Comes back to the Board of Selectmen. There's no benefit to that. There really isn't. Why? Then we'll have a joint meeting next week. You if you invite the individuals, you have to abolish the, the cable it. advisory committee. Why? There's not because a need to. Because they serve no purpose. Uh, well, I disagree on the, the individuals have a joint may meeting. serve a purpose, but the committee <clears throat> itself is. We can address that issue at another time, but right now there's other we need to focus things on the, on the summary of their responsibilities that I think we can address at a later date. Right now, let's just get through this contract, and once we're through the contract and we know exactly where we stand. I think it would be premature to completely dissolve the whole cable advisory committee unless until we know where we stand with this whole contract with charter. Don't we know where we stand? No, not right now we don't. We're, we're, we're in a, a six month extension. Which yes, is we are. That's expire. almost about to expire. So what are we going to do? Ask for another six month extension? <laughs> I don't know. Um, you can go along with the circus as long as you want, I guess. Peter, we're trying to find a resolution to this. I mean, and frankly, frankly, I don't think comments like that help. You know, I, I think that you're, you're not saying things that are beneficial to finding a solution for this. Town Hall That's is closed next Monday because of President's Day. You want okay. to shoot for a meeting thereafter? Yep. Yes. Be reminded of school yes. case you carry. I know. Are there any other um, days of the week that work or do not work for board members? The week of 22nd, 23rd, or 24th for a joint meeting. I am not available on Friday. Well, I'm assuming we wouldn't do it Friday because town hall will be closed. So that's why I say um, Tuesday, um, Wednesday, or Thursday. The 
only day I'm probably available is Wednesday. Thursday, I think, 23rd and 24th. There's no school that week. Yeah, I know. We're talking a day meeting? You all meet during the day, correct? Usually it's a four o'clock meeting. I think we'll do whatever the best is that we can. Usually go four o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shoot for any time, four o'clock or, or if they're after on Wednesday. <coughs> mm -hmm. and Wednesday. Oh, yeah, Wednesday the twenty third. And then Mark, you'll follow up with. Um, Is that your normal Beth and meeting I on time? The timing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Usually it's Tuesdays. It's Tuesdays. So we're saying which days now? Thursday. Thursday. Wednesday the twenty third. Wednesday the twenty third. Jay. Tuesday or Wednesday. Share your thoughts. Four o'clock. Tuesday or Wednesday. This went around and around about we can't get a quorum, and then next week's school vacation week, and we can't get a meeting next week. This is comical. But it it seems like the shortest solution would be to empower enough people so you can get a quorum and get to the next step. Mm -hmm. but no, we have a quorum next week. It's just the day. So Jay, having said that. No, I'm. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. No, I so I want to ask a question then. Sure. How do you feel about a member of the board of selectmen being a voting member on the cable advisory committee? I would feel that multiple board of selectmen be vote, voting members. I can think of three of them. You can't, then you have a meeting with the board of selectmen. Yeah, you don't need you to. Nothing then prohibits. It's BOS. Nothing so, prohibits that. No, no, but that, <laughs> that doesn't. I mean, then, it's the then you can selectmen. negotiate the contract. Perfect. But then Two that's birds the board of selectmen. Stone, no, and you don't have to change the charge. It's not the cable advisory committee negotiating the contract, then it's the board of selectmen because we are, as soon as three of us meet on an issue that then comes before us, we have a quorum and we have to be posted as the BOS. I'm trying to pick an M&M up with boxing gloves on right now. Mm -hmm. This is it's I, like I know. the boundaries of government are, you know, I, well, I throwing didn't common, <laughs> common sense out the window. <laughs> Sorry, Bruce, didn't mean to steal your well, tagline. I, I don't see anything wrong with that being just post, a Just post a BOS meeting and post a yeah. tech meeting. And Three people show up, you get a quorum, you get a quorum. Oh, yeah. That seems to be, in my mind, which is a little demented. So. so then I would entertain a motion to have There's a the motion on the table right now. Oh, sorry. What was yours again? The motion to amend the CSC Could you charge read it? to remove the subsequent negotiation. Which has to be done Online. because what's in that charge is illegal. If I'm I understood what you're saying before. They right. cannot do they that. They can't negotiate right. it. it. Comes back to so that has to be done regardless of however we fix this other problem. That has to be Correct. done. Correct. Right. Uh -huh. Yes. 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 So we have a second. Peter, do you agree? Second. Well, not really. You, I mean, they can negotiate it. You just don't. But have to, they, they're well, not we can't sign signing it. Signing it. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it might be considered to be negotiating in bad faith to charge a committee to negotiate and then. Have someone else sign the signatory. Yeah, but you know, in every the, the entity in the out. world, you know, the CEO or whoever ultimately has signature or whoever's assigning authority or director in the company signs off on a contract. They don't negotiate every contract that walks in the door. I didn't no. negotiate no, the contract that for the, the BGP. Under which sure, they they're, expect they're the contract yeah, sure. to come back. Yeah. Right, which we didn't we have not done that. Right. So therefore yeah, no, I understand. Um, I mean, you, you send me out to negotiate labor contracts, but I'm in consultation with you, and I'm, I, I'm not out on a limb negotiating something right. that without input from the board. But and none of that we, happened right, with we, the cable we, advisory. Right, that's where we failed none here. Right. But that's not a fail of the charge. It's a fail of. It's a failure of the managing the, of their, right. their committee. Right. So I don't think the charge is wrong. Well, I, I don't know why we'd alter the charge. Then if that's not the problem, we, you know, we're but trying to fix time, everything. Because of where we are, now. we don't have time now to fix it. If, if we were back in October, you know, and we had the six months to do this, it may be different. But we're, we're under a 60-day mark now. Bruce, you seconded that motion? Yes. Okay. All those in favor? What was the motion now? <laughs> motion by Ms. Robertson to amend the CAC charge to remove the language or the line of subsequent negotiation. We're seconded that motion. Wait. 
I don't have ex the exact word in front of me, but I know what she's talking about. So the motion would now read, uh, How would it? seek out contracts yeah. with cable advisors in the best interest of the town of Oxbridge. Yes. Cable, yeah, I'll get into it. And I'll, I'll put that in the minutes. So Which is what they have done the thus minute. far. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No. So we're all set on a joint meeting. Okay, so right now we're trying to schedule a joint meeting between the Board of Selectmen and the Cable Advisory Committee for the 23rd, 4 p.m. or later. Prior to that, I was going to make a motion um, that I would entertain that um, as chair, I'd be a voting member of the Cable Advisory Committee. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yay. No. Do I have to abstain? Aye. Second, it should happen. <clears throat> I make a motion that Carrie participate on the Cable Advisory Committee as a voting member. Second. I don't accept that nomination. Just I don't. We're going to be negotiating the contract as the board of selectmen. I don't see any reason. I don't believe we should be voting members of other committees. So you're going to decline. Yes. I motion that Peter Bagdasarian be a voting member on the cable advisory yeah. committee. What was that? <laughs> Yet. Yet. <laughs> Chat. <laughs> Butch. It did. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. So we're going to shoot for the 23rd. Yes. All right. Now, yeah. question. What do you do on that meeting if you don't have a quorum of the Cable Advisory Committee, even with the addition of Beth? Now, how many members of the committee now? And we're well, adding. You're still four. You just have voting now. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Now we're adding Beth. So now you're going to have five. No. Now he has four. Well, Beth would count as a voting member, so she's a member of the Cable Advisory Committee, sort of. How many did you have? Yeah, it's not sort of. Four. Yes. One makes five. 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 You have five. Now. Okay. So you need three. Right. Myself, Beth, and I'll at least guarantee Joe's usually available, and the other guys, you know, they, they travel and they're around. So. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but Wait a minute. How many members without Beth? Four. Four. Okay, okay, so there will be five in total. Okay. I think the answer to the question, Peter, is we've taken away their need to actually make a motion within there because they're just doing data research and going to make recommendations to the board. They're not negotiating anymore. So I don't know if it matters that they have a quorum anymore. Well, they need a quorum to make a recommendation because it's the recommendation of the board, therefore it requires a motion. Okay. So the meeting will be on Wednesday the 23rd Wait, 4 p.m. at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Okay. And Mark will confirm that with us this week sometime tomorrow morning. And what is your schedule for the board to decide what they want in the successor contract? <coughs> Excuse me, Beth? Yes. Um, we'd like to have Bill come to that? Yes. Yes, most definitely. Okay. He's available. Anyway. The idea is to keep, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Bill, Bill's been a great resource as far as knowing, you know, what our options are and what the his track history of the charter is, what you can ask, what you can't ask for. So. I think it would be good to come out of that meeting, your next cable advisory meeting, with a, to Peter's point, a timeline. Yep. Of milestones working back from the last 50 days, you said, Mike, out? Mm -hmm. Specifically, yeah. when's the board input? When do you expect board sign off? What are the, the key steps there? I believe April 6th is the, is the uh, final. But my order. question was when is the board going to decide what it wants from the negotiations? Let's hope next week. Wednesday. 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 As soon as you get that. Mm -hmm. right there at that meeting. As soon as that meeting's done next week, Goes get a hold of Tom Cohan and he'll come in. Right. Do all the preliminaries. Just for back, so who has the contract, upper 
who has it uploaded and is doing the editing lot during your meeting? Right now, Bill, Bill. Bill has it all. He's already yeah. edited a bunch of stuff in. Bill, Bill's actually gone through the contract already and changed some there. wording. <laughs> Bill has actually written up the contract minus some of the things that we requested. He's gone through the contract and has actually found some wording that is no longer acceptable. Can you circulate a draft? Yes. Before Wednesday? Well, I mean, as soon as possible. No. And uh, one other recommendation is Peter had mentioned uh, the state guidelines in regards to negotiating a cable contract. Mm -hmm. I believe I gave that to you, uh, the board months ago. Mm -hmm. If you have copies, I highly recommend you review it again. Uh, Mr. August also has um, a previous uh, convention I went to that he was a speaker. He actually has guidelines also. And I'll get that to Tracy tomorrow to, to get up to uh, the committee members before the meeting next Wednesday. Perfect. Have all of you looked at the, the, what Chada wants? Because we've had that for a long time. And that, that language is not beneficial to the town. That's what Chada Are wants. you asking me personally? Because yeah. you're saying have all of you, but you're looking at me. Well, so are you asking me any of as you? a selectman? Or? Yeah, yeah, all, all of the selectmen. Okay. I don't know. I have not. Okay. Which document is that? Which document is up here? <laughs> the um, we we received, I think, months ago, maybe maybe a year. A letter of intent to start no, negotiations. No, no, we had from Chada their proposal. We haven't seen anything in regards to Chada other than the uh, initial letter of start, neg start negotiating. I don't, I don't, if well, you I have know, that document, and, I, and, then, I, and, you and know. we took the standard contract. I sent it to Bill, and Bill edited it to be more favorable to the. We 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 were sent by that Chata. Was the, that was in the read file. Yeah, like a long exactly. time ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was a summary document that they said, well, let's skip the whole negotiation process here. Why don't we just yeah. sign? So that's I, I don't really consider that their working proposal. I, I mean we, that hasn't been brought up. No, but if, then, if you if you read the state guidelines, if you want. read state guidelines, there's two ways of negotiating a type of contract. There's an expedited way and then there's a long dragged out way. So, like Mr. Bagsian said. We've taken the you know, expedited way, but it's been long and drawn out. We, well, we, have, we, have, we, have, we, we haven't taken the expedited way. In the past two okay. years, we've had um, at least three different committees start negotiations. And some of those committees are no longer around. Okay, so we have our meeting for the four o'clock uh, on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Barry. Okay. Let's go back to new business that is um, hopefully something easy to go through. Um, letter A, the high school project. This discussion action of the MSBA budget transfer of $46,460 from the owner's contingency to the A&E wetlands. This was in our meeting uh, last week with the joint meeting with the um, school building committee, but as noted before, we didn't have it as an agenda item. So now it's here for an agenda item for the board to approve. That's number A. Signature. Yeah. Yep. The new business. Um, Letter A. <laughs> make a motion that the board approve the project funding agreement. Budget revision request number two, seeking a transfer of funds in the amount of 46,490 from classification co code 08010000 owner's contingency to classification code 02040500 A and E wetlands and authorize the chair to sign all necessary documentation. Second. You gotta change your word. Which it's, word? Which word? Where it says funding agreement budget revision request number two seeking a transfer. Change seeking to to a transfer. Oh. Or, or just to, to, tra to, to no. leave out A, to transfer funds in the amount of blah, 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 from, from two. Because we're not seeking to do it, we're doing it. To, to, to transfer. No, no, it's a request. No, they're it's requesting. They're requesting budget to, funding to, agreement to the MSBA. is seeking that. Yeah, we're but we're doing it. They have, well, the MSBA has to approve it. We're requesting that we do it. It's a request, not a, not an action. I, 
I don't think we they would turn us down, but it is a it is a request. Right. So they have Number to approve two, it. Seeking a transfer, but what we want to do is to yes, we're we to do the transfer. We're yes. seeking to transfer the funds. I guess we need to say that the board approved the project funding agreement budget revision request number two, seeking from the MSBA a tr our ability to transfer funds. Is that right, Ben? Because we have to seek from them the ability for uh, for us to transfer. They have to approve it. They it's, have to approve it. Right. So therefore, what we are we are looking to do is to make a transfer. Okay, so amend my motion. Seeks. The board approved the project funding agreement budget revision request number two. To transfer funds. To transfer funds, funds, in, funds the in the of amount of forty six thousand four hundred ninety. Right? I, yeah, I agree. From classification code, blah 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 blah. Got it. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 New business. D, discuss slash action table, oh, excuse me. Discuss slash action town manager goals and contract. So everyone has a copy of manager's goals as well as the employment agreement Peter what's your input of what We're talking about the town manager's goals, like um, decision. Uh, I shouldn't. Didn't the board already vote on already, his goals? We already did the goals. Discussion of his goals slash contract. So, in regard, we're at the point where, if we were going to be seeking to renew the town manager's contract, yeah. we'd be. Dis that's part of the discussion. Are we going to be seeking not to renew the contract? Okay. Do we need to step forward and start to look for another individual? So. Well, that, I move that's the that action we in front of us. Notify the town manager that we would like to renew the contract and invite uh, from him any proposed changes to the terms of the contract. Second. Does that make sense? Final thing. So we have a motion, we have a second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. Nay. <coughs> What was the vote? Two to three. Motion to fail. Motion failed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we so have another motion. So I have a motion. Um, to. I have a motion to. Continue the town manager's contract as is and move forward with searching for a new town manager for the town of Uxbridge. That's a contradictory motion. Yeah. You well, okay. Then, um, Tracy. Help motion me. by Ms. Pittman to continue the con man town manager's Current. contract mm -hmm. as is. Mm -hmm. And move forward searching for a new town manager for the town of Uxbridge. To, to um, okay, then to be in, in place with beginning fiscal year 2012. Wait a minute, discussion. First of all, we have our town manager goals mm -hmm. that we went over with the town manager mm -hmm. less than a month ago. As a board, he went through each of the goals and explained where we were at. Mm -hmm. At that time, I don't recall the board raising any issues with where he was on mark with our goals. And right now, you're proposing to put a motion on the table to end his contract based on what? I don't think that you um, accurately have depicted 
how we um, responded to his goals, whether it be individually or as a group. Um, yes, the town manager did go ahead and give us an update on all of the things, um, that all of the, the six goals that we had agreed on for him. Um, however, it is my opinion and my opinion alone that there have been instances where, for instance, goal number six, new high school project, establish a regular communication schedule between the school building committee and the municipal office to stay abreast of developments with the new school project in order to minimize unexpected changes to the plan. My notes that I made are that the town manager attends all SBC meetings in regular email contact between meetings. Town manager and finance director schedule meetings with the superintendent and school business manager as needed. I personally don't feel that that has happened. And I feel- Which meeting has he not attended? Initiating a meeting where there have been times where things have needed to be discussed. Specifically? Can you speak to any of those that, where there have been issues that just well, a matter of walking upstairs and having a conversation of moving forward and making sure that things are. I, I mean, I my question I've to you, Beth, is um, for you to answer that, not for okay. him to answer okay. that. You Fine. provide I just specifically where he has failed. Okay, I think that there are times where um, that there have been issues and that have arisen in regard to it could have been as simple as talking about, you know, the sewer, the water sewer connection. That could have been handled in a conversation upstairs as opposed and, to. It actually did take place in a conversation upstairs. I was actually present when that was taking place in a conversation upstairs. That wasn't the initial conversation though. It was obviously, it was. But how is that the town manager's responsibility when a conversation did take place and if it didn't get filtered completely to the school building committee or it didn't get filtered to Jocelyn Lesser, I don't understand where that falls to the responsibility of the town manager. Specifically with that goal, mm -hmm. and the way that I read it was, is he was to attend the meetings and he was to disseminate information. He has done that. Do you feel that he's disseminated all the information that's necessary? That has been provided to us, yes. I do. I disagree because there currently was just added to the school building committee agenda to make sure that the town manager at the end of every meeting had his to-do list to walk away from the meeting with. That just I don't feel that that I don't feel that that would have been necessary had we been getting updates regularly and things had been. But that wasn't the town manager's forward. responsibility to provide those updates. That's why there was an individual from the Board of Selectmen placed on that board. Originally, that was the goal of the selectmen, not the town manager, to provide those updates. And that was part of, on the agenda, that always fell to the selectmen to give that update. Kevin previously gave those updates, not the town manager at those meetings. And yet he's supposed to stay abreast of developments. And which development, name a specific development that he was not abreast of. Give me a minute. Just let me look at my notes. While Any? you're looking at the notes, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. I've been on the board a long time, mm -hmm. and Mike is our third manager. Mm -hmm. By far better than the other two by far. He is a great asset to the town. The problem has been, every problem has been, every problem has had its roots in a board of selectmen that does not know how to do its job. And we've had a series of people who want to be chairman who have a giant ego, nice people, all nice people, but they simply do not have the knowledge. And that has been the problem with all the issues that the town of Uxbridge faces. The issues have been talked about. That's a failure of the board, the board of selectmen. The problems with the cable advisory committee, a failure of the board of selectmen. The chairman of the Board of Selectmen is responsible 
when the board appoints a committee to follow up and make sure that the committee is discharging its responsibility. That has not happened, even though I've mentioned it over and over again. So I don't know, Beth, what it is you want to accomplish, but I'm telling you, you're on the wrong track. And it's obvious by what you've said that this is something that's been cooked up between the three of you prior to this didn't that just materialize tonight. Don't give me that stuff and don't give me that eye look. Peter, it is not, nothing has been cooked up. And if that is a comment in regard to how you felt when I contacted you as coming on as, as a new board and asking if you would support me as the chair, then I'm sorry, but you certainly haven't given me any credit. This, nothing has been cooked up. Yeah, I'll second that. Peter, I, I take offense to that comment. I'm offended this by not, that. This is not but a cooked I, up listening to scenario. this for out of the blue, it seems very strange. And, and secondly, sudden, let, me, let me interrupt. And secondly, I don't support where best, best argument on this. I, I brought this up last meeting as a, a matter of procedure in that Mike has a contract, just like any contract that we talk about, that, that is going to run its course at the end of June. Whether we renew that contract, I'm not ready to make a decision on that tonight. You, you guys are, and that's fine. I wasn't going to make a decision. I don't, I don't want to make a decision on that right now. But in preparation for his contract running out, let's not close our eyes and pretend that everyone's going to vote. His contract's going to be renewed at the end. What are the appropriate steps that we should be doing now between, sorry, between now and then to make sure that Mike has a fair assessment of how he's done against his goals? Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm thinking more of line when I brought this up that, hey, Mike, we should be setting up a review to talk about these things a month and a half from now. And then if we're going <clears> to <throat> seriously consider his contract, I don't want to be put into a position where it's come May and the board doesn't support renewing Mike's contract and we haven't even thought about looking at other candidates yet. So when we talk about, when I brought up this issue last week, it was more of he's on a one year contract, it's due up. I would encourage him to reapply for his contract, but shouldn't we also be feeding the queue? Because who knows what Mike's intentions are, right? He's got a long drive. He's looked for other opportunities before. I don't want to be left not being prepared because we just assumed everyone was going to say, yes, it's good. It's going to automatically renew, and, and we're all happy with that. That's what my mindset was, I, you know, and I really do take offense to the fact that you think that I'm cooking something up with you three mm -hmm. and there's this three thing going on here. I'm an, I'm an independent thinker and I don't necessarily collaborate with these guys in a malicious intent to, you know, move an agenda forward on my own account. So okay. let we me just be very us. clear with that. We don't Let's. talk at all. I don't know where you're coming with that because I don't talk to Jay at all. And in fact, Peter, I would say... Yeah. Well, give me some reasons for your dissatisfaction. I'll give you some reasons. All right. I'm disappointed in Mike because most of the time, David Genero is running being a town manager. And decisions are being made, and he's not the one making them. Is that a, is that a fair assessment? Well, I don't know. Give it's me some specific. examples. Computers. The computers. Mm -hmm. He didn't know anything about it. And personnel you, changes. And did he didn't know did anything he, about it. What personnel what changes. What personnel changes? The, the, the raises that were going to happen. I, I no, no wait a minute. Those were not raises. Those were oh, based on, on an. Wait a minute. No, to understand a the contract process. Contract adjustment. Tell me a, a raise is not a, con, a con, Hold contract on. adjustment. Hold on. To understand the Give process, each of the department heads is provided a budget. Within the budget, they make their recommendations. Correct me if I'm right or wrong, David, but weren't those your recommendations for your budget? The contracts, the salary issues. There were three. Were, there were, were three. they or were they not part of your recommendation, part of your budget? There were three, there were three salary adjustments. Mike and Two I talked I to them. Which I asked you to make the at, third at one, length. which I vetoed. I had, I, had a, I, had, I had an individual comment on, on the third. Uh, Mike passed them along, got, got some input one way or the other, and then, and then we made the final, the final part of this current budget. So the discussion was had with Mike on all three. It was not a unilateral decision by any means. And on, 
That's baloney. It, it's not, Bruce. Yes, it is. They were brought forward How many tonight? decisions, David, have you made without even telling him? How about the thing sitting outside, the, the uh, air conditioner thing? That's I mean, the, the, that is the only one. That's the only thing you've ever done that that's correct. you haven't told me. What about that's, the that's computers? That's correct. We talked about the computers. The computers. You bought the computers. We had yeah. meetings on the we, computers. We had talked about the computers previously. I didn't, I didn't know at the time when you were going to pull the trigger when you did, but we had discussed them. We had, we had <laughs> there, there was funds available within the technology grant. We went over which type. Mike had a concern with the original ones we talked about, which were going to be Apple's. We wound up with IBM's. There, you that, made, you've never made a decision without telling Mike. Look, no, that, that's I, a statement that anybody could. I mean, I mean, we, I mean, de define decision. Oh, no, a, 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 a town manager decision. You've never made it. I bring everything to Mike. It, it's what I'm required to do. Oh, no, 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 I don't believe that. Well, okay, but help, uh, give us minute. again some examples. Right. Bruce. I mean, and has. Well, in all fairness, has Mike reprimanded David for some of these issues as, it's, as the manager? You have to ask Mike. The issue that I had most had with David was that the placement of that air conditioning unit. And, and that happened while I was on vacation, and I indicated my problems with, with that. Uh, because of some of the economic issues, I didn't move. Okay, so as a manager, it is the town manager's responsibility to manage his people and to take whatever action, whether positive or negative, that he feels appropriate. And I he just don't did. Feel, take I just that. don't. I don't. I don't believe that now, then, or ever. Okay. Let's use a more recent example. What about the fact that um, when Justin was hired, that part of the agreement was if he was going to be working in the office with Nick. And then why did Justin start to work upstairs when Mike had said specifically he should work in the office with Nick? And it wasn't until I brought it up as a concern last week that action has been taken. Is that not the town manager's responsibility to, to back up what he says? And I did talk to David about it and he was... David, changed their mind. After no, the fact. we did not change our mind. We were waiting for furniture. Those decisions you, you never are said, the town manager's <clears throat> decision. You, you yeah. never Not said, just decision. a minute, you never said that you spoke to David about that prior. I have spoken to David about it prior. Not prior to me bringing it up in the email. You did I not. Spoke. David, I spoke to you. He spoke that. to me. I said, why is he up here? You said, we're waiting it for was when It was within our plan, but the whole thing is, one, Nick has a desk that we had to, ins that we had to install an electrical outlet and all the computer cables too. At the time when we first did this, we couldn't get him in there until we reconfigured the entire office, which includes the postage machine that's now up here. We had to get that, we had to get that redone so it had passwords because it's now in a public area. That and yet we've is, known is, that Justin was going to be coming on board for how long and how come the action wasn't taken sooner than this? Because to make accommodations for him. Because the other thing, we had other things we had to do. We had to, you saw, you saw the email that came out with the, uh, with the pro pay request number two. We had to work our way through that. That had to get done. We had to, we had to get the schedule A done. It took about a week to get everything all organized. I mean, I'd like to be able to say that we can drop everything and do everything all at the same time. We can't do I'm that. I'm not saying that things should be dropped. I th I'm saying that things should be scheduled. If it was yeah. something, you know, he was coming on board on a specific date and that this is one of the requirements right. that you agreed to right. and that Mike is going to enforce. Yeah, we were, we were it, a it should have a been week behind the time. Time management should have been used in order to plan for it. Right. But that as we're, much we're as possible. A week, week and a half out. Okay, yeah, so those things are, are decisions of the town manager. You are getting involved in day-to-day -day operational issues, and that's not your job. I do not want to be involved in day-to-day -day operational issues. I am not the only selectman that does that either. However, I would like to have a select a town manager that I feel knows how to manage people appropriately and well and effectively and can help to groom them 
whether there is the opportunity for them to take additional education, but not to the point where they feel that they are in fear of their job. And no, I will not name any names, but feel that they are in fear of their job depending on how they respond to a town manager request. So your, so let me ask you this. So in the whole scheme of all the goals of the town manager, just the goals here, because the goals are not his job description. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So of all his job description and these goals, your priority, and you don't feel that he should be hired back because of interpersonal skills. In addition to the fact that I feel that some of the um, some of the responses to um, to the goals were ineffective initially when we first started talking about them, all it, my interpretation was it, it was just a lot of pushback when we had the more goals. Goals didn't make any sense. According the to whom, Peter? Goals just didn't make any sense. According to whom? Read the goals. So these goals don't make any sense. So yes, we're trying to make a decision on whether or not we find that Mike is an effective town manager yes. based upon goals that don't make any sense. That's correct. And if you took the time and trouble to actually read the goals, you would see I that. have read the goals, Peter. Well, read it again. I, <sighs> Okay, so, because where I'm looking at, you know, and why I feel that, first of all, I'll preface with, I agree with Peter. Looking over the past town managers and looking at the requirements that we have put on our town manager, I feel that Mike is working at an acceptable level. And and I preface this with, first of all, union negotiations. We have how many union negotiations going on right now? He is doing a great job with these union negotiations. He is following the direction of the board. He is providing us guidance. And we are in a very tough economic time. His budget, I, I feel that he is partly responsible for why we have the bond rating we have. He's provided us good guidance and are helping us hold our head above water given the financial times that we're had. His ability to deliver a budget and hold this place together, which, you know, I think he deserves a lot of credit for that. It is not easy. We have the union issues. We have our financial issues. We have the largest project that Uxbridge has ever seen in its history going on right now. He is our single only procurement officer. He is our chief procurement officer. The idea of taking and even thinking about searching for a town manager right smack in the middle of this project, talk about the role of an executive officer of the Board of Selectmen. What are we thinking? This process could take six months to nine months to find a town manager, which can we even find a town manager to replace Mike that has anywhere near his credentials, who would even come in near for the salary that we're offering, or even come in near for a year contract that as a board we have provided? I'll answer your question as to what are we thinking. Well, we're, well, not we're not thinking. thinking. No. We're I'm not thinking, and that has been the issue, and the issue is with the Board of Selectmen, not the manager and not the finance director. It's the board of selectmen. But you don't see that. I know you don't see that. Peter, you say that continuously. Yes, and yet, I do. And yet, what I don't hear from you is when you step up and you actually help to participate. You criticize, but you don't offer a solution. When did, when did I not offer a solution? You don't want to be a part of the cable advisory committee. You don't, you don't, all you do is criticize cable. My solution is to get rid of the committee. Why would I want to be a part of something? Do you want to be a part of the negotiation of? process? What negotiation process? With charter. Yes, as a member of the board of selectmen, which is our job. There are far too many times I feel that I have heard negative comments from you or whether I shouldn't say that comments from you that have not been followed up by anything that 
even resembles a solution or a possibility of another alternative. There is no problem facing the town of Uxbridge that does not have a readily discernible solution. The problem facing the town of Uxbridge is, and has been, we have a dysfunctional board of selectmen. So what is your solution to fix the Stop dysfunctional board of selectmen? Stop being dysfunctional. Do our job collectively. And surely don't turn around and take away the administrative officer at the town when we are in the financial times we're at with the project that we have with the dys dysfunctional board that we have. We, we need some stability in this town. We have no institutional knowledge. Is he doing an outstanding job? No, you said. I would say no, he's not. But is he doing an acceptable to good job? Absolutely. Does that warrant firing him? No, it does not. No in your opinion, anything. it doesn't. Nobody's saying anything about You're not firing. renewing his contract. That's, that's firing. Not firing. Yes, it is. It is. It's no. taking away his livelihood. It's saying goodbye. Say, I, I, my decision didn't come didn't come lately. So uh, you've already made up your mind, Bruce? No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, you know, I'm I'm a little disappointed. I'm disappointed in Mike. I think he could have done much better. Were you disappointed in him two months ago? Yes, I was. He could have, he could have done much better. So you've and worked side by board, side with him. As a dysfunctional board as we are, we, you, can't, you can't make a decision? Uh, you know, I, I, until a month ago. How are we gonna hire somebody new as a board? I mean, seriously. I mean, you went through the original process. What would we do? I mean, do we, where would we even get the money? We understand we haven't even done budget discussions this evening. We're right now, we don't even have the 2012 budget to the point. The so town manager of that, is ultimately responsible for that, providing that budget along with our direction. And here, we're gonna take a town manager and say, June 30th, you're gone, but help us craft this budget, which we're then gonna hand off to a new town manager who's gonna come in with a budget that they did not prepare Wait and minute. have back, to live with the guidelines? A, back up a little bit. Because the article, the, the uh, agenda article is preliminary budget discussion. Mm -hmm. yeah. The charter says the town manager has to submit a budget 60 days prior to town meeting. 60 days prior to town meeting is March 10th. Mm -hmm. Two weeks away, three weeks away, and we are tonight, maybe at two o'clock in the morning, going to have a preliminary budget discussion. It's our budget discussions supposed to occur prior to this time, and we develop <clears throat> budget priorities to give to the town manager in enough time for him to produce a final <coughs> budget within the 60 day time period. We haven't even begun that process yet. And that again, that's the job of the chairman of the Board of Selectmen. Back last October, how many times did I say, we need to start on the budget? Oh yeah, we're gonna do that soon. Remember your words, we're gonna do that soon. Well, there is no soon, soon is over. There's no possibility of us having any meaningful input on the budget in, in the short time available. I don't know what your thinking is, I wanna tell you. I just don't know what your thinking is. And I think there's, there's I'm, not I'm a unsatisfied. depth of thinking. I'm unsatisfied, I, that's my thinking. I, I can understand that, that, that part I, I, I can see that. But you come to that conclusion with a great lack of knowledge and understanding. It's not your fault. How are you to learn? But that's the reality. I don't think just because I don't have the knowledge or the experience that you and Carrie do, being selectmen, or even Bruce as a second term, that I don't have the ability to make a correct decision. Time will tell, but so far, 
Um, I don't see it. We have meetings, we have show and tell, we go on an hour and a half. Uh, we don't get to the substance of things. We put things off and off and off. Uh, I just don't see it. Well, then if you want that to be an agenda item for our next meeting, then it can be. Would you like me to make that agenda item for the 28th? What would the agenda item be then? The same one that Carrie proposed around the mid-year when we were reviewing Mike's contract. I forgot what was that one. To discuss the change of the chair. It's not a change of the chair. Change, change, it doesn't make any difference. But we Peter, you and I are not always going to- doing the right thing. You and we I are not always going to think the same way. intelligent decisions based on good and valid information from which we draw reasonable <coughs> conclusions. You don't feel that we've done that no. at all? Do you? I feel that we have been able to do that, yes. Maybe not to the level that you expect or that you as chair or Carrie as chair would have done. But do I feel we've been able to do it? Yes. And I think this is a very diverse group of people. And to try and get them together and to move forward and get people off their soapboxes so we're not here until 2 o'clock in the morning is a very difficult task. And I feel I'm doing the best I can. Okay, so I have can, no doubt. Okay, so can, I mean, honestly, I'm, <clears throat> I have to say I'm taken back by where we're at because I think that it would be beneficial for the town that we gave Mike six goals here. Given, for, I, I mean, there are too many. And, and I think that we knew that at the time when we did it, it, it you know. We had reduced it. My concern, it. exactly. But I still think that given, given where, all that we have seen, you know, and and I guess I'm most perplexed. Bruce, you have spent a, a lot of time with Mike. That's At times, you I have know. been I by know. his side, and you understand the things that have come before us in the last six months. You know. We you think, you think, are unfortunately you think a, a at the time. A decision I'd make like this, I, I take lightly. You think I? You think well, I, I would say think anything that bad against him? It's not a matter of, it's not a matter of bad or good. It's it's not an issue to me of that. It's looking at the day to day things that he is faced with, and looking at the goals. And at what point? I mean, I know myself. Um, some of these goals were not obtainable. They just were not, given where we were. I, I, For instance, I number I, two, I, I don't, we uh, knew that there was not a chance. Judge them by these goals. Oh, oh my gosh! Wait a minute. You don't judge him by the goals. No. Then how is he to know no. what job he's supposed to be doing if he's looking at the goals, trying to tackle those? Then what are you judging him I by? I judge him as a person and the job he's doing. Mm. That's not too hard. That's not too hard to judge a man by what he's doing. And except for one thing, Bruce. I was the only one who voted against those silly goals. You voted for the goals. And I'm just saying you don't judge them by that. That's what I mean when I say you need to make decisions based but, on good information. But part of that, I have to believe, is the performance that we have gotten from the goals and also. So at what point Which, do you okay, throw them out? When you look at goal number five, improve town communication and involvement. I think he has. He is holding Develop the a method for measuring citizen satisfaction, such as First an online I didn't survey? Agree with that. No, I thought th that to me, that that's what he did if he ever had any spare time. And oh my gosh, has he had any spare time? I mean, today, uh, he was running around playing maintenance man because you had water coming in the building. And the question was whether or not you could put somebody on the roof or were they going to fall through the roof? Where is that in the goal here? That's right. It's not right here place. because. It's not feasible for him to be doing that. Is it feasible for him to be um, 
have an open door policy all of the time to then meet with selectmen at any time, with residents at any time, as opposed to perhaps having specific office hours where there are times, except in the case of an emergency, well, to say that, so then that would allow him the time to work on other things and not be distracted by someone coming in. You mean distracted well, actually, by selectmen being in the office for three or four hours at a time? Selectmen are part of it, yes, but residents as well. I'm not, I'm not, well, actually, that was not though, my initial thought, but you yes. Were not, you were not on the board at the time when there was a vote not to renew Jill Meyer's contract. And do you know one of the reasons why Jill Meyer didn't get her contract renewed? One of the big issues. Because she was not accessible to the citizens. True or not yeah, true. true? She got nailed on that one. Was not accessible. Citizens would come in. She said, I'm not available right now. That's why she's not our town manager anymore. Right. He but, has made himself accessible to the citizens. How many phone calls did you take in the last just week? Just a minute. Just a minute. But what about the point of saying, these are the hours that I am accessible, as opposed to being 100% accessible? That's, so that's my had solution. Had Jill had hours, and she got hung out to dry. Yeah, exactly. An and what about, yeah, what about when, what about when residents have come in to speak to him on a subject that is of a private nature, and they have not had the courtesy of being able to be taken into his office and have, and have, I will name the, the individual off camera. I will not name it now. You don't have to give a name, but. There was an individual who came in to speak to Mike and then told me what had happened later in that Mike was disrespectful to this individual, that he asked to be able to speak with him in private in his office, and Mike said no. There were people that were coming in and out and overhearing this, this conversation. Is this the first time Mike is hearing about I, this? I, this isn't familiar to me. I don't know. Could, could you write the name down? I, I, I just am But if those things happen, I mean, that's a concern I have. Then you go to Mike and ask, say, hey, I heard this. I hear things like that all the time for, mm -hmm. about different officials. Yeah. You know, and you go to them and say, listen, so-and-so had this, and, and what do you, you know, what happened? And you get the story. I and mean, that's you, how you do things. And then you find out that it, well, you only had one side of the story, and there's always two sides to a story. Mm, if you haven't brought sides, this up actually. to, if mm -hmm. you haven't brought this up to Mike's attention and heard Mike's example, I think a perfect thing for us to all to look at is that email chain that was going around. Mm -hmm. You raised the issues with David. Mm -hmm. David responded. You then responded, and you gave Mike's interpretation of Mike's response to you. Then Mike actually responded back himself. And, I and asked, there was a difference. I, in asked even Mike, you I asked Mike to do it. I asked him to please confirm that I was recalling the conversation correctly. And you did And didn't. there are false things that he has put in here from what he said to me on the phone. It may be your interpretation. You no, have to say no, it's false. There's no, there's no, there's no miscommunicating when there are things that he said he knew about that he told me on the phone he didn't know about. <laughs> there, there's, that's black and white. It, it, without a, I could give you examples where it's not. How can there be an example of me asking a specific question, you know, and say, okay, did this happen? Did you know about this? And Mike says to me specifically, no, I did not. And yet in the email, I did know about this. How, do, how does yeah. that happen? Yeah. Which one specifically? The interns. Having an intern was one of them. I had said that David had spoken to me about it last week. That is not what know. you told me on the phone. That is not what you told me on the phone. You said you had no knowledge of an intern. I read all that silly stuff, and I said, they're all gone crazy. <laughs> they're all crazy down there. And that, that's what it is. You're concentrating on the nonsense and completely neglecting the job, the duties, the obligations of the Board of Selectmen. So where do we go from here? Well, you take you took a vote, so. Now, there's a motion but on the table right now on, uh, that is on second to fifth. 
unseconded. What was the motion by Miss Pittman to continue the town to to continue the town manager contract as is, not renewing, and move forward searching for another town manager for the town of Luxor for fiscal year two thousand twelve? I thought there was a vote. What was the vote we took? No, they no. didn't. Our vote was, Your to, vote was to continue to renew his contract, and they didn't vote to do that. Oh, okay, okay. So restate the motion. There's a motion by Ms. Pittman to continue the town manager contract as is, not renewing, and move forward searching for another town manager for the town of Uxbridge for fiscal year 2012. And I thought Bruce seconded the motion. No, 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 no one second. No one did. We got in discussion. How did we go from the motion to the discussion without a second? Because I called for discussion before oh, it was seconded. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're waiting for seconds. Do we have a second? No second. No second. No second. So, okay, so, okay. so you're the chairman. What's next? What do we okay. do? I'd like um, to ask Jay to share some of his opinions. Ask Jay to share what? Some no, of opinions. his opinions. Oh, okay. On what? On the, you know, the weather? <laughs> the good ones. Um, my position is, is the same it's been at the beginning. Again, just to reiterate, Peter, I was that assumption about the three of us really throw those out because mm -hmm. it's not. In fact, the only time I ever mentioned Mike's job was that day we sat down in your in your um, at your table for mm -hmm. coffee. That was it. So I just want to be very clear right. over that. that that's not uh, what I'm after. And we have never talked about Mike's job, myself and you. Yeah. Never. Anyways, so, so I agreed, Bruce. So I don't want to belabor that anymore. Uh, on this motion, my, my concern is I'm not ready to make a decision on Mike tonight. I think there's some feedback that I'd like to share with Mike at the appropriate time. I don't think it has to be done on this board. It can be if we think this is the right time to do that. Things that I'd like to see improve observations I've made, which I'm sure you all have your own. Um, but I think at some point, what I'm most fearful of is we are going to be caught reacting to a situation because we didn't plan ahead. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what, ultimately, whether I'll endorse Mike for a uh, contract extension or not, but I don't want to be forced to have to endorse Mike's contract extension because we didn't do our homework in advance. And I don't know how that's typically handled. I'll, I'll lean on you for your experience, Carrie and Peter on this board with others, where you have a contract ending. How do you, you know, what's the best way to handle this scenario? What I suggested last week was that Mike reapply for his job because, you know, I, I think that's the contract's up. That's typically what I've seen done in other situations where people are on a contract basis, well, not in government, though, so I, I right, don't have right. government experience. Well, <coughs> under that, Jay, the way that I believe it's the way they handle it with Clepper too. They six months out, was it? It was about six months away. Mm -hmm. They told him we were not going to renew his contract. Mm -hmm. Now there is no reapplying for your. When you say you're not renewing the contract, there is no. You know, you, you don't have them reapply for their job. That's generally not. It's. And why? why either would you someone? want them or you don't. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's you make the decision. Either we're going to work with we're going to work with you. Okay, you're acceptable, and we're going to continue this process. Mm -hmm. Remember, I mean, we're s still, most town managers have a three-year contract, mm -hmm. okay? Because we had two three-year contracts, and after three years, the town was not happy with the last two town managers, it was my idea to do a one-year contract. I threw that out, saying, look, that will give us an opportunity to get to know the person right up front, okay? <coughs> this is a relationship, and the whole goal was to have this as a long-term relationship, but to allow ourselves the ability of whether the personalities worked well together. Now, with Bruce, 
and Peter and I on that first hiring when we hired Mike, um, I mean, we knew after he'd been here about a month and a half, it was very short, he came in what? He came in the middle of February and it was like, I think the first week in April that we said, yeah, we're happy with you. These are your goals for the next two months. We have full intention of renewing your contract and we did that. For a year. We renewed him for this whole, which is the whole time that, you know, there was, why did, why it didn't was you unanimous. renew him for multiple year? Excuse me? Why didn't you do the multiple year thing? You said it's typically standard. I recommended standard. two and the board didn't go with it. Okay. Okay. I, and my preference was uh, Mike more wanted open ended. You know, an employee at will. At will. Right. Yeah. I, you know, I've worked all my life and I've never worked for anyone who didn't have the opportunity whenever they were unhappy to say, hey, get lost. Mm -hmm. Why would I want to work for anyone or any place or any organization if they didn't want me? Right. I mean, uh, you know, I'm a miserable person, but I'm not that miserable. Uh, but going back to Klepper, our first town manager, mm -hmm. the board, after one year, year and a half to top, we knew that we weren't going to keep him. And I, I was in favor of telling the man, why, you know, why wait? But I was I overruled agree. and they waiting for the six months, you know, mm -hmm. statutory uh, contractual provision. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work to get a town manager. Sure. We are not a big town. We do not, off, we do not offer a lot of money or emoluments. Mm -hmm. um, I want to tell you. And looking at the pool. It, it's not a good yes. Looking at the pool, yeah. just out of the pool that we had, since that time. We had what? We had over 100 applicants. Mm -hmm. But you look at them. You and, look at them, yeah. and it was like, <laughs> no. They got to be kidding. No. Well, the no, economy no, no. was different then also, no, though. No, it was so not. I, it was the same as it is now. Matter of fact, the economy, the economy is worse was, now. Exactly. More people but are out of jobs. But that didn't make jobs. the pool better. Matter of fact, since then, if you've looked at the actual towns that have been trying to hire town managers and the pools they've been pulling through, there's three of those names mm. that we rejected. They ended up getting jobs in those other towns after second and third going around. Mm -hmm. it's, it, there's not a large pool out there, you know, and that's why looking at where we're at and, you know, and it'll come down to Jay, you deciding what is most important, you think, looking at Uxbridge as far as these goals. I mean, to Beth, it's having interpersonal skills, it appears. That's how I, you know. That's that, a portion of it. The portion. That's a portion to of me, it, yes. It's, it's the financial. It's this project, the school project that we're under, which is a huge undertaking. He has experience. Not a lot of town managers even have that experience in a huge municipal project like that. He has it. He's our chief procurement officer. He's kept us financially afloat, which was one of the reasons why we hired him in the first place. He's got his MBA. He's an attorney. That doesn't make him so, a leader. No, it doesn't. Carrie, you're the I one who said. I understand that, but it, you know, so yes, maybe his interpersonal school skills need some help, okay? You, but isn't our goal as his boss to help him improve, mm. not get rid of him because we're not happy? We didn't get rid of Beth when we weren't happy three months ago. We got rid of the cable committee, though. So we're selective. No, we didn't get rid of it. We're selective on that. But I get your point. And I agree with you. And that's, uh, again, we're getting very emotional about a decision on whether we move forward with Mike right now. And at least my intention was we've never had this dialogue about this process, what we matter. We went through, as Peter said, you know, the goals and goals change. And, and you knew the second that we, you wrote them down, they were going to change. And, we all agreed to them, you know, some, some of them we believe in, some of them we don't believe in, but it was such an arduous task to do, we couldn't stand That's right. doing it any of us. At the end of the day, you know what, you get a feel when you start working with someone or you see how someone works, whether or not they're the right person for your position. And it's, it's a work of time, it's a body of work that Mike's gonna have during our reign as board members that are gonna define that, not you know, the, the one in the five in the column next to the goals. And we're halfway, we're a little over halfway in this board's first year. And I think we owe Mike the courtesy at some point to explain where we are in the process, because he's got a contract that's in, and he's got a family, and he's got to make decisions about what he's going to do. He may not want to work with a bunch of lunatics like us either, right? And I wouldn't blame him. 
so what I think is fair is transparency to Mike on what the process is, and that's what I wanted to kind of surface and, and say, what are we going to do? In parallel to that, sitting down with Mike individually, I think it's better served than sitting on public forum here, say, hey, Mike, you know, I'd like to see you do this better. You know, the kind of noise that we saw last week, uh, you know, in, in the email, you know, just try to keep that out of the, the purview and distraction for this ADD board because we don't need that. And we can have those dialogues with him and then see how he reacts to those, those feedback and comments we give him so that when we get up to the point where we really have to make that decision whether we're going to renew or not, we've at least given ourselves a chance to work through with Mike the things that we concern him. Because the last thing I think Mike, in all fairness to Mike, is to blindside him and say, you know what, Mike, for nine months you didn't do this. And you know what, for nine months I didn't tell you you didn't do this because I really wanted to get you. And, and no surprises, let's just be transparent with them in what our process is going to so be. So how about we put together a timeline that would be appropriate, backing out from what we think is going to be an appropriate date for us as a board as well as for Mike of when... We're already past that point. Well, we have to be able to put some no, kind I of... I understand what you're some saying, kind but I'm of just letting you markers. know you're already past that point. I understand yeah, that. that point. Six months. Usually you let them know six months prior to this the expiration. This contract says, what, three? June 30th. Uh, it, it's in the contract. It's only like a, it's a month. No, I understand that. But you wanted to know how you work. When we, when the board made the decision, because I actually didn't make the decision, okay? Um, when the board made the decision not to renew Jill's contract, mm -hmm. it was six months prior to the expiration of her contract. Now, her contract didn't say that. I don't think it said that time frame. But anyway, yeah. did it say? Yeah, it hers yeah. Okay, hers did yeah. say that's why we chose that. Yeah, his says but it took months, us actually. but it took right. us that long. Oh, well, agreed. Okay? That's why I want to have because this dialogue we didn't have, to say right. right. Well, because and this is the reason why it took that. One, we knew we did not financially have the position to hire an interim town manager. We had to find somebody to start the job on Monday when Jill left on Friday. And we were very lucky that we were able to pull that off. I mean, we, we left ourselves maybe like a week, and we had a six-month window to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, if, if your intent is not to, bring, not to have him <coughs> on July 1st, mm -hmm. we're already in that six-month window. Mm -hmm. It's a process where, you know, and remember, financially, we were under a tight budget then. We're under a tighter budget now. Then we didn't pay any advertising. We used all free sources in order to advertise for the position. It was a lot of meetings, and we were not doing it right in the middle of the budget. You know, the timing of this, really looking at it, mm -hmm. is awful mm -hmm. from the, I mean, from the standpoint of the town. Also, you know, last year, Mike wanted a two-year contract. He didn't ask for more money. It was like he asked for a two-year contract. We didn't give him the two-year contract. That's why, personally, I think he wasn't sure at that point that the board was even happy with him. They only gave me a year. What have I done wrong? So at that point, I think he was looking at his own interests for that one moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, there were some tough times going through right after the school vote that, the, that summer, those three months in that period. I know myself as a selectman, I sat down with Mike and I said, look, these are the things where I think you need to improve. Personally, I did this. Because I don't want to see the town manager fail at all. I don't want to see this board fail. And I've worked through, and I'm sharing you this, I've done exactly what you've said. I've sat down with Mike and said, you know, these are areas that I think you need to improve. These are areas where I think the board's going to have issues. And I've seen him improve. And as a board, when we had the goal, when we had him right back to where he was on his goals back in December. That was the time where if you had an issue, no one at this board stood up and said anything. He, he told us, this is where I am on goal one. Oh, okay, great. Well, to me, we said, okay, we don't have an issue. That's when we should have raised those issues. I'd just like to say, I wouldn't have any problem going into Mike's office tomorrow and telling him what's on my mind. I wouldn't have any problem whatsoever going in his office tomorrow telling Mike, this is what I'm seeing and this is what I want improved. 
But I think that also, and this is key, and I think that this is what Peter's been talking to is the breakdown of the board, is, you know, and, and I know that Peter hasn't totally agreed with me on the past with this, but I've taken the position that, you know, I don't talk to a department head unless Mike knows about it. Because I don't want to be involved in that. I don't, I talk to a department head because the town manager says, talk to the department head about it instead of me being the liaison in between. There's a chain of command there. And continually, since I've been on this board from the very beginning, certain selectmen have broken that chain. And I think that that's where the problem comes in because we're circumventing the chain of command. You know, and it, and it's been detrimental to this town. That's how the selectmen are getting too involved in the day-to-day -day operation because we make ourselves available for department heads or certain employees. We got an email from an employee here. Totally broke the chain of command. You know, we make ourselves too accessible and we get into something and we get sucked in and who gets left out? The managers. And then who gets yelled at when everything blows up? The managers. So, you know, I think it's important for us, the issues that we have for Mike, for us to discuss it as a group and bring it to him as a group. Okay. Because that's going That's to him individually, then he's trying to appease five people's individual and really, is he gonna be able to do that? Probably not. And then we, you know, I'd hate to see us in a situation where Mike doesn't want to work for us anymore because we're a crazy town. And really, we've lost a potential to actually take somebody who's a good town manager and made them better for Uxbridge instead of just throwing them out with the bathwater and trying to go find somebody new who ultimately, if we continue this, we're never going to be happy with any town manager. And I don't think that was the original intent of what Uxbridge went through when they even drafted the charter in the first place. The idea was to get a professional in here to run this town instead of having the Board of Selectmen in here dictating what should be done and then having an administrator try to please five different people. So, and that include, concludes my thoughts. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Jane. You're a wonderful mentor. And, and that concludes my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there any opinion on the board as to, and from Mike as well, as to whether or not um, these conversations should be televised or an executive session? What? They can't be an executive session. We're already session. on. Are we yeah. going to? Are we going to continue this now, yeah, or I'm yes. saying going forward, should we? Doesn't from qualify. What, from he, what, he doesn't what? qualify for executive from what, session. From what Carrie just said, it sounded as if, you know, we each we talk about what our issues with Mike are as a group. So, is the board prepared to go ahead and continue this conversation now? Do we want to do a separate meeting to do that? Well, let's see. It's ten thirty, mm -hmm. and we still haven't got to the preliminary budget discussions. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking the question. Well, I rest my case. So I what's think it, it's appropriate for if someone thinks that Mike is doing something that you know they don't quite agree with, say you're doing something and I don't agree with it, and here's why. That's because it, it leads to understanding. Mm -hmm. That's not the same as directing Mike. For instance. Mm -hmm. Um, my understanding is that you informed Mike some time ago that he, sh he needed to reappoint some people to committees. I forgot um, what they were, yeah. But that's not, the, that's not the job of the chairman of the Board of Selectmen. I'm now, not, I if don't know. the board What are you talking about, Peter? To, what are the specifics of it? And Carrie, you shook your head in agreement. I can't remember, but it was in a, it were appointed positions whose term was up no, I never. Okay, well, but if the I board comes to a conclusion mm -hmm. that a certain member of a committee or something should not be reappointed, then it would be appropriate for the board to vote on it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and give Mike the benefit <coughs> of that vote mm -hmm. 
but then it's still his decision. Mm -hmm. But what he has been, or any manager, what they have is a sense of the board. And he can mm -hmm. say, well, I'll go along with it, I won't go along mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I don't have any problem, Peter. I'll, I'll, I'll go in to see Mike. I'll come in to see Mike tomorrow and tell him what's on my mind. I don't have a problem with it because I have some things on my mind. But what Carrie is also and saying he knows is I've that been bothered for the last week or two. But there's a difference, though, in you know. There's a difference in letting him know what bothers you, and then taking action on his contract or his evaluation because he didn't do what you wanted him to do. There's a difference. That's giving him a directive that he feels he has to follow even though it's against his judgment as and a And it's from one manager. person and rather from than one the board from itself. The board as a if whole. you have issues right. with Mike or any of us have issues with Mike that we think you know are important, mm -hmm. then fine. We discuss it as a board we are a multiple member body which makes decisions by majority vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the, whoever the person is, they say, okay, now I understand this particular position has the support of a majority of the board. And you, you that's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, but we can't have five people pulling them in different directions. I agree. Each one not knowing who's, who else is pulling in a different direction. It's not, it's not productive and it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So are you willing then, Peter, because you kind of backed off a little bit on Carrie's suggestion of us discussing it openly as a group, as five individuals, as opposed to going in and speaking to him individually? Well, actually, you could do that as, as a group mm -hmm. in executive session if you're going to talk about personalities or, um, you know, something that might lead to disciplinary action. And, of course, firing is a, a non-renewal contract is a disciplinary reaction in that, in that sense you always get better discussions and better decisions off camera. The worst thing this town ever did is to get these stupid things. Mm -hmm. um, no one can make a case that that has led to better, better government. It doesn't lead to better government. And yet, ironically, when I asked for us to meet as a board somewhere that would be off camera, you didn't agree to it. No, because we as a board establish the policy that all meetings have to be taped. We can't as a board, I don't think it's a good practice as a board not to follow our own guidelines. Oh, but wait a minute. We have a policy that we're supposed to have all agenda items two weeks in advance, but we've got, we've got this thing well, about the charter, the um, cable committee tonight on the email. Well, so, yeah, and we also had the senior senator <laughs> on here, and we had no materials as to what their update was yeah. going to be about either. Yeah, so... I agree. I mean, it we're was not, a general we're update. There was nothing to be given as a handout. But, but we we don't have to handout. go someplace else to mm -hmm. have a meeting. I mean, we, mm -hmm. you know, right here. Um, right when now. I was in the school committee, there's this nice young silly lady from the association of school committees. She wanted the school committee to meet someplace. She said, you can't meet here. We have to go. It should be out of state. You should go out of state to meet and discuss these issues and so forth. And Finally, we did agree to meet at the police station, um, and it was a, a worthless meeting. So do all board members feel prepared to, at this point, to have open conversations with Mike right now about what they're happy with, where they feel that he can improve? I think we would not? all benefit by a period of him. reflection. Mm -hmm. I agree. No, I just Rather wanted, than, mm -hmm. okay. you know, doing it right now. So in lieu of that and given the timeliness of it, because um, as Carrie, you pointed out, we are beyond the six months. And I don't like to have to suggest this, but should we look at scheduling another meeting next week? Not another one next week. It's Not vacation. Next week, I can't. Make two next week. Okay. So then the town halls close two days next week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking in the interest of being able to expedite this for everyone's benefit. So that I'm being- so, I'm still going to go in the office to talk with them. I don't care what you guys think. It, it's I, not- I, I have some personal things I will talk to them it, about. So. It's, well, it's not a matter of, of you having a private conversation. What I would I'll like also is here. that- Exactly, is that you here. do- no you share it here as well. No and, I, okay. and I think that there's a different, you know, I guess I say this 
just so I feel like we're all on the same page. There's a difference between, I mean, as a former manager myself, Mike's management style and my management style were not the same. It doesn't make him a better or worse manager because his style is different from mine. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think that that's important, you know, in the issues that I've brought to Mike's attention in the past, I didn't bring them to the board because I met with him kind of like, you know, in the position of, look, these are the things I'm observing. I have concerns with them. Maybe have you thought about this? Do you want to think about this? Have you tried this? And in those discussions, I've actually seen that my perspective was just different. It wasn't better or worse. You know, and the way he handled it wouldn't have been the way I handled it. But if you step back and look at the outcome, did it matter? And was it really that big of a priority? And those are why I haven't, that's why I can say at this point with confidence that I have no problem going on further with him as the town manager because the issues that I have seen or things that have concerned me, I didn't let them dwindle, I guess. It was like, you know, I addressed it before it became this huge momentum or this huge mountain that took on a life of its own. And I guess I, the reason why I feel it's important to voice that is because it was back in October, Beth, that you told me you had a list of things that you, know, you were gonna be bringing to the board with concerns with Mike. That was back in October, mm -hmm. and you never brought him to the board. So as a member, I figured, well, she just sat down with Mike and she worked him through, and they're not there anymore. It really concerns me, especially you as the chair, that we're now in February, and there was no place where that was ever brought to the board for us to decide, wow, are these issues that the board needs to address as a whole? You see my concern? And instead I you do. went from there straight to, oops, well, let's find somebody new. I don't think that's an appropriate statement for you to make a judgment call on how I've gone from, oops, here to there. Well, you made that, a motion Gary, to it, not renew his contract, so it that's was the opposite my... motion of what you had made, which we disagreed with. So that's okay. the procedure um, that I've seen in I place. Think, can, so can I just sorry to interrupt, Beth? I think it's going to be really important for this meeting to be successful that we separate the renewal of Mike's contract mm -hmm. feedback on his performance. Thank you. And be very objective. I, I'm sitting here and I feel like, Gary, you're selling. Yeah. Mike, mm -hmm. way over the top, which is, you know, fine if you do it. But let's, when we go into the approach this meeting, I don't think the outset of that meeting is a, hey, we renew Mike's contract or not. I think, in fairness to Mike, we should say, here's some feedback on your performance, and then let's give him a period to, to react to that feedback. And if he does well on the feedback, we may vote to renew him. If he doesn't do well, we may vote to renew him anyways. Well, so that I don't was my, see that these was as my, two separate things. That, though, that was my question. Clear, just a minute. Of, just a minute. That was that was why I asked about putting together a timeline. So if at the next meeting we're going to do a feedback on performance, that will be the 28th of February. And then our following meeting we have in March, I mean, I think it would be helpful. It's on the 14th and then again on the 28th of March. So I think it would be helpful even if it's just – a suggested date after our meeting on the 28th of February to say we'd like to see improvement in a month. We'd like to see improvement in 60 I, days. I just feel it's artificial. It's, it's, you're, you're gonna, it's gonna be an artificial assessment at that point. You know, it's an arbitrary date you pick in the calendar and say, all right, did he make it or, or not? But you're, then you're we'll, gonna, you're gonna, we're gonna get a feel for whether you want Mike back next year or not but how do we how do we then avoid the it's not a, what you mentioned before of, of us getting you know closer and closer and all of a sudden you know it, it's not fair to Mike it's not fair well, the process should be independent of whether who, who Mike is whether Mike is going to be renewed or not you know there should be a objective process or when a, a, a contract's going to run out how do you handle it mm -hmm. you know I you know, that's, that's the same thing with the, con the cable negotiation. The contract's running out. How do we handle it besides poorly? You know, um, that's what we're trying to avoid is, is stepping in it right. again. Right. And I guess to, to respond to your statement, Jay, 
the agenda item was discuss action town manager goals and contracts. Mm -hmm. You know, we put it in as mm -hmm. one thing. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. So that's why it's like, mm -hmm. and because we're having this discussion now, already within that time frame that we need, if you're not going to renew the contract, we've forced ourselves into this position. It's, a it's kind of like it's an it's artificial a, time frame, though. It is. It is, but it's not. It, but it, but, in, but in you getting, don't make a decision if, if you tr somebody, truly believe we should renew Mike's contract. No time. We'll, we'll renew it. We would renew it. You know, the day after you voted to give a year extension, give him a two-year or five-year extension. If you believe that he wasn't the right person, you, you don't wait for a timeline. You you act on it at the point that you're ready to make a decision. But I, I guess. And you, you us not giving him a two-year contract, it's not because we didn't want him. And, and I guess that's my concern with your statement there. I think that the reason why well, Mike, and, you gave him. Mike and we gave him another year, and I believe it was because Mike and Kevin knew they were both leaving the board, and they didn't want to make a decision that they felt a next board that was going to do the majority of their time mm -hmm. with the town manager, they should be left to do the extended contract. Mm -hmm. Looking back at it, I think if they looked at it, they would have, had they both been up for that and had, you know, knew they were going to stay on the board, mm -hmm. they would have gone for the two-year contract. Did you talk to Mike and Kevin about that, or are you just making assumptions? I had spoken to one of them about it. I won't name which one, but I had spoken to one of them about that, yes. But you're including two in that. You're speaking on behalf of right, Mike, we're, and we're, I'm, yeah. I'm just trying. I I, I, no, we're but, going in a but you were on the. I mean, you were on the board at the time, and we mm -hmm. voted unanimously to renew his contract. It's not like the board was split mm -hmm. in that. You know. Well, um, the agenda item for the 28th then of February will be feedback on the town manager's performance. Does everyone agree That's with right. that? Does That's that right. capture? What we'll do, Peter? Yeah, I get it. Do you have a suggestion or a change? Well, I just don't know where. You, I'm trying to think this thing through, mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem logical to me. Yeah, I mean, because I haven't heard specific reason for your unhappiness, mm -hmm. but these little details of of things, mm -hmm. and the same with. Um, Bruce, I don't know what it is. Um, I know what goes on in the town. Mm -hmm. I, I see the things that are done and how they are done. Um, I know Mike is on top of things that are important, which hasn't been the case with the last two town managers. Um, I don't know. I see in what appears to be an emotional reaction rather than something of substance. I mean, I agree that I am definitely emotional, um, but I am not making an emotional decision. And in our meeting on the 28th, I will come fully prepared to be able to cite specifics, excluding individual names if appropriate. Okay. Of so where, of where I case. feel, of where I feel that that there needs to be performance improvement. Okay, that's fine. That being the case, you are already seized and possessed of that knowledge. So, to the extent you can share that with us in advance, we're all better prepared and share it with Mike. I did share some because of if it, we just and I did. It on him that night, I did just share some with him, and he. That, that's okay. He'll disagree. Denies with, what he, he, will, he will deny some of right. disagree with me. That's fine. But at least we know what it is. Because mm -hmm. I can't give you a bill of particulars and say, here they are, and ex you know, expect you to read it and go and, and, and respond. I mean, mm -hmm. And I think the other pieces, right, the positives, too. Right? This isn't yes. just all about Correct. what Mike Made. The positives too. No, it's not just about what he doesn't no, do well. This is overall performance. Here's yes. strengths and weaknesses. What's right. you know, what are they on both sides? Do a SWOT analysis. Any other comments? Do we need to make a motion and vote on this meeting? Or? No, no, no. no, no. It's just the agenda item. 
direction. I'm just, I thought that, honestly, I guess to end with, I'm just kind of blown away because I thought that when we had him answer his goals back in December, we were doing a performance then and no issues were raised. So when I saw this agenda item, that was my, item, interpretation that too, was my at agenda the time item. I said, I'm happy, you know. Right I there, we up. were going to be looking at the goals relating to the new contract, mm -hmm. honestly, because so I'm, I guess that's why I'm really just kind of flustered and blown away by this because. And again, we have done a disservice, I think, as a board. Yeah. We really if have. that was your intent, had we known that in advance, you could have been mentally prepared mm -hmm. for it. You know, and Mike could have been mentally prepared for it. That's, you know, I keep talking I, about how we have our agendas and meetings. It's very important for the chairman when you put something on the agenda to know exactly what it is, mm -hmm. have all the material, get the background data so people can come prepared to make decisions. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen. And so we go meeting after meeting after meeting and except for appointing poll workers, nothing ever gets done. I'm not gonna address that. Yeah, let's just move on. Um, new business E is the new high school project discussion slash action receipt <coughs> permits and construction start date. This is a document that I received and sent to you today. And it will be discussed. We just put it in everyone's mailbox, correct? Yes, I did. Thank you. Um, it's the BSC group memorandum from Leslie Fanger to Jean Raymond. This one? The one I gave you. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. one. Um, unless someone, unless other people feel the need to go through it, the only thing that um, I was going to call attention to is actually where we do have some outstanding things that need to be accomplished. And this deadline in permitting, uh, overall permitting looks, is in good shape, I would, in my opinion. Um, the NHESP and the um, MESA conversation and management permit, which is still in process. I call your attention to the third bullet, which is just that um, the town being town manager and town council need to continue to work on the conservation restriction language per the comments that um, NHESP had provided on an email from February 1st. And um, the goal being then in the last bullet that they are still, the NHESP is still trying to work within the existing schedule and complete our permit for the week of 221. When do you anticipate the board will vote on the conservation agreement? That's not we did vote on the conservation. We voted to uh, provide one but not vote, we didn't vote on specific language. Right, we haven't oh, voted on the, on contract? the contract itself. Well, when, we, when will the contract be finalized? The conservation restriction contract? Mm -hmm. uh, Pat is still negotiating with uh, Natural Heritage. It looks like we're probably gonna have to accept most of their language to keep on track. Uh, that's, gone, that's been vetted through the general counsel and probably the AG's office and, and to keep on track, we're probably gonna have to accept substantially the, the draft See, that's, language. That's what really disturbed me. Yeah, that's because um, it was. We're, we're rolling over. We're giving these bureaucrats whatever they want because they want it. And yeah. Pat. Not in the best interest of the town. And Pat raised some you know, reasonable points. questions to protect the interests of the town and to are some of the interests of the town going to be waived by having to accept the, the yes. verbiage? I mean, any, anything that's negotiable, we, we give up if we accept the things that Pat has, has called the objection to. And I pointed out some things that I had some concerns with, particularly uh, in the, the, uh, the area they called liberal con construction of the document, which essentially said 
we'll look at what the document was intended to do, not what it actually says. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a that. big concern. Uh, you can't give that up. They have to go on based on what the contract says. But not if they on stonewall, we won't. We'll end up. We have a time problem. They don't. Yes, mm. but it's a time problem because of the failure on this end, and that's not Mike's fault. Mm. No, that's the SC Group's fault. Um, looking over this document, and I don't, you know, I think it is important that bullet one, two, three, four, five, six, six and seven. Um, that Ben see those sections. I gave him a copy of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And did, did you draw you attention to those? Two? Because no, no, I just gave him a copy of it. He had a meeting with Shamit. And there was discussion over, in theory, both of these sections. Mm -hmm. And I guess, you know. Is it not getting communicated back to BSC? Well, that's my concern that, you know, BSC's not having, I won't say that there is a miscommunication, but it just. It's not a complete. I'm, right, there's not circle. a complete circle going on here, you know, and so. I think it's important to make sure that sh at least then Shamit and Ben see these documents to see whether or not they agree with these statements here. So who's not talking to who? Ben's not talking. Uh, Ben's talking to Shamit. 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 Shamit's not talking to I BSC. I don't know if they're not talking to them, but just when I read what BSC wrote here, I'm going, the first thing we went, wait a minute, that's not what I and maybe it was me, but that's not what I walked away from thinking. And I don't know who's not, you know what I mean? I, and it could just be a matter of this was written, <laughs> this was written before and it hasn't been updated since everybody's been brought onto the same page. But, you know, I just want to bring it to everybody's attention to make sure that they're all communicating together. So what's, what's the action? I'll take the action item on that to make sure that, um, you know, because this is dated the 11th. I don't know when Sean and Ben up. technically yeah. had that meeting. You know, was this written before? Was it, it written after? Was it a week or two ago? You know, so. Um, but. Just is everybody on the same page when you're talking about that stuff there? Uh, Tony Millette is copied on. Um, as well as, is it Paul Pomadu? I can't remember um, his first name. And Luke Grady. So there are Shawmet members copied on this permit update, but I will take the action item to You know, and, and like I said, it just may be a situation where they're aware of it, they have the answers, but nobody's told BSC either. <coughs> <Okay>. <coughs> I don't know, because uh, I, frankly, I, hmm. it was a peripheral discussion that I was having, wasn't getting into specifics, but when I read this, I just, you know, I'm just raising it to everyone's attention to make sure everybody's on the same page so that no one gets, right. just make so, sure, just checking to make sure they're all talking to each other. Beth, you're going to follow up BSC, Shaman, and Ben to make sure everyone yeah. knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. We do have on page two with the um, SWPP confirmation that they've received it, which Mike, you had said earlier, for the training, they have the, the paperwork. Yes. The EPA. They, they have it, the, uh, the, the review period's two weeks. Yeah. Um. Just because it's paper, not, on, not online, because of the difficulty you had I getting it online. I spent hours trying to get that thing in the bottom line. I simply could get not get that signature portion to load. Yeah. 
Um, under the ACOE Category 1 permit process, mm -hmm. they've requested to get the comments by February 24th. Yes. In some prior, prior emails, that's they actually have later than that. What's the date that they have it to give those comments by? They've requested them by the 24th, but I don't think they technically, if I remember correctly, they don't have to provide them by the 24th. What was that drop dead date? I because believe the 24th is the drop dead date. That's the last I heard. It was the 24th. Because yes. 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 I know they missed their original deadline. I thought it was more like the 28th. Yeah. Without getting in, into personalities, I was told by Leslie that this particular representative is, is known for being somewhat uninterested and not, um, not meeting these deadlines. She will not be at all surprised if nothing comes from her and, and the timeline passes. So where does that put us? Waiting till the timeline passes. Right. Okay, so. So things can move forward on the 25th if nothing has yeah. been said prior to that. 24th is the 24th is their, their, their last day, their last yeah. day yeah. for And if they back. do comment, then it can be pushed out depending on comments. Correct. Theoretically, yes. That's why you have to wait until their ex yes. expiration. Right. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. individual has missed a, has gotten a number of extensions for comment this isn't the first deadline but I guess it's the last deadline okay. they're so there's aware. no more extensions no. This they can file. No. <coughs> okay now how does this put back other question based on our last meeting how does this because originally they were saying they had to start on the 23rd under this they're not starting until the 25th. 25th how does that affect everything the two days start um, it doesn't. I believe potentially there could be a um, a later date in July for construction to actually be completed, but the objective still is to have it open 2012 yeah. that fall, you know, August. Okay, so it pushes out. So it does a little a little bit in the end. I, that's what I've preliminary heard. So, but I don't want to be quoted on that. Okay. So. But there'll be updates Sean, at Wednesday's Sean meeting. Said not, it's not going to really make a difference. Yeah. Okay. Well, and if there are any changes, they'll be yeah. in Wednesday's yeah. meeting. Shall we move on to the discussion slash action request for a street name, definitive subdivision for James Smith, Compound Drive. I move to appoint the request for a street name of Compound Drive for subdivision for James Smith. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 David, right the time for the preliminary budget discussion. Thank you for waiting. No problem. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in your packet, there is a memorandum dated February 10th, um, having to do with our, uh, our latest budget projection. The issue that we had coming up into this point was really the fact that we were missing a few key numbers before we could bring forward a budget. Um, unfortunately, it's something that, that happens historically this time of year. Um, that being, we, we don't get the governor's budget figure until right around the 21st of January. Um, our health insurance <coughs> generally doesn't come in until early February, and the BVT assessment comes in right around that same time. Um, so what we had done is we, we'd sent out budget projections to the department heads based on a 10% drop in overall, overall state aid as discussed originally with the board. Um, departments put submissions in based on those figures. Um, they, um, some departments put in supplemental budgets, but uh, quite frankly, not many did this year. So I think the budget book pages will be a little slimmer just because many are many were pretty well predisposed to the fact that there wasn't going to be any supplementary revenue available um, however as we went through it and we we got these the figures in particularly the health insurance uh, the governor's budget and the uh, the BVT assessment we felt we found ourselves in a little better position than we originally planned so right now our revenue Based on based on this, is looking to be thirty six million one hundred thirteen thousand. Um, now, if you look at that budget versus last 
this fiscal year's budget of 33 million and change, which is on the bat on uh, the fourth page in. Uh, you'll notice it's gone up quite a bit, um, like a little over two million dollars, two million six twelve. Uh, most of that increase, of course, is due to the first year of the debt exclusion for the new high school. Um, so, just, I mean, at, at this late hour, I, I don't think we want to read through the whole thing. But what it really comes down to is if you, is if you just go to uh, this table right here, just for a quick second, uh, what it comes down to is when you look at, at how the budget was apportioned through the revenue share agreement, which just as a reminder, we don't have a formal agreement on for this year as of this point, but we ran the budget through that, through that methodology anyway. What winds up happening is the Uxbridge Public Schools budget winds up with a net reduction of $61,014, uh, 0.34%. The municipal budget winds up with a net increase of $14,300. Uh, the fixed costs go up by $2,700,463. Um, that's basically your health insurance, your debt. The debt exclusion is really the biggest amount in all of those figures there. So in the end, you wind up with a uh, budget increase of uh, overall of 7.8%, mostly once again because of the, of the debt exclusion. Um, now, if you look, in, in considering the municipal portion of the budget, the, bu the budget is up by $15,000. Um, however, due to some, some movements that we had to make within that budget, the department budgets are actually lower than they've probably been in the six years that I've been here. I think we're really on the bottom of the curve at this particular point. Um, because what we did is we had to, we had to uh, move $100,000 into the capital as per the board's direction. So we set up a new capital account that has $100,000 in it. Um, that was paid in proportionately by all the departmental budgets uh, based on their size. Uh, the veterans agent needs an additional $30,000 for veterans benefits. Needs or wants? Uh, no, needs. needs. That's a needs. Is that a state mandate? Yes. That's, yes. An unfunded state mandate. Um, and, and quite frankly, if we, we, if we ran into a little more revenue, we might have to, have to boost that up a little bit more. Um, because the veterans agent, right after this budget was finished, the veterans agent put in a reserve fund transfer request of $30,000, which is the exact increase we put in for this fiscal year. Um, so we might not make it through the next fiscal year even, even boosting that budget up by $30,000. Um, the inspectors are going up uh, for, at least in this preliminary budget, by, by $30,000. This has to do with the school project and the increased duties for those, for those three departments. Um, the agreement was basically 10,000 per year for that. So this is a stipend, this is not part of their base or anything. Right but that's a $30,000 increase. Um, fuel, um, based on the, the change in gas prices, we forecasted a change of $15,000 or uh, additional within that account. Um, and then fin finally, when, when we brought back our accountant on a full-time basis, that was a net cost of $25,000. So all, you add all of that up and it's $200,000 worth of new budgetary items. Um, we, can we can knock off $50,000 that we, we had in capital expenses in the fiscal 2011 budget, that being the $30,000 for the police for the cruiser, $20,000 for uh, turnout gear for the fire, so that, that subtracts it out basically, and we have a surplus of $15,000. So in the net, re the net result when you put all of that in is the municipal budgets are now operating with $135,000 less in fiscal 2012 than they, they did in 11. David, yes. what's the current status and the outlook for the budget sharing agreement? We had a meeting on that uh, 
and I don't think that, that we came to a consensus. We, we discussed some of the issues that we had uh, on both sides uh, and discussed tweaking them. I, I don't think we're at a consensus yet, but we're still talking. Do, do you have confidence that we will be in agreement before town meeting? I, I Well, one of the things we have to consider is there was one issue I think that we can't come to agreement on. It's, it's yeah. Which is? Which is? Sewer? Uh, no. Okay. No what? It has to do with uh, the way uh, we, we look at uh, retirement benefits. The school department is concerned that since teachers are paid separately, the state funds the teacher retirement fund, that uh, they feel that they're overassessed. In we, the, uh, the way we, we calculate the, right. uh, we take the we retirement, take the retirement off the top. right off the top, yeah, and they're figuring that they, they, their they commentary is they don't have the fifty percent of that number, and okay. so what? And the other thing that they talked about is that they've never seen any savings in the health insurance account. So I, I think we can, you know, we, we, can we can we're working with that, that one. They've been treated okay. fairly. But well, how about the savings? issue of the, the retirement? Yeah, uh, is their position a just one? We'd, have to, we'd well, have to really look at all the list of retirees. I mean, we're really, at, we're not really assessed for the prospective group. Okay. It's, it's the group that's retired all this time. Yeah. That's why we have an unfunded liability mm -hmm. that we're gonna be paying through 2040. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, the only way to do that is really to get a membership list, list and tick and tie as to who's who. Okay. But, but you know, the that, original agreement, that, we didn't, reasonable there was that. no issue. So well, that's something we I, have. To I don't do. know that. Uh, I mean, this was one of the basic assumptions of the original agreement, and I don't know that the original agreement would have been struck with the same split had we dropped this in the way they want to. Okay. The other thing that I think that we need to bring up then, if they've raised the issue of the retirement account, it's the unemployment account. Uh, that's a, that certainly is the unemployment account. You know, if, if they only want to take on retirement at the portion that they're using it, well, then they need to take on unemployment at the portion that they use it. Because we've gotten, we've gotten hit heavy the last couple of years because they, lay off, they give the teacher the notices before their deadline in June or whatever it is. They lay the teachers off for the summer, and then there's a percentage of them that they bring back in September. And the municipal side has been paying for that, and that has not been hitting through the revenue sharing agreement. So if, I mean, I don't, I think in all fairness that if they've raised, raised a valid issue with the retirement, then we also need to re raise the issue of unemployment. You had mentioned savings in mm -hmm. benefits. What are they looking for in savings? Well, what their commentary is, is if they have a, pr if they lay off three individuals mm -hmm. who each have a $15,000 health insurance plan. Now that plan is no longer, be, that is no longer being assessed to them because they've been laid off. Mm -hmm. What they're saying is they should, is when you get to maybe even the Paul Town meeting, they should be allowed to take the 15,000 times three account. out of the health insurance account. Okay. And put Use that it. back in their budget. Mm -hmm. um, the problem, the, the problem you run into, though, is you cannot forecast anybody new who will be hired throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And generally, that any surplus that remains in the health insurance account would flow to free cash and flow to the stabilization account, which town and school <coughs> have had the advantage right. of. Right. And, and, and the other thing to consider is when we had this meeting, we had this meeting before these final figures were out. Um, I mean, at that point in time, I think we were talking about the school was around $365,000 in the hole. Um, we've made up a lot of that. So, well, you know. Better than we, uh, we forecast. Yeah, BBT came yeah. in with a decrease. Right, instead of an increase. So, you know, whether or not that's enough to get, to, to get all the parties to say, let's do it for three more years. Mm -hmm. That, that may not be in the cards. The question is really at this particular point, looking at the budget figure as, as they see it now, is that something they can live with even if they wanna talk about the revenue share more? Because mm -hmm. you know, as, as Selectman Bagdasarian has pointed out, it's getting a little late. And right. you know, I, I mean, 
we have the agreement has has served both the town and the school yes. side well mm -hmm. because it gives us you know it relieves us from that fight at town meeting Absolutely. floor mm -hmm. scrounging for money so we should bend every effort to see if we can reach an amicable agreement mm -hmm. the the other issue is that the budget you presented is a is a formula budget for the town side we have to get away from that mm. we all understand that we need to put more money into the Department of Public Works. Uh, and we have to take a serious look at the different departments and we can't do everything every year the way we've been doing them. We have to fund, th there's still zero in the town school maintenance account, even though there's 100,000 in the um, um, and then capital. 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 And that's a drop in the bucket. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't begin to recognize the real needs of the community. Now, well, something that we need to uh, needs to have it clarified, and maybe we need to put it in the language, David, is that the capital, the hundred thousand in the capital budget account, is, I mean, is it clear that is only for the municipal? Yes, and they are okay. they are, and they the fully understand understands that. that they can't yes, touch they any portion of that. Okay, so yeah. we need to make you know at least a town meeting everybody understands. Municipal only paid that hundred thousand, right. so municipal only can touch that. That's correct. Um, but put that hundred thousand up against the demonstrated needs of the town. Throwing out all the fluff, look at the the oh, it's, serious it's needs. Right. It's a drop in the bucket, right. and we see the consequences with these storms we've had and so forth. Right. Mm -hmm. And we have to. That, and that's our job. It's not the manager's job. It's not David's job. That's our job. And when are we going to do it? Yeah. Now, so just that's a question. So we're short. How much are we short right now, David? You're not short. We're over slightly. No, we're we're balanced. We're balanced. We're exactly balanced. We're okay. But there are, you know, this. If you look on the. Uh, well, how much is projected to come from? Okay. Yeah. You made a comment, and I guess let me ask you this first for sure. clarification. You said the money f out of the police for the cruiser. Yes, that was thirty thousand dollars. You took it out of their budget. Yes, because okay. we bought a cruiser. Right. We didn't but fund a cruiser they, this year. Aren't they planning in twenty twelve to buy another Explorer? Uh, we've been talking about that. Um, it's. I, I got just a little bit of information from Peter Emmerich. Um, we're, we're looking at a, a few different combinations of what to do. Okay, so do you have an idea from each of the departments who, who we could anticipate requesting warrant articles for the Springtown meeting for money coming out of stabilization to pay th for things that are not in their budgets? And under, the, under this budget, I none. No, no. There, there are no warrant articles. We are perfectly balanced. So the police station had... You understand what I'm saying? I mean, if they're going to need an explorer in 2012, where's the money going to come from if well, it's not in their budget? No, there's there's been discussions about getting a different type of vehicle. Um, I mean, it's very, like I said, it's very it, it's it's okay. very preliminary at this point. But they understand what's here is all there is because there is if you look at what we turned back for free cash last year. There's no, there, you know, it, it's going to be difficult enough taking the money that we need to take from snow and ice for stable, for, uh, from stabilization for the snow and ice deficit. There is not going to be room for any Warren articles. Then, I mean, that doesn't say that anything may not be put forward. But at this point in time, what's the stabilization account? It's got like uh, 1.385. And. And so you, we're going to be close to the million you're going to be close once to the we million. take out the snow yeah. and ice. Yeah, I figure, I mean, it's and realistic to think 300,000. our agreement is 000. we don't drop below a million dollars. Hmm? And the whole, the original agreement with finance was we maintain a million dollars in that correct. account. So we don't have any room in that account. Okay. Not if we want to make, not if we want to stick to that policy. And you, I'm sorry, you made the assumption that um, in regard to the inspectors, Yes. That the 
Townside is paying for half of them, correct? No, right now, Are right you, now, absent fully. any agreement, okay. it's it's thir there's thirty thousand dollars in here okay. that are that are going that would be going through the inspectors. Ten thousand for each department: building, so plumbing, and electrical. What happened with those discussions? Are they still I, open? I I um, I would defer to the manager. I don't really do much with the school building oh. committee, and that's, that's really the school building committee. There was a discussion on it, and. It wasn't taken up. It was uh, the, the first. The agenda was rescheduled. It was not put on the rescheduled agenda by the uh, by the chair. So I don't know what their position is. Uh, is it something that um, either you or Bruce could bring up at the meeting? Certainly, on? I'll bring it up. Just to say. <coughs> uh, but right now we we're proceeding with, if necessary, we will capture within mm -hmm. the municipal budget but uh, certainly it would be helpful it would uh, certainly make it much easier for us to bring another position on at DPW which is mm -hmm. uh, one of our goals right. this budget allows for no new hirings at DPW that's uh, no you you keep you keep the DP the uh, highway supervisor that's in this year's budget mm -hmm. that is funded through next year but right now there's not enough room for another for another hire at DPW, and that was our goal. But and, and this is obviously not taking into any kind of no discussion of reducing hours of any town facilities. I mean, no, this no. that that's this it is, is a keeping matter. keeping everything right. status quo. This is status quo running with as little expense as possible. You know, one and but one thing, one thing you have to do keep in mind um, when it comes to the formula aspect, there are two issues. There are two formulas that that go through here, and then after that, if this thing were, if this budget ran by by formula alone, you'd have a, you'd have some some departments that would have way over what they should, and you'd have other departments that would be way under. Mm -hmm. The formula worked for assessing the departments for the $100,000 for the capital account. That was all done by percentage of budget. The other formula is the original formula that works with the revenue share agreement. I mean, you know, if you have a department that picks up health insurance, that department's gonna get assessed $15,000. Mm -hmm. Now, that may, that may be difficult to do, but it, accomplishable within the police department, but you're not going to do that in a, one of these town offices. They can't afford, they can't do that. So though the formulas do come into play, but then there was a lot of movement that happened with all of the budgets. And in the end, what surplus we had left when we determined that it could not, it was not enough to fund a full-time position, we basically split it and put it back into police overtime because that account was very, very low. And we put, and we put an, about $14,000 into a DPW overtime. So, I mean, there's formula, but there's also movement. There's a lot of movement that went on. Mm -hmm. But not enough. Clear, because well, we, clearly need to, we need to, we need DPW, to, you, need you know, the, We've the come up with um, more money. senior center, you know, we don't have to have a full-time director right. at the senior center. We, we can reduce the expenses of the library. The library gets into things that, you know, they, they have an enormous circulation in, in DVDs. Mm -hmm. and, and we use them because we don't have television. So we go and get a week's supply of movies free. We don't pay anything. That's not right. That's not, that wasn't the function of the library. And just because people like something, including myself, is not a justification to take money from people through taxes because we decide that we should we should do this we have to make those changes that is our job why is the library not um, purchasing it with their other we do purchasing what friends of the library their grants all that stuff yeah. we do yeah yeah they, so they're doing they in do. addition to yes this. yes but we're still well, paying but um, 300 what's the budget for the library 311000 for yeah. twelve, three dollars um, Is that, are they gonna be on probation? 
they're going to, they will still be required to file for a waiver again next they're year. They're going to have to file for a waiver. That's correct. They well, they're, 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 they're not going, they're not going to be at the minimum that the, that the, uh, Bureau, the Board of Library Commissioners wants, but okay. as long but, but as we look, can demonstrate. But look so at what we get in state aid. Is it $11,000? Yeah, that's uh, crazy. A little bit more than that. Yeah, Maybe not much. 18, something right. like that. No, it's not we worth it. the other 300. <laughs> that's right. It's not worth it. So the 311000 is that where it would eliminate that's us from being um, participants in CMARS? And no, we're already, that. we're already. That's ready. part, that's included within that budget. Okay. And there's no reason why we can't charge people who want an interlibrary loan. The, the letter I received from the um, librarian, I think it was last year, they put the value of an interlibrary loan, the rental of a book for a week or two weeks, as $20. Now, by what right do I get an interlibrary book that costs $20 mm -hmm. and force you to pay for it mm -hmm. for two weeks? You know, mm -hmm. if I want it, and if it's not worth $10 or $5 or whatever it is to me, why should it be worth something to you? To bring on an, um, another employee in DPW, mm -hmm. how much money? You need another? We don't, because we just don't need salary. We have to cover benefits, health insurance, right. benefits, right. and all that. So what do we need? Well, right now we'd be short by... Forty-five thousand, because there's fif there's fifteen that, that I put in the overtime that we uh, we discussed. That's the only place that was left, so we put fifteen there. So okay. to get the minimum, you'd have to come up with another forty-five thousand. And that's taking the fifteen out of overtime. That's taking the fifteen. So we figure really it's going to be sixty thousand. We need sixty to leave the hmm. fifteen, in and overtime. that's for which position? That's for that's for that's an equipment operator. Right. Yeah, equipment operator. So what's more important, having the, the streets plowed and the sidewalks plowed and, and so forth, or going mm -hmm. to the library and getting a book for nothing? Well, you know, and these are the hard decisions that we're looking exactly. I mean, I think that here's a couple of my thoughts, and I'll throw them out there. I mean, looking at the services. And information that Marcia gave us this, this evening on the senior center. I mean, looking at the things that have been provided. Um, I mean, what would be our savings to make the senior center part time? You know, it could still be open five days a week, but we'd save the salary and the, and the benefits. Right, save the salary and you know the benefits from that position. I mean, you could still be open five days a week, but open during the hours that they're conducting the activities around lunchtime. You know, you open for four hours, five days a week, that's 20 hours. I don't know how that would affect, um, you know, the other things that they, that she mentioned that they offer, you know, like the, the tax, and it, it's, some of it's well, seasonal, obviously. Well, you could go no, outside sorry. services. Right. Oh, I, I, I agree. It's just it's a service, but or I'm it could be provided at the library. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I mean, they could, if they needed the space, they could conduct it in Lower Town Hall. I mean, this, all those services right. could still be provided, mm -hmm. and then we would also be saving, you know, the heating on the building. You know, just I mean, I know those would be minimal, but I mean, those are things to consider. Um, you know, I don't see where necessarily the services would be affected because we have space in other buildings that we could utilize uh, for the similar services. What other buildings are you thinking of? The other the things we have to well, by using what we're that's involved, what the board needs. That's what we do. Any of the access there for you know just because of the senior center is very easy, easily accessible for anyone because there are no stairs. Yeah. Yeah, but no we ramps, have a ramp. Nothing. But we know. have the ramp. Right. I mean. Well, no. ramps, ramps are. That's tough with this weather. Mm. Um, the. Um, I mean, wasn't wasn't conservation looking for more money for Pout Pond? 
they, yeah. theirs, theirs funding was the, for the, for the uh, treatment. Weed abatement. Right, 4790, that includes the weight the yes, weed abatement, weed which we have to do again. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, it does. Okay. Um, Generally, that's a $1,400 budget otherwise. Uh, I mean, yeah. Board of Health, you can't, is there any room in Board of Health, Peter, for money? Well, there's one girl in a part-time position, and she's funded by a grant. She's funded by a grant. Yeah. Okay, so. And you, you have a part-time position. You're, you're making a part-time part -time position upstairs, right? That's correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and she's already been figured in, so. That's already part of the calculation. And who's that? Uh, I'm playing. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, police and fire. I mean, we know police, they're at minimum staffing. What about fire? They, they I mean, the chief. The majority of that is, by the e is out of the, e the ambulance. We do have minimum staffing have requirements minimum staffing. in the contract okay. right now. The contract, of course, will be going to. Uh, Negotiations. Negotiations, but there are minimum staffing requirements as of And we're at the minimum right now. Yeah. Okay. There's, okay. there's no place in either one of those budgets. Do we spend the 2500 in weight and measures? Yes, every year. But the state, the state does that. state so does it. We, yeah. pay, we pay them one check. Yeah. They do everything. Um, animal control. That's that's an agreement. That's large. That, that's almost okay. totally funded uh, by uh, receipts from other towns. Okay. Um, and the chiefs cut that budget as well to, to make it all work. What's the new hunt, well, what hunting about the and fishing licenses we offer? We should be able to get. We don't get anything for that. Time. It's a service. It's a service only. We get that's it. for sure. Yeah, I know. Um, more people will be hunting the animals. <laughs> What about the library? What would be our savings on the library if we knock yeah, them down to 40? Yeah, you shoot them. They're, not, they're under control. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, we'd have, I mean, no, I, I can't tell you right off the top they because they submit, they <laughs> submit a budget shot. based on everything else. I you mean, could be open the five days, but just not have a full-time director. Is there a need for a full-time director? Uh, you are going to then. If, if you look at the report, uh, the one I saw recently, they bought 12 fiction books and six non-fiction books. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the circulation, they get rid of more books than they buy, mm -hmm. and they get rid of good books and buy junk books, in my estimation. I mean, novels, mm -hmm. you know. And if, uh, if, if libraries were not invented, public libraries, they would not be invented today because they were invented at a time when books were beyond the reach of the average person and they were designed to increase knowledge and education. Today, it's completely different. It's just entertainment. So, and, and the librarian in one of her reports said that almost 50% of the people in Uxbridge use the library. That means that 50% don't use it but they're paying for it. Mm -hmm. Again, we come, everything we do comes from people. And if I take a dollar away from you through taxes to do something that I, the government, want to do, that's a dollar you don't have to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You see? Just, just to point out, however, that the library director and the assistant are hired and contracted by the Board of Library Trustees. Yeah. They have contracts on, they have contracts. So certainly if, if this is a budget that is going to be looked at by the Board of, Board of Selectmen, obviously I, I certainly recommend that, they, that the library trustees interface with the board on but that. But keep, keep in mind that <laughs> yeah. we appropriate the money That's for correct. the library. Our obligation is to maintain the building as, as town library. If we reduce the position to part-time and fund it to that extent, mm -hmm. the trustees are welcome at their discretion because they have trust funds. Mm -hmm. They can make up the difference and use it. Now, there's always been an issue with the trustees of should they expend just the interest 
on the funds or get you know in the arguments on both sides but that that's their decision mm -hmm. our decision is something different I mean looking over does anyone see anywhere else where there's room in this budget looking at what we see here we need to look at expenses paper for instance and I keep coming down we spend enormous amounts on paper but the way the accounting system is set up and the way we buy paper it's not easy to um, pull that expense out but I can tell you uh, when Al was sick and I took out the trash we had four big campus full of paper, shredded paper, every week for the go. So we, we print and print and print and, thr and shred and shred and shred. We need to look at cell phones as well. That was one thing Yes, that we talked about. But basically we have to look at the things we do mm -hmm. and decide should we keep doing it the same way we're doing it or should we do it in a different way? That's, the, that's our job. Well, okay, but, and I agree, looking at paper and cell phones, though, isn't going to save us $60,000. That, that's correct. I mean, correct. we're going to still have to, we've we got to go, we got to go for a position. Someplace. Either we go for a, one full position somewhere, or if we take some full positions and knock them down to part-time, it's the only place we're going to make up $60,000. Um, you know, given where we've had to increase. Now, unless, now, I mean, there's no reason to do that exercise if there's no, if the board doesn't feel that DPW needs another worker. They do. They do. But if they need another worker, then we have a tough decision to make because we're going to have to, we're going to have to cut a department. But they need a worker and they need some work on the equipment and they need to upgrade some equipment. Right, so which are, right, there. right, this is just the minimum yeah. of one employee. This doesn't even address the issue yeah. of their capital needs. Yeah. Which in theory, they need about $100,000, at least another 40000 towards one capital expenditure. But, but the, there's a you tendency know, I don't know to where look at those line items, and because they're typed, the assumption is that, well, these things are, are important, but there are other more important things that just not made it to the list. Right, you know? I, right. I, no, and I agree with you. I mean, I, I, I guess having the ability to, you know, see this, I can, I understand what you're saying. But, um, I mean, yeah, there's, so, there's a couple of thousand dollars within some of these lines, but you know, knowing that that's just not going to give us a chunk. We've got to find a chunk somewhere. And, and honestly, you know, and I know, you know, the only places I see chunks to come from right now are library and senior center. You know, we can't touch DPW because that's where we're trying to give the money to. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't see where we're going to get it in town hall. We've already taken, we've already taken a full to a half here. We're down to our minimums in, in our departments here. Um, you know, maybe there's a half, pos half position we can take back out of Treasury, but then we just turned around and hired somebody. You know, it's like, you know, where are we on, an, on those issues? Um, we could always do that, but that's still not going to get us. We're still going to have to either hit library or senior center. There are two pieces. Uh, I'm missing something? Well, there, no, but there, I just wanted to point out, uh, the budget does have two pieces of, of large DPW equipment. So there, there is a little bit of assistance there, and that's not within the DPW budget, that's within the debt budget, because um, it envisions, and, and Ben still needs to, needs to sit back down, and he hasn't, obviously, with all the storms, he hasn't really had a chance, but we were looking at at the possibility of getting a new loader and getting one getting one large truck on debt service that would be that would be also have to be approved at the Springtown meeting as debt service but and how are you going to pay for that you get you pay we pay for it out of the debt service out of budget. the debt service in this budget that's correct okay so that's it's already not, it, the, it's the, not, the budget the right, debt payment right, is budget, the right, debt right, payment right, is okay. already within the budget okay. 
it's what we're going to have to it's not at. but it's no because they're all their cars i mean we were looking at originally at four or five pieces yes, but to right. do that we'll need an extrusion okay so i think we need to see some still at the sixty thousand. yes right what you're saying there is we don't have to look at like a hundred thousand well, I'm saying you've at least got two pieces of big equipment. Right, we've got two pieces. That, that, I mean, that's not the whole problem, but at least it's, it's a start. Right. Right. Okay. So we've got. Um, I mean, there's a couple ways to look at it. I mean, we we could do a line analysis of the library and look at what would the savings be if um, the library went to either three or four days a week. Um, you know, potentially what would our be, you know, then taking um, the employees and rolling back that, how much savings do we get um, mm -hmm. taking employees instead of, you know, being 37 and a half hours, you take it and knock them all down to 32 hours a week. Um, that's also, I guess, a town hall, you could look at that instead of town hall running on 37 and a half, we look at running on 32 and we cut the hours at town hall as a, overall. Um, or well, you look would, at the senior center. That would require center, a negotiation on a contract. I mean, you can cut individual employees' hours, but the hours of town hall are fixed in the SEIU contract. Right. Okay, so avoiding any contract negotiations, because I mean, I'm just assuming that that wouldn't go anywhere for the argument at this particular moment. Well, I mean, what I'm cuts we can make without having to go to union negotiations. You can you can take, you, you can cut positions to part time or cut the hours of specific positions uh, with the, the thought that managers would still be there full time. Um, can I just ask a question though? But as Peter said, this is preliminary. Yeah. So there's still information yeah. that. Well, no. The, the no real, we can the, ask. So the information is really here. anything mm -hmm. where the board wants to go. With, there's actually a prototy prototype of the budget book already done, mm -hmm. but w if you remember last year, we put the, the budget book out very early, and then right. you know here here here's a new budget, here's a new budget for this department, here's a new budget for that right. department. The goal uh, is really to get a, comp a a ready budget in one shot in the budget books to the finance committee. But to Carrie's point, we can't. Um, she brings up a good comment of. If we were to look at the line items of reductions in the library, if we were to look mm -hmm. at line items of reduction in the senior center, well, with the direction of the board, we can we can prepare something for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. And that I mean, the, the problem is once you get to the 28th, we're almost out of time. Right. But certainly, I mean, the goal here was to put a put something together that was balanced, mm -hmm. and then to let the board look at that and make any other. Um, observations or decisions that the board felt necessary before we put forward anything final. Okay, so. so if we looking at providing, trying to still provide the services, like for instance, you know, um, we can't cut the hours of town hall because that requires union negotiation. We does that that also applies for library also, or does it? For the library. For the library. Hours. No, can we that's the, not fixed in the contract. That's the not fixed hours. in the contract. So we can adjust the hours, yeah, yeah. but in adjusting those hours, though, the only thing we're going to save is when the doors are actually closed and heating because because we, we can't touch their. Can we Directors. touch the hours of days? I don't think we can. I, don't, I think that's in the contract I, I still, isn't it? Cause well, no, I think that, that the hours of operation are under the control of the library trustees. Um, no. No. But with that, can we affect the, can we affect, the, see it doesn't, at the library, if you're gonna, if you're gonna close a library for five hours, the savings is not going to be substantial for closing that building for five hours. Where the sub savings comes in is because now the employees work five hours less per week. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can we do that without the union contract? 
um, is there review that contract, but I don't believe it, it specifies hours for the library, uh, full-time hours for the library employees, but I need to review that. Okay, then my, if I can make this recommendation, then since basically we have to make a decision at our next meeting, if we can have, you know, we've got to come up with $60,000. You guys give us a couple of options mm -hmm. with dollar figures on, you know, we're talking a la carte here. Well, you know, if we close the library for five hours per week and we say five hours in salary, you know, and you kind of identify the average of those salary costs and if it affects the benefits or any of these, then we're going to save, you know, $10,000 there. And then if we do something similar at the senior center, we're going to save, you know, give us a couple of options. Are we going to have to take all our cart, taking a little bit from everybody? And are we going to be able to get to the 60000 Or are we going to have to go off and, you know, take out a whole position to get there? I, I would say at this point in time, we couldn't take it from a grouping of budgets because they're, just, they're not going to make it. What do you so, mean they're not going to make it? Oh, we're not going to get to our 60. Uh, no, 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 no. We might, we can get to the 60, oh. but the departments aren't going to be going to be left with enough expenses to operate. That's that that's where the departments are, by and large. What so, in other about? words, so is the only option then to look at eliminating a full time? I mean, you, your real the real choices that you have at this point is, if, say, 60 grand is the number. Mm -hmm. I mean. I mean, you're, you're really, you've got to change how you're doing business. Mm -hmm. So, and that comes down to library, senior center, or any other service, whatever service that may be, that we wish to impair or not offer. But, I mean, that's where it is. That, I mean, we're, we're, we're past the point to take a few dollars here and a few dollars there. It's just not there anymore. It's done. This is, this is the trough of the budget. This is you know, looking from the expense side, they're, they're, the departments just don't have it left in them. Okay, so given that information then, we don't have the only, then can we split it though between two departments? Could we take, could we, yep. you know, what's the, what's the director no, of the library just name? Asked, though, or not? <laughs> No, I was no, doing more uh, small, like... Oh. We were talking like like an, a global cut all the way down. No, 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 I wasn't talking okay, that. Okay, maybe no, I no, wasn't. More, no, no, no. It's no, getting no, late. No, yeah, no, a la carte kind of, I mean... Yeah. But I think what you're saying is more defined. Like, for instance, I mean... I guess the question is... Um, you know, and I'll pick on the senior center because Marsha came in this evening and we she gave us some pretty specifics. She's got herself and an outreach coordinator and um, one other part-time in the drivers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So looking at the three major services that they're offering right now, um, and then they have a bunch of free clinics, which individuals are coming in and donating their time or their, you know, um, looking at the services and at the hours of day, the big crux of it is functioning around the, the, middle, the middle meal, mm -hmm. okay? So um, right now the outreach coordinator works 15 hours and is 9.30 to 2.30. What if you had the senior well, center? Oh, by the way. You yes, know, I understand that position. We didn't always have a, right. a coordinator of outreach. No, that wasn't new, actually, because Mary Rice had written mm -hmm. that. Mary, yeah, I know that, that. But I mean, I, I'm talking about Oh, in the broad, yeah, okay. Yeah, the broad scheme. I thought you meant as a new with Mary okay. Mac. Okay. So we have the option here of, well, you have then the senior center open from 9.30 to 2.30, Monday through Friday, and you have two individuals both working 15 hours covering that shift, covering that time. And can we achieve our money in that time frame? Well, it remains to be seen. I mean, we'll have to calculate it out. I don't want to tell you off the cuff. But we're not going to do that out of that that alone. It so would have to well, be. It would have so to we be. have to do that and, okay, and yes. something to the library. But then that's the to your point of saying that right. they'd be left with the inability to operate. 
Well, they won't be able to operate in the hours that they currently operate. Right. And th then at that point, it's up to the board to decide if they're, if they're open uh, 10 to 2. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, is that the mission that the board, that the board is satisfied with the operation of the, of the senior center? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a policy decision for the board at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's a means to an end. We're taking the money because we need it. Right. But, you know, you all have to decide if, if that's what you want. And you know, quite frankly, when we get to town meeting, that's something you get you have to market because just remember the senior center not two years ago had a voluntary cut of eight thousand bucks that nobody had a problem with until an article appeared at the fall town meeting and they got the eight grand back. So, you know, the only caution with but this remember, is we all got to be on town that meeting day. appropriate money. Town meeting authorizes the expenditure. Town meeting doesn't spend money. Right. We didn't have to give it back just because town meeting authorized it, is what you're saying, Peter. That's right. The same thing with the $15,000 mobile television production studio. Okay, we're not going to go there, please. <laughs> but, and I understand what you're saying, but, it, you know, it, here would be a situation where, I mean, and I guess that we all need to come in for our next meeting with, look, we heard Ben come in here, we heard the issues, you know, we see the impact of his department had. And granted, it wasn't just the snow, but we're gonna see, you know, the fallout of this with the roads, you know, and the, you know, and the other, you know, and he didn't even talk about water and sewer and, you know, his, um, his, institutional knowledge is quickly shrinking, you know, in other sections of DPW mm -hmm. um, with retirements that could be pending. So there's other issues that we need to start seriously looking at with DPW and looking at a projected long term. Um, so with this, it may be a situation where, yeah, okay, we don't fund DPW, that's what we decide to do as a board and we keep moving forward, um, which is an option and we just, leave it out to dry and the town manager and DPW for the next six months are going to be fielding phone call after phone call and also you know town's responsibility when we're notified of a pothole and we don't get it filled within the allotted time frame and we're paying how many claims. how much claims we have to pay exactly because you know they just don't have the manpower to service this I don't think that this personally I don't think that we can overlook they're short staffed anymore, just given where we're at. So with that, if, you know, and I understand, I, I honestly, I don't, I don't have a preference in really where the money comes from, whether it comes from the senior center or it comes from the library, but I think we need to look at cutting back at resources at one of them. And I, and I think that if we look at it, if we look at what they're offering, I think that there's a way that we potentially could still provide people with the services and they may lose their ability on how long they have to access those services. But just what I see here, I don't see whether or not they'll actually lose a complete service. They'll just lose, you know, how many times in a day. The only other piece that you had brought up, Carrie, though, is no offense, your department. Yeah. Well, throw that in there. That ha one of those part-time positions that we just filled. David, why is there nothing appropriated for tax title? Did you explain that what you're authorized to do? Uh, ta tax title can be tax title is something that we can raise on the recap. Okay. I, I only raise it. I, I I don't put it in the budget anymore okay. because I you know we wait to see where we are on the okay. on the back end right. and then we raise it. Right, we raise fine. it on the recap sheet. I yeah. it, I used to put it in. Take there's just no point because we're just too tight. But the so other thing what's the finance committee line on this? Uh, the finance committee that's the that they have a five hundred dollar expense line and the rest of it is is the reserve fund. Sixty eight eight eighty three? Yes. Uh -huh. So what happened between fiscal year oh eight well, four hundred and thirty to fiscal year twelve? Um, well <laughs> thank you. What's your question? Say that again? In oh eight, yep. the budget was four hundred and thirty dollars. Well, okay. In Twelve. That's, that's 60, it's sixty-eight thousand. Yeah. Well. So what's, I just trying to understand. What okay. There's a there, there's a fundamental there's a fundamental problem with VADAR in this. 
Um, all of these budget lines that you see, first of all, it took about three months to do because I really wanted to just have us have everybody have a definitive record mm. uh, because we were doing that so we could defend the revenue share agreement. This is exactly how it lines up in VADAR. Now, how VADAR works is basically when the Finance Committee the transfers from the reserve fund, they their original course. budget goes down. There's just no, it's, you know, every other department, it's an expense, but with the Finance Committee, they're transferring from their available balance over to another department. So there's no way, there, there's no way to accurately show in the budget document that they started with, you know, seventy-five thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. it, so it, the four hundred you're seeing is the ending figure. Yeah, yeah, that all the other money has been yeah. put through other departments, but they they basically started. I mean, back in oh back in oh eight, they started with they started at eighty thousand, and they've been slowly ticking their way down, and now they now they're down to sixty eight. But they're going to use it all this. year. They're going to use it all this year. There's going to be nothing mm -hmm. left. In fact, <laughs> we should budget more for that. We should if we if we had it. I mean. If, if these departmental budgets had more in them, there you wouldn't worry about the reserve fund yeah. as much. We try to hold the reserve fund till the end, but you know I hate to say it, but the veterans budget has been killing us because it's a, it's a big chunk every year. No matter how much we put in there, there winds up being more more need. So it looks like there's three scenarios we'd like to see. Agree, <coughs> board members. Say it again. I'm sorry. Say that again. It looks like there's three scenarios we'd like to see: library, senior center, Davis department. Yeah, yeah. but there's, yeah. there's little that's, chips that's, too, you know. Yeah, I, okay. we I should decision, not. We can opinion. reduce if we're, if we're, we're careful. I mm. see legal expenses are creeping mm. up again, and I don't like to see it. I see those same things month yep. after month after month. But a lot uh, of that has to do. There with are a lot the of street lights we can take off. That, that have left on, been left on, mm -hmm. and they serve no public purpose. So you know we can do some of these things, but we have to do them. Mm -hmm. If we don't do them, they don't get done. Mm -hmm. You know, and just so the people at home, because they can't see these paperwork. I mean, we have realized a 25% savings in the street lights that we have shut off so far. I mean, it, it's like twelve thousand dollars. So we, you know, it wasn't just. We went from a budget of 51,000, now we're down to a 38,000. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, I agree with you, Peter, there may be mm -hmm. more lights, but um, I just don't know if we're gonna get another $10,000 chunk <laughs> out of yeah. street lights. Oh, I think you can get 10,000. Um, insurance. Yeah. You know, for, for vehicles and buildings. Remember, every time we add a building or a vehicle, we pay more insurance. Mm -hmm. And at higher rates. And at higher rates. So, new. you know, we have to look at these things. There's two buses at the senior center is nice. If they have three, it'd be nicer. If they have 12, it'd be nicer yet. But at some point, how many do we actually need? And how many should we provide? The more you have, the more people are going to use it, because why not? It's free. Um, actually, that brings up, did you know that Menden's looking to buy a senior center, ma'am? I didn't. Yes, they're raising pr um, private funds. They have one of those thermometers outside of their senior center, <laughs> and they have about $15,000 right now. Yeah. Um, so we may want to keep that in mind. You said our price by we, we, we originally <laughs> <laughs> We originally started with one. We, we want to hire a DPW. We yeah, started with no buses. Right. Well, we, yeah, but then we had, then we had the old bus. Yeah. <laughs> then we got the then we got the new bus, yeah. and then we went forward and got the, the other the bus. The 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 equipment. The, That's the fine. Put out a thermometer. Uh, we'll do that for the, the staffing in the DPW. Time, and thermometer. she worked out of the lower town hall. There was no senior center that came. Hope Ben's not watching. Another bus. That's human nature. Yeah. Okay. All right. But we have to make our decision next week. Yeah. Two weeks. Two weeks from next now. Meeting. Our next meeting. Next meeting. So, you know, it okay. We we will go back. We will look at the entire budget, see if we can find a few more, few other nickels mm -hmm. to rub together, and then we then we'll give you the analysis on the three scenarios that the board requested. 
that, that's why we wanted you to look at this so mm -hmm. we know exactly what for, what to bring back as a recommendation. Mm -hmm. You know, and if I could, you know, in all fairness, I mean, the departments that we're looking at, um, you know, contact them. Let them know this is what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, I don't think it will help our situation for us to make a decision to turn around um, and. Well, they may have suggestions. Exactly. You know, and so I think that, you know, I'm not, I don't Shock expect would probably them to be. be the first be, reaction. Right. Yes. But I don't expect them to be on board with what we're doing, but mm -hmm. at least give them the opportunity to have some input into the potential cuts that we're looking at. Because you're like, you're right, Beth. I mean, they could say, well, no, I, okay, if, I, if you're going to take $30,000 from me, right. I'd rather not you take it in hours by this way. I'd rather take it this way mm -hmm. and allow them to provide us with an option of mm -hmm. if they're going to take a huge chunk out of their budget, how do they want to see it leave their budget? Okay. Peter, are you cold? Good. Um, sometimes I give subtle hints. I, oh, yeah, we subtle. <laughs> Thank you, David. You're welcome. Dare I ask member issues? <laughs> You're standing. I, I covered most of them okay. earlier. Anyone else? My, my issue, I, Peter talked about before, I think we're borderline PSA on some of these topics, you know, public service announcement stuff, mm -hmm. which which is very informative, but, I, you know, let's push them to Barry to, to do an update. Like, a lot of the stuff we learned today. Yeah, I, I, I don't think know why we have that senior mm -hmm. center update. I mean, I well, but even Ben, and some of the stuff that Ben was talking about, too, was a little... Um, the only thing I wanted to just, um, the email that we all received, I just wanted to make sure that, uh, chain of command is, if it goes through the chain of command, and that we're Thanks. all apprised of it. Um, and if, vehicle my concern and I you know I've raised this before my concern is that it's disheartening for me to hear that employees or individuals on stipends or whatever the situation is are paying for expenses out of their own pocket I think that it's you know I think it's you know we saw it with inspections when we learned that they're driving their own cars and they're putting their own gas in their cars and you know th there's difference there's a difference if they're doing it for their own convenience but if they're doing it because we're not providing them something then i have a problem with that you know we need to provide we need to provide individuals whether they're contract or employee we need to provide them with their tool and if we can't provide them with the tool then we need to realistically redefine what we expect them to do especially when it's coming to using your own personal car for the work mm -hmm. you know i mean it's just it's well, it's putting them in a bad position because if they have a car accident and they're on town time and we've requested that they do it this way uh, you know I, just, I think it's a bad precedent for us to set. Now, whether they're, if they're choosing it out of their own convenience, whole different ballgame. But um, it's just my thought on it. Town manager update. A couple of items. I, I, uh, I attended a meeting in. My thoughts right now, uh, and uh, so well, I, it's one of the towns here uh, with DCS Energy. They have a program that I'm going to be looking into for uh, installation of solar panels. Uh, we can see up to 2,000 square feet installed on a town building. I'm looking at. at uh, buildings that would be good candidates I think probably DPW will be the best uh, they these panels will produce up to 18 kilowatts of energy uh, the cost to install is free we have a five-year lease which is again free all of this is and at the end of five years we would own the panels the, uh, the way this works financially is they reap all of the 
incentives and benefits and re uh, renewable energy credits. Uh, so I don't know if it's a win for the taxpayer, but it's a win for the town, and, and they make money on it. So I'm going to be looking forward toward uh, uh, proceeding with that. At the end of the five station. years, the efficiency of the towns are down to they claim 75%. It's, uh, they claim it will be at least 85% at the end of the five years. But 85% of free sunlight is still pretty good. Uh, the key is keeping them clean, and that's one reason I'm looking at DPW, because they have uh, at least people there that, that could get up and, and uh, periodically yeah, power wash them. truck to wash them off. <laughs> I think a, a regular power washer would probably be a better choice. What about the police station? Uh, I think it's a one story building also. Well, we don't have enough roof areas. Really. I, don't think, enough? I don't think it's big enough, and I think okay. it's, it's uh, well, there, there's the a little more shade the there, I think. Yeah. Uh, the other item that uh, today I attended a, a uh, meeting for. Uh, Joint dispatch. The the fire chiefs primarily have been looking uh, at that for the last year and a half or so. Uh, they they've gotten to a point where they want to move forward with the feasibility study. Uh, Douglas has taken the lead and gotten a grant and had, has uh, gone through a procurement process. And uh, they have a uh, a company that will be doing that uh, feasibility study. Uh, the timeline is fairly long. It, they, they won't be presenting, doing a public presentation for 10 months. This could be a uh, potential savings for fiscal 13, but not for fiscal 12. So they want to do what? Uh, well, initially they'll be uh, contacting the various departments, and the departments being looked at were are Douglas, uh, Northbridge, Uxbridge, Sutton, and Upton. Mm -hmm those five communities. Now, it may ultimately, uh, depending on the the, uh, the study, not all of those may be included in the joint dispatch. Mm -hmm. uh, there are questions, and we've looked at this before, things like uh, prisoner, uh, prisoner watch. Uh, they may recommend that uh, <coughs> it not be one dispatch for all five communities. It may be three and two, yeah. but they'll be uh, assessing that and then developing uh, alternatives and presenting it in probably around December of this year. Well, I'll tell you, again, I'll, I've mentioned this for the last 25 years. It makes no sense whatever for all the towns to have their own lockup when the only reason we have people in our lockup is to hold them overnight to go to court in the morning. So there should be lockups at the courthouse. They have some now, but we can expand them where all the communities that use the Oxbridge Courthouse would take their prisoners there, and one person can watch all of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's crazy the I way mean, we do it. The only thing, though, on that, and you know, and, I mean, with the courthouse being here in Oxbridge, um, maybe it's not such a huge point, but when you're, when the staffing of your police officers um, is, you know, what it is, I mean, for some of those other towns to travel, you know, you're taking that police officer in the middle of their shift away to transport if you don't have a lockup. But that's, that's a lot cheaper than having somebody, an officer, at the lockup. And if it's a female, you have to have a female sure. officer. Okay. That's a lot of money. It actually makes more sense for the lockup facility if it is a courthouse to have a court officer come and pick them up because court officers make less money than police yeah. officers. Yeah. But they don't store them overnight. They, they, only they don't do that now. No. Right, they, they don't. don't. It yeah. could be we'd could. have to, right, we'd have to build Or we could do it at the sheriff's, at, at the county sheriff's, yeah. uh, at, at, the, at the jail. Um, well, there's ways again, around. they transport them to the Oxbridge court. Mm -hmm. So take them there to begin with. They have the room. And then the access is easy for all the three towns around here. Anything else? I had some questions. Um, do you have a status on the fees from the other departments that I haven't been able to look at yet? Uh, Tracy was compiling those. I'll, I'll get it to you. I'll get you a report tomorrow. 
uh, water, sewer, hearing, and rates. We need to do that soon. Yes, right? we do. Uh, and David, had, uh, I think David would be prepared to discuss that, but oh. he stepped out. Okay. Um, and then. It's not on our agenda anyway. No, no, these are just my oh, questions yeah, for. Right. No, I was answering. No, we do yeah. need yeah. to get that done fairly soon. Um, and then the. Um, I know we just decided at the last meeting the negotiations for the fire department. The Has there been an initial meeting set up yet? Tomorrow. Okay. okay. Two o'clock. That's when I'm going to because whoever nominated it isn't going. No, we nominated, no, we nominated you. You agreed. More than one. Oh, oh I, th I thought it was just. Um, no. Okay. All right. <laughs> no, you're it. Mm, who is it? Motion to adjourn. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye.